the Opie and Anthony Show on XM202, featuring Opie, Anthony, and James Norton. Rock, man, we have nothing to do with this. What? What is this? <laughs> Garbage! You know what? I can't take this anymore. It's an awful, awful radio show. We're really, really mean-spirited, evil people who can't see the good in anything. I think we've done a good job so far of being open-minded and broad-minded. You know, like when you try to call the police when I touch you. <laughs> I don't call the police. <laughs> I just pretend because it makes you touch me a little harder. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Excellence in broadcasting. It's too bad you got to have some form of intelligence to listen to the Opie and Anthony show. Let's be honest, you probably didn't graduate high school. You probably have three or four kids, and you're probably a grandma at the age of 32. So I guess we have to give that much to you. Tanya, I'd like to apologize. If I would you apologize, go away. Opie. Jail is better than this, this misery I'm in. Anthony. I just think Nazi, and I can't get it out of my head. Jim Norton. Hilarious! Hilarious, people! You guys ready to laugh? It's got to be the greatest thing ever. I'd sooner have a water drinking contest. <sighs> it's the Opie and Anthony show. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Look at that, a new intro for the Opie wow. and Anthony show. Finally, yeah. After yelling and screaming. <laughs> good morning. That was a good one. Did everyone's baseball team win last night Ooh. or yesterday afternoon? The Yankees won. Yeah. <laughs> Screw the Yankees. After a shaky start, the bats came alive. The Yankees won nine five. Not a dry eye in the house yesterday. Though. Not a dry eye in the house. That Ruth built. Corey Lytle's... Uh, Corey Lytle. Widow and son threw out the first pitch. Jason Jambi at her side. Brought uh, grown men to tears. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> oh, I hate when they do that to you. One uh, of those uh, touching moments. Oh, it was just brutal. Yeah. You know, Corey Lytle uh, crashed into the... The building on you the east couldn't. side of Manhattan. When did it happen? Time for opening day, so uh, the widow. Yeah. And the little, little son. The little son go standing walking. there with his little baseball cap on. Go walking out to the mound, and then the whole place just, just starts crying in unison. Uh, oh, God, does that suck. Uh, the players crying? Everybody yeah. cried. Jason Giambi was... Just losing his mind. Yeah. I think that was the highlight for uh, opening day. It was a touching moment. Although I'm hearing that Pete Rose was in Cincinnati yesterday. Yeah. For opening day. Pete Rose taking in the game. Sitting there. You know, with, you know what's sad? Pete Rose doesn't have Pete Rose hair anymore. <laughs> what happened? Remember Pete, the Pete Rose haircut? He's probably sick of all the jokes. Yeah. Said, you know what? It's time to cut this month. I think he, like, lost a lot of it. Yeah. 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 Pete Rose. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go to the uh, the home opener because I'm not a Yankee home what? fan. Oh, I, home I, opener. I had tickets to the Yankees. I, I'm going to go to the uh, the Mets home opener on Monday. Ah. I'm a Mets fan. Yeah. That's Monday. What time is that game? Uh, I hope uh, in the afternoon. Oh, crap. I'm praying. Oh, I got to speed home. <laughs> I got to get past that stadium. You might want to take Monday off. Oh. <laughs> you got, you have to drive right through that traffic to get yeah, home. Yeah, that's not fun. To your estate. Harumph, <laughs> harumph. No, I uh, <laughs> I wanted to go to the game because I'm a big uh, sports fan for the most part. Sure. Congratulations to Florida, by the way. Whatever. Two years in a row. <laughs> NCAA uh, champions. Yeah. Who's that? The Gators? Mm -hmm. Oh, I knew that. Two years in a row, and they won the football and they won the basketball. Pretty impressive. I just know that more. Not about sports. I just know it about cutting off girls' head and putting them on bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that's something to do with that college. <laughs> yeah, they can win all the championships they want, but... Uh... They'll always be known for that crazy guy that cut a girl's head off, <laughs> murdered a few, and put her head up on a, on a bookshelf. Book Oof. Speaking of which, I saw Grindhouse uh, last night. That's yeah, why, that's that, right. You got well, a little preview. Well, that's why I didn't go to the home opener. 
I want to go up there just check it out because yeah, yeah, baseball is baseball. Yeah, and I don't really like watching it on TV, but I definitely like uh, checking out a game. And uh, I said, you know what? I got to get some sleepy. Got to get my sleepies in. Sleepy. Because uh, Grindhouse, you got to yeah, get you got to like uh, dedicate like three hours to this movie. Yeah, three hours. So you're gonna be sitting there a while. You don't want to nod off. Yeah, Grindhouse. It's the double feature. It's Planet Terror and then Quentin Tarantino's uh, movie. What was his called? Uh, Death Proof. That's right. Death Proof with uh, stuntman Mike. Yeah. And Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell. And, yeah, Kurt Russell plays that character. Jimmy went with his lovely little girlfriend. Aw. Yeah, so they went on a movie date. I got a date credit. Oh, you got a date <laughs> credit. Nice. Nice. That Check should be your book. That should be worth something in your world. It's fantastic, man. I got because I, we have Tarantino today, so I did I did work stuff and got yeah. date credit. All yeah. at the same, same time. time. That's very, Ooh, very nice. Multitask. Sure. And uh gotta tell you, I was a little scared because three hours. I, I don't do well with long movies in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I move around every two minutes trying to get comfortable. I'm, I got an achy back. Everything just aches because those seats suck. And they wonder why, like, attendance in general is down in movie theaters. Because it's so much better when you can just watch them uh, at home. Even the average person has a system that's better than the movie theater at this point. Yeah. The average person. You know, if you got a, a nice widescreen uh, plasma or LCD uh, in front of you and it's, you know, a few feet away... It's just as good as a movie theater screen. And you don't even far really, away. You don't even really need a sound system. A lot of these TVs have just enough to, you know, you crank up the volume. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna do just fine. So I was a little nervous because it's three hours long. But I gotta tell you, the easiest three hours I've spent in a movie theater. The easiest. Really. Went by like that. So you're saying uh, no riffraff in there? Uh, no, 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 no. It was all uh, press people. Ah. All press people, although like that helps. Although I decided, like uh, you know, there was a couple slow moments. Nothing bad. Every movie has them. So I'm I'm pulling out my BlackBerry to to do a couple emails, and all of a sudden, did you see that guy come running over the usher? Ah! Ah! What are you doing? I'm like what? No cell phones. No BlackBerry. Turn everything off. Turn everything off. They went into panic mode. Like I, wow. was, like I was like mailing in my review already or something. Like what could I possibly be doing that's disrupting the theater? No one saw me. I was like, you know, I had it like this. I close, guess they were close scared. To the vest. It, they were scared it might ring. Yeah. You know. So they probably why this guy came up to me in major panic mode. I swear to God, I, I almost bopped him in the nose. Your assistant to the assistant manager at the movie theater. But in a complete panic, I'm like, relax, dude. What am I getting? Screen caps of the movie? I'm going to throw it on the internet and wreck oh, the whole maybe, thing for everybody? Maybe that too. Camera phones. Who knows? Video phones. Because they were on. Those guys were around the theater. You could, I never saw the presence of uh, I didn't th those men of, before. Of ushers? Yeah. Do they do they really intimidate people? Dude. Were they wearing the wacky old uh, 1930s usher hats? <laughs> it, it wasn't the it wasn't the pimple faced kid you usually see. They're like bouncers. These guys were like uh, the they they were scary. Security the, like that at the movie theater, great. The you know. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they were protecting everything. They were walking up and down the aisles. And I'm like, I don't feel comfortable in this theater. Now that I think about it, Jimmy, yeah, they kind of... And then I'm moving around. I'm like, God, I hope I'm not moving around too much. I don't want to get yelled at again. That's uh, They're probably looking for some kind of copyright infringement going on. Yeah, I Photos, know. bootlegging, things like that. Yeah. Gets out on the web. As a matter of fact, I think... Uh, Sunday's uh, Sopranos mm -hmm. leaked out. Oh, really? Onto uh, the web. Yep. I didn't leaked even... out. That's going to be a big problem. And and it's something like that wasn't even an issue last season. When was that? Twenty years ago when they uh, did the last season of no, Sopranos. This time around, it was reasonable. What it was like eight months <laughs> instead of the two and a half years they usually do or whatever. That short? I think so. Yeah. It's going to be in January, but Gandolfini had a leg problem. He yeah, had I think it's been that. a year. Maybe a year, but that pushed uh, in a year. I'm going to bet. Injury. I'm going to bet less than a year from uh, the finale. I'll say a year, uh, but uh, it, it leaked out onto uh, you know torrent and those other uh, services that you can just get stuff off of. Sure. And now it's out there. <sighs> hmm. Whatever. Yeah.
They they lost me a couple seasons ago. But are you gonna watch it? I mean, there's yeah, only a few episodes. You got to see if they tie anything up. Well, first of all, I got to see last seasons. For some reason, I didn't watch last seasons, and I love The Sopranos. But for some reason, they they spent so much time in between the the seasons. I just found other things to watch. Yeah, they. And I'm sure it, it happened to other people. Mm -hmm. And I was really into The Sopranos. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch the final season. You got to uh, catch up, I guess. You got to what on demand? Do they have it on demand? They should. They should have put last season on demand so you can kind of catch up and yeah. then watch these. That would be smart. So uh, Grindhouse, I, I give it two uh, huge thumbs up. I think our audience, oh. for the most part, will love this movie. Yeah, I like these the movies, the fake trailers. It's a double feature, and they go old school with a lot of things. Like the first movie's all beat up, like it was made thirty years ago. Really, it's got scratches in it and, and faded uh, and, color and crackling, crackle every once in a while. <laughs> That's great. And the fake movie trailers were just great, awesome. Awesome. I don't want to give too much away. But I, I really, really enjoyed both movies. Kurt Russell is great. He's that, great. That stunt man. Yeah. Oh, Stuntman Mike's my favorite. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on. And and Freddie Rodriguez is the star of uh, Planet Terror. I think he's going to be on our show next week or something like that, or maybe yeah. later this week. He was unbelievable. He was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the first movie is a uh, slasher zombie flick. We had Robert Rodriguez in here yesterday. Just nonstop action. If you know anything about me in movies, I'm not a huge action movie guy. I like action in my movies, but when it's one stunt after another, you lose me. But uh, this uh, was just nonstop action. I was totally into it from beginning to end. Absolutely. Cool. And we got Quentin today. Yeah. And they brought back like just stuff that I forgot all about. Remember when you used to go to the movies uh, when you were a lot younger, and all of a sudden they would just have a, a girl topless for no reason? Yeah. Every movie had it. Every movie had the topless shot. Yeah. There was there was something always cool about that, right? Yeah, of course. And for some reason, because we live in a new world, <laughs> they, they they took that away from us as well. But they kind of brought it back in uh, in uh, in Grindhouse, and I <sighs> applaud that. I hope that's a sign of things to come. And the first scene, Grindhouse opens up, not giving anything away, but all the guys in the movie theater were just gulping. Any girl, any guy that was with a girl on a date had to control himself. Really? Oh, um, that Rose McGowan. Hot scene? Hot scene. It, it starts out, she's in a strip club. And she's not even naked. And, and it's one of the most erotic things I've seen on a movie screen in a long time. Ooh, she was not dishy. counting porn, obviously. What? She was dishy. Oh, my dishy. God. Dishy. <laughs> Just how it was shot, the, how, the music playing, how she moved her body. Uh, the guys in the theater were just... Were, were just all losing our minds, just gulping, like, oh, my God. My girlfriend got mad at me because while she was uh, on the screen, like the opening scene, I leaned over to my girlfriend and I went, go get popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me, you're describing it like the way Selma Hayek was dancing in Dusk Till Dawn. Yeah. With that music playing, a great song playing, uh, almost, not slow motion, but just a little slower than than normal. Not a fan of hers. Looking hot. She is beyond hot, especially in that movie, but not a fan of hers. Just till dawn, she was great when she came walking out she's, on that table. She's, she's too, uh, she's too, uh, too clean. Yeah, I keep telling you, yeah. you need a little skank. Just a little. A little skank. Gotta just throw a little skank in the recipe. Poof, a little skank. Skank it up a just bit. Just a little bit, and Rose McGowan has that. Has the a little pinch of skank. Just a pinch. You don't want a whole handful of... No, <clears throat> no. Just a little bit. Just a little pinch of skank. Every guy wants just a, just a little bit of... Mm. A little dirty, dirty, mm. dirty poof. Ooh. You know, a little bam. Here's uh, E-Rock. Uh, has found... Uh, found the uh, Selma Hayek scene. No, that was definitely I gather. Hot. Don't get me wrong. But see, here's the difference. Yeah. That looks like a movie. Yeah. It's lit perfectly, the makeup. Look, I mean, you know, but how Grindhouse opens, you you truly feel, right, Jimmy? You're in that strip club watching her. It's just great. Yeah, it was really old school, man. It was it was uh, just amazing. Jumpy and, film, a little bit of jumpy film he throws in. He's just, oh, yeah? Right. And real just, that. And just real gore. Just real gore. Good old school gore. Especially in the first movie, the double feature. Yeah. Like the old days. Now, like, when someone gets shot or something, there's not much blood or guts. It's just kind of... Mm. It just Unless looks... it's a war movie. It just feels like it's a it's a Hollywood movie, you know? 
Like, well, our our uh, horror flicks have changed over the years, and now it's more um, uh, fear, fright. They try to scare you. Right, right. The little stupid kids going, ah, and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> the ring, things like that. You know, not much blood and guts. It's, uh, you know, that shock value. That stupid, like, jumpy movements that the characters do when their joints bend backwards and they crawl on the ceiling. Yeah. Like, that's scary crap. But, uh, yeah, they kind of got away from the slasher blood and guts thing. Well, Grindhouse brings it back, especially the first movie. And we got Quentin Tarantino in studio today. But it was a very easy three hours. Yeah. The, uh, the end of uh, Quentin's movie, just I applaud. I, yeah. I, I ha- yeah, I applaud Quentin. Nice little, <laughs> nice little twist. And uh, that's been in articles. I, we won't say what the twist is, but it was it was nice to see a little twist instead of the usual ending to uh, uh, to a movie like like his. See, I, I'm trying to talk in very broad strokes here. I'll say it ended old school. I'll say it ended in an old school. It reminded me of a film. They they made two references, which I'm going to hug him for. To a movie called I think it was a. Uh, I f- oh god, Crazy Mary, Dirty Larry. I forget how it was put. Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. I saw it. When I was like, yeah, I remember that movie though. You remember that? Yeah. Where it had like one of those just those, those old school like 1974 endings. Yeah. The vibe of it. It was just it was well done. Yeah. And that there you go. A little bit. So I'm a little tired. <laughs> Got home at like what? What did you say? I didn't help at all. I, really, I didn't I just, help at all. I just, ah, I just you know, know you know something. It. You add, you absolutely uh, helped me out there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and probably another hundred people out there, which is good, considering we talk to a million every day. So congratulations <laughs> If I could talk on to one one thousand. Our phone number, 1-866-313-FREE. 1-866-313-FREE. Do we have, uh, can we applaud Mayor Bloomberg really fast? Really fast here? The fine uh-huh. mayor of New York City. He's decided to stay out of uh, the whole aluminum bat controversy. He's promised to veto any... Uh bill that comes across his desk about this aluminum bat thing they want to ban aluminum bats the city uh wants to ban aluminum bats in little league um and in i guess school play because they say the ball jumps off the aluminum bat faster a uh, kid was hit in the chest a while back with an aluminum bat uh with a ball that was hit off an aluminum bat and he went into cardiac arrest and now they want to ban aluminum bats right and the mayor said look uh, I don't think the city uh, politicians are uh, qualified to make this kind of decision <laughs> because other people, if other people in the uh, uh, little league and 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 in the schools decide that it's dangerous, they could ban them amongst themselves. It, it's not a city issue. He's leaving it to the little league governing body, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you, you take the aluminum bat. You know, and who, we're not the experts. I, I just applaud. I don't the know go- either. I applaud that the government is staying out of the way. To, you know, because yeah. they want to slow down the game. Yeah. You know, and I, I say it's just the price of doing business. It's the price of being a human being on this earth. Unfortunately, crap like this is going to happen no matter what. Yep. No matter what. Remember the girl that took the hockey puck to the forehead or the chest and died? Yeah. And now, because of one lousy incident, we all have to watch our hockey games through a net. Through a net. They've been playing hockey for how many years, and finally one of those pucks goes flying into the stands. And unfortunately for the family and the people that know her, it sucked. It just really sucked. One, one event. I mean, it, what if a little leaguer uh, uh, hits a ball and the bat shatters and a shard goes you know, into someone's chest? Then they're going to ban wooden bats. Yeah. And you got to play wiffle ball. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You know, either either way, it doesn't happen very often. It's tragic when it does. But you can't go banning every single thing that uh, injures uh, somebody. It's the price of being a human being. It's, yeah. it's going to happen no matter what. I, I hate watching hockey games through a net. Yeah. But that's what they decided. Every, every arena needs uh, nets now because... Uh, the one girl took the hockey puck they to the face. They don't want that or, puck flying into your head. So, eh. mm. but I applaud the mayor. Oh. Yeah, for staying out of this one. Mayor Bloomberg. You know, uh, it's funny. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're talking about this. There was a. Uh, did you know that, that Robert? Uh, yeah, we all read Rodriguez. that this morning, and we wish we had that info uh, yesterday. Robert Rodriguez, who was in studio yesterday, the director of Planet Terror, the first feature of Grindhouse. Uh, it, it came out today. Unfortunately, today. That he uh, he's been banging Rose McGowan. 
Yeah, is that what they're saying? And he uh, kind of wrecked his 16-year marriage to his lovely, lovely wife. Yeah, and I read that. I, I guess was the, horrified reading it. I guess they have five kids. Five kids, and she's like co-producer in movies, in the movies that he makes. They work together. Yeah, this is something where in a court of law she could absolutely say, hey, I'm responsible for, you know, half of what he's done. <laughs> See, but yeah, if you're a producer, it's kind of hard to not... Anthony, Jimmy, and I understand. We all know what producers do. Nothing. He was behind the camera for that opening scene in Grindhouse, and he just lost his mind like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> she, was, she was good, man. Yeah. Rose McGowan was great. Ridiculous. So he blew off his wife of 16 years and blew off the five kids to, to get a piece of that. Wow. And supposedly they're an item, but they're kind of trying to keep it on the, on the old QT. Even though they, they showed up at the L.A. premiere together in uh, the same limo, but left separately. So, you know, the paparazzi can't really prove they arrived together because all it is is a limo with one leaving and then a few minutes later the other leaves. Yeah. It's a nice little trick. They, uh, How did she pull this off? What do you mean? She was goddamn Marilyn Manson skank when she uh, uh, first popped on the scene. Wasn't she an actress, though? Was she an actress when she was dating? Yeah. Absolutely. Barely. Barely, she dude. She was a scream. Dude, barely. Scream was a huge movie. And was she in Scream before Marilyn Manson? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. She she already had a name before she started uh, hanging with Marilyn Manson. Uh, mm. I will bet money on that. Because I remember and that by shot. the way, you lost the other bet already. What happened? The uh, finale of uh, The Sopranos was June 2006. And it's starting when? Like this Sunday. Jesus. Actually, we got to split the difference. Yeah, you said on. a year, I said eight months. Eight months. It looks like it's, uh, what, ten months? Jeez, come on. I just I just did the math and realized, oh, what yeah. are you talking about? It's kind of a tie, and we're not doing <laughs> yeah. Price is Right rules here, Pally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we got to like figure out the, the Rose McGowan. Because I remember uh, uh, it was a red carpet shot of her and Marilyn Manson walking in. She was wearing a net. That's all she was wearing. It was pretty much a netting, and she looked hammered. It was almost a Courtney Love moment. Like she was all like effed up, yeah. And and she her her lower end didn't look good in that netting because she was really sloppy. And uh, then she banged herself into shape and and well, she got her, him and and uh, she's a big star now. She ate a few salads and got on a treadmill. Yeah, there you go. Looks good. Took most of the skank out of her and she was left with what? Aunt? Just a little. Poof. Just she left the pinch of skank. A little in her. pinch. Poof. <laughs> yeah. And she looks really good now. Ooh. Yeah, that's to see. That's the picture. Oh, is that Rose wow? McGowan? Yeah, that's Rose McGowan in the first no. shot I ever saw of her. No, she looks so much hotter in uh, in the. In see now, I out. can't imagine her going from Scream, which she looked really good in, to that. Well, that's and not, then back to good. That's not that bad though. That's uh, not a very modest outfit. Her high knee is showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her her body is so much better in Grindhouse, but that's not that bad. I don't know. Do we have a date yet? Oh, we do? Oh, what, what is it? What is it, Travis? Trav, what you're, was first? You're wrong. Son of a bitch! Arms in the air, baby! What was... What, Scream was in 96. 96? The uh, award show that Ope was talking about yeah. was 98. Two years? Yeah. Boy, yeah. My God. God, man. <laughs> I need a show. All right. That's not a modest outfit. No. All right, we're getting uh, warmed up. It's the Opie and Anthony show, so we got Quentin uh, Tarantino. Quentin. Quentin. Quentin Tarantino coming in to talk about Grindhouse. It's all about Grindhouse this week. And, uh, you know, I uh, I enjoyed it uh, immensely. Immensely. Nice. Can't wait to see it. All right. Anything else you want to say about the movie, Jimmy? No, I enjoyed it very much. I'll, I have a... I'll talk to QT when he gets here. Oh. <laughs> QT. All right, we'll go to the phones next. They're lit. Isn't it the ball's fault, not the bat? Other directors are bringing back horror. The hotline's ringing. We got, we got things to do. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Hit it. Hear what everyone else is talking about. ONA Uncut and Live continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit XMRadio.com to subscribe. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Buy me all these ices. Don't 
Back with the Opie and Anthony show. How weird is that? It's something a lot of people will be checking out on the internet today. I kind of like it. You do? Yeah. This is Alanis Morissette. Yeah. She released this video all over the internet the last day or two. It's uh, it's Fergie's or Black Eyed uh, Peas, My Humps. Mm -hmm. Alanis Morissette doing uh, the cover. And the video... She shouldn't be uh, dancing and trying to look sexy like Fergie does. <laughs> yeah. She's got a great voice. We'll give her that, but uh, I don't know. Remember that video where she was kind of naked, but they pixelated out? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the Opie and Anthony show. Sneeze, Jimmy. Sneeze. I, I, Get it out. I have that type of technique. Here, here, look. Head. Look at the light. See? Ow. That'll do it. Look at the light. What are you, Nothing? not human? No. You're not human. <laughs> the light, never light is supposed sneeze. to make you sneeze. No, it makes me blink. Huh? It makes me blink. Pepper makes me sneeze. Lights make me blink. You know what makes me sneeze? My first sip of Guinness of the night. I'll like take a sip of Guinness, swallow it, and then it'll do something and make me sneeze. Oh. <laughs> and then it's a good sneeze. A big frothy head comes out of my nose. <laughs> One sneeze and you're done? <laughs> That's it? Yeah, just just the first sip of Guinness, for some reason, makes me sneeze. Is Guinness a guy you live next door to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an Irish gentleman. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why we just play that, to be completely honest with you, but... Uh, yeah, it's it, all over the internet. Yeah, we try to be in touch with what's going on out there, and uh, a bunch of people will be searching that out and checking that out today as they do their regular... You know, surfing. That internet. Yeah, you got to uh, get it on there quick before uh, it goes away, the internet. I think it's a fad. You think? Yeah. I think that internet thing is a fad. All right, let's... A bunch uh, of kids finding their uh, things on their videos and whatnot. I was all annoyed yesterday. I went searching for that stupid weatherman video. I couldn't find it. Yeah, that was... Dan had to point it out to me. That was a low moment on the show yesterday. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Let's be Taking honest. a completely visual thing and putting it on the uh, radio. It's brilliant. We looked Bravo. at each other like, uh, this makes for a better video. And then people were mad because we didn't give them the search. Yeah. I thought it'd be easy to find on their own. It wasn't. Because, you know, our listeners are savvy. But there, uh, so many emails coming in. Dude, first of all, the bitch sucked, but I... But we could at least figure out that it's a good video, and then you don't tell us how to find it. Then don't tell us where the video was. It wasn't on uh, opianthony.com, so I had no idea where it was. And apparently, it was on the news station's website or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's I can find it on YouTube or Break. If you weren't listening yesterday, it's a, basically it's a weatherman that's completely asleep. The video is funny. I finally saw it. Yeah. And he is completely asleep in his chair, and they go to him, and he he does that <laughs> like he was awake the whole time. Yeah. He's like, oh, he sits right up. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, no one noticed. I was dead asleep. <laughs> Let's say hi to Mike in Georgia. Mike, what's going on? Hey there, Mike. Hey there, Opie and Anthony. Love you. Love the show. <laughs> Thanks. What's up, Mike? Uh, you know, I've just been listening to this Mayor Bloomberg thing, too, and, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist or anything. I didn't, uh, I, um, I forget it. I <laughs> comment on how he sounded like one, and it surprised me, but it came out yeah. I didn't and ruined the whole thing. I'm figuring that, you know, what gave the kid the cardiac arrest was more or less the uh, ball and not the bat. Well, uh, agreed, but they're saying that the ball hit him a lot harder because uh, the kid was using using an aluminum bat. Well, you know, let's, you know, they got an elbow guard, they got a face guard, they got a toe guard, they got a knee guard, they got a crotch guard. Why don't you give him a chest guard and let him go play? Well, how about this? Not every kid should be playing baseball. 
Well, there you go. For some reason in America, every kid has to play baseball. You can't take a liner to the chest. You shouldn't be playing. <laughs> a little, a little tip to the parents out there: when your kid's in the backyard, maybe try to figure out what they might be good at. If it's ballet, well, that's what I'm getting at. Like I say it all the time, but it's been a lot of fun watching my uh, my wool my little nephews grow up. And I go to these games. I go to the the pee wee hockey games and the little league games and stuff. And uh, thank God, you know, my nephews they got a, they got some skills. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, you go to some of these games and you see some of these kids that they have no business being on the baseball field. Yeah, maybe they should be on the in drama class. You, you could you could tell even at a very early age that uh, some of these kids will do much better on a stage if you know what I mean. Maybe they should be doing a flower arrangements, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Whatever. Not be on the field, but every I guess every father wants their son to be a baseball star in America. So mm -hmm. uh, you know everyone everyone throws their kid into the old pool, and, yeah. they, and they just hope they got a major leaguer. And dad's the last one to pull him out of there because dad really wants him to yeah. uh, be a, a sports kid. And I, I tell the story: a kid on first base while the game's going on, kind of like just twirling around like a ballerina. Yeah, and then the the, the son's uh, father's on the sideline, just mortified, just trying to get the kid down into the position, into the first base position. Kid doesn't care. He wants to be on a stage. He wants to go do anything but baseball. But it's obvious the father's kind of pushing this on him. Do Did you? Know, you I'm well, sorry. I'm, yeah, I, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I used to spin in a circle. <laughs> it was a nervous tick I had. I would spin once in a circle to the right. <laughs> so I have once in a circle only. Things are wrong. Things are wrong. Spin. Nah, all's well. <laughs> and I was playing for Young's Glass Service in fourth grade, and I was in the outfield, and I was spinning, occasionally spinning, and uh, my coach screamed from the sidelines, Hey, Jimmy, what are you, a ballerina? <laughs> I was in right field. Yeah, of course you were. Both are. teams... All the fathers heard it. Oh, it was awful. Well, they were probably all looking at you going, what is he doing spinning around? Wait or not, wait or not, wait until I get uh, back into the dugout, coach. <laughs> How about a little quiet talking to? <laughs> no, about, you got to make an example. How about you take me to the side yeah. when no one's looking? <laughs> Oh, boy, he took me right out of ballerina school, though. I quit spinning. Did you stop spinning after that? No, you're not. But did you look kind of, you know... Limp wristed while doing no, it. That's no. what I'm talking. You spun about. like a man. Oh yeah, no, I just, I just, I just I, I'll, I'll just show you, which doesn't work on radio. Yeah, but I want to see it anyway. But it would just be, it would just be a spin, like you'd have to take, like. Uh... <laughs> okay, that's silly. Yeah. Were well, your hands, hands on your hips like that, or whatever, or just whatever you were doing? And then you did that, and everything was right with the world, right? I don't know why? Yeah. Man, it's like it's like that. So when you said ballerina, boy, that touched <laughs> off a lovely memory. <laughs> All you have to do, though, is go to one game and you realize who's there to play baseball and who's there because daddy wants them to be a, a baseball star. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I was uh, I was never a sports guy. You are, obviously, you know, op, uh, uh, talking all the time about basketball and things like that. Were you uh, one of those, though, where a dad would show up and, well, my dad, and be proud of your... Uh, your uh, prowess out on the field or something well, my or on dad, the court. Wait, my dad was a basketball star back in the day. Had to try out for the Knicks. That's the the big story in Ooh. my family. But uh, he blew it off because of personal uh, issues with his first wife. And so, sure, never regretted that one. Well, she never ended, looked back with regret on that. She ended up dying. <laughs> so Jesus, he decided to be with his dying wife instead of uh, trial for the Knicks. I think it was pretty. <laughs> 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 Hey, you're not going to get a tear from me. That's terrific. You're not going to get That's a tear terrific. from me, Ant. Oh, it's the only reason I'm here. God. A fine uh, a fine tragedy like that. Wow. That's the only reason I'm on this earth. I was only joking. Because then he turned around and married my mom and had six uh, six lovely kids. So See, there you, you go. You wouldn't have been here. But uh, we, was, we were brought up with basketball in our blood, kind of. Uh, although I'd never had the height. And that was my sport. I tried the Little League. And I was like, Jimmy, I was right fielder. I was scared to be in the batter's box. I realized early on, that's what I'm getting at. You know, I got some knowledge. I, I, I realized early on, I don't want to play baseball. I, I like playing in the schoolyard with my friends when there's no pressure and there's no you know, kid th trying to throw a ball as hard as he can and he has no freaking uh, control. Yeah, That was never fun for me. So I said, you know what? Basketball and, and running and other things were, were much more my speed. I had the uh, I had a good arm. I could throw really far, really hard, but nothing else. I was a disaster 
as far as any kind of uh, uh, sports went. It's what was your, what was your be- what, what was your favorite sport? <laughs> None. None sport. Not one sport where you enjoyed it. There was nothing I I'm did. I'm not talking about like, making the high school team or anything, but just one sport growing up where you're like, you know what, I like this. Like For the, me, it was basketball. I could play basketball, and I did when I was a kid, like 12 hours a day. I hated basketball. I was bad at everything. Like, I was bad at everything. I, I liked I liked dodgeball because I could throw the ball pretty hard, and I was really skinny, so I was hard to hit. That's a that's a sport you play with girls. No, no, no. It's a, it's a sport. that you, It's not even a sport. It's a dumb game it's a, you play in gym class. It's recreation. Yeah, it's recreation. It's not a sport. But that was it. I mean, things like baseball, I was always the kid that uh, even if I connected with the ball, it was an infield out. Yeah. It was done. I couldn't get it over the goddamn uh, the heads of the infield. And uh, two-hand touch football, it's ridiculous. What am I going to do? I wasn't big enough to do any blocking, that's for sure. And I couldn't uh, I couldn't get away from anybody. So I'd just get slaughtered. I was a little, like, string bean. Uh, hockey, there was no hockey. Oh, I loved hockey. hockey growing up. We used to play stupid, like, uh, a floor hockey. I loved floor hockey. And gym, and there was always the big douche who would have to check you against the accordion door that separated you from the girls. All I pictured were horrified girls looking as they're playing whatever they did over there with their dyke teacher. <laughs> All right, girls, time to climb the rope. I'll be holding the bottom. I'll be holding the knot. Make sure you wear your skirts. <laughs> Get those panties off, girls. As they see the accordion door just go <laughs> get pushed in because another skinny kid's getting his head smashed By as the they check. Guy. Yeah. Shower time, girls. Uh, coach, we just got out here. Shower. Listen to me. We're all showering today. The dyke girl gym teacher. Yeah, why Why was the, the gym teacher ever called out for being a dyke ever? Every one of them. Every single one of them was a, was a lesbian in hiding. And the guy gym teacher was the opposite of that. Was like all man ready to punch a fifth grader in the face. Uh, he was just a miserable F. Like that, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman <laughs> coming every, into your... Every male gym teacher was uh, a failed athlete. Yeah, yeah. He kind of he made it to like the farm team or minor league this. They all got a that, story. Or went to Europe to play his sport. And then finally, he had nothing left, so he's uh, he's uh, he's like uh, teaching gym class to a bunch of freaking burnouts. And the goof to all those guys is, well, you you, you watch, you'll be teaching gym class. Right. No, I won't. You know, I'm making the cut. I'm going to make the team. Mm-hmm. And then they don't make it, and they take out all their aggression and aggravation on kids. But dude, in my junior high and high school, the 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 female gym teacher, she, she was more of a male than I was. Yeah, like no one noticed this, and she was she was allowed access to the oh, smorgasbord to for the her. dressing room or the yeah. or the showers, whatever locker rooms, whatever the, the Beca- showers. Because you never think that the gym teacher could be a lesbian, like she's just kind of you know monitoring and uh, yeah, watching she's out for the a girls. Tomboy that never grew out of it, and she's forty five years old with the short hair and the and the big oversized sweatshirt, short gray hair. You know the look. Like what is going on here? Protect your- awful. And and when you're in junior high, as a girl especially, you have no clue about uh, being a lesbian. You have yeah. no idea for the most part. Mm-hmm. Especially back when we were going to school. Now I, I'm sure they're a little more open to all that stuff, and they're growing up a lot faster. But back in the day, these girls had no clue, and they just thought it was safe to be kind of naked for the gym teacher. Yeah. Imagine what that gym teacher was thinking. And she's just making believe she has to do something in the locker room, and oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> Jim teacher walks in. I, <laughs> I gotta get the girls out to the class. <laughs> suit up, girl. Girls, suit up. I. <laughs> and in my school, it was completely aroused. Yeah. In my school, too, for some odd reason, the gym teacher's office yep. was in the locker in room. In the locker room. 
<laughs> what the hell was that about? And it, it was kind of like a booth with like uh, windows. Yeah. So she's sitting there on the phone making believe she's uh, getting ready for the big game or ordering more dodgeballs, whatever the hell they did. Picture your cubicle <laughs> at work in a strip club. <laughs> That's where they work. <laughs> <laughs> I got a oh, phone call. Uh, let me make. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need um. I can eat uh, another gross of dodgeball, some um field hockey shin pads. You girls. Dry off well. You don't want to get athletes. <laughs> the office right in the locker room. I swear to God. That oh, is, I never even... Rem I totally just... you Totally is, made me remember that. That is the funniest thing I've heard in weeks. Oh. And I told you the story. I've mentioned the high school. I better not, but... Uh, it's long gone because they uh, they finally remodeled. But uh, I was one of those. Uh, I helped out the uh, the uh, the coach. Coach. I, I forgot we had a little title like we were coaches. Uh oh. <laughs> helpers, whatever. I don't know yeah. what the hell it was. Wow. <laughs> but we had access to his uh, office, which was right next to the the women's locker room. Uh, his office was not in the locker room like the the girls was. The girl t uh, teacher and coach. And we noticed this cork board that had all the schedules and stuff. And one day, I don't know, maybe it was passed down from generation to generation, but someone just knew to close the door, lock it, and remove the cork board. Uh, and there was a fine, fine hole that went right through. Hole. Right through, not just a wall, like it was those blocks. Cinder blocks. Cinder yeah. blocks, thank you. Th this hole went all the way through the cinder blocks. Someone worked very hard. <laughs> And and I guess I finally was invited into the inner circle, and I was like, hey, you want to see something? Like, yeah, whatever. We're just sitting around talking about the Knicks or something dumb because we're all obsessed with basketball. And one kid's like, you want to see something? Like, like, what? He goes, oh, trust me on this. So they locked the door, and they removed the cork board, and there's a hole. And he waited, perf he waited as the period is ending. Yeah. And all the girls file into the locker room, removes the cork board, and it was like... Wasn't covered by a poster of Rita Hayworth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hate to say this because I know uh, you know a lot of people who went to high school listen to this show. They chatter. I saw most. We're watching you. <laughs> I saw most of the girls that I graduated with naked. Oh, what a thrill! Naked. Was that was about the biggest thrill you could possibly have. Was the the thought. That you were going to see them naked. It was actually the thought. When I would watch the girls come out of the locker room, the thought that they were just naked was enough to like get you all worked up. Sure. That was like, oh. And, the, and then you'd be next to the locker room, the girls' locker room, and think, right behind this wall, it's just a little wall, is just paradise. There it is. And, and it's what they call sanity. That kept you from just running in there, <laughs> but because there was, we talked yesterday about the over-the-top guy, guy that didn't know how far to push it. Yeah, there was always a kid every year or so that would just run into the girls' locker room. He just couldn't take ah, it anymore. I can't <laughs> take it. I gotta see this. His little perf switch went off. Oh, and it, it, the news would spread through the school. <laughs> He'd be in trouble. It's just yeah, his little purse switch ran, went off, and he had. I gotta get in there. It's just tempting you. Yeah, it has to me. me. It says it right on the door. Girls locker room. <laughs> it says nude girls are in here. Right. I'm my hormones are pumping. I'm going through a time of my life where I can't keep this thing in one spot. <laughs> it, 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 you don't, you don't. And there's a door. There's a sign on it that might as well just say <laughs> all of your nude girl dreams right here. <laughs> Doesn't even have a locking knob on it. You didn't know how. You push it, it opens. You know how you. What the hell was going on down no. below? Oh, you're just trying to keep it under control. I gotta get in there. <laughs> right, it's like Regis. <laughs> I gotta get in there, Galvin. <laughs> There's no girl.
The worst would be if you time it wrong and you run in while they're still dressed. So oh. you're thrown out of high school and you saw nothing. And they just turn around fully clothed going, what is this idiot doing? You really had a guy that would just run in there? Yeah, every year or so there was some guy that would just lose his mind and have to run in, uh, usually with some like a bandana around his face or something. But everyone knew who everyone was. Yeah. So you get busted. I, uh, I worked out at a gym uh, that I got to keep this uh, on the QT, too. Oh, you're only talking to a couple of people. And um, and there was a uh, a cork board, another cork board. Those cork boards with like the yoga class schedule and the and the spinning schedule and you know uh, massages when you could get a massage. Nice gym. And I discovered because one day I'm I'm just looking at the schedules and I just kind of take a little glance to the left and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, perfect shot. At the mirror ah. in the girls' locker room that bounced off to the nudity. <laughs> and I would just stand there in between sets, like, make him believe I'm looking at the yoga schedule over and over. Boy, he sure is interested in that <laughs> yoga schedule. <laughs> oh, and I couldn't believe that no one discovered this. And it wasn't, you didn't, you didn't have to look like a creep. You were just looking and just kind of looked over to your left and boom, mirror, boom. And and you would just wait for the hot chick to be done with her workout, and you would uh, time to check the yoga schedule, hoping, hoping, hoping. It was like fishing. I'll tell you who else knew it: the person who wrote the yoga schedule. <laughs> 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 who else would put that faggoty nonsense on the wall? <laughs> you occasionally get that in uh, bathrooms or bars or something like that. Yeah. Perfect timing. You're walking by, the door flings open. You could look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's a girl coming out of the stall. You don't really see anything. But you're like, hey, who hey, just got a little was, view into the uh, all right, man. inner sanctum? <sighs> all right. Oh. A anyway, uh, you, you, the, the female gym teacher bit is beyond hilarious. Yeah. Why they put her off? It's I great swear to God. It, brought that up. I know. I I remember it. Oh, it was in yours, too? Yeah. The office was in the locker the room? Was in it, it was a way to save space. I don't know what that was about. There were a couple of times after school hours. Uh, if I was in the school for any reason whatsoever, I don't even know why I'd be in there, but no one was in there. Me and a couple of friends would go into the girls' locker room just to look around. And that was like... And see what it was like. It's like, yeah. That the, would get your mind going. You go up to the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Find out whose locker it is. Oh, yeah, I know this chick. Oh, wow. T tomorrow she'll be naked right in front of this locker. Like a dog. <laughs> can, you do the, can you do the tight gym teacher? All the clueless uh, young teenage girls. Yeah, my girls should be coming in soon. Uh, they've been out playing field hockey. Uh, we just need another order. Uh, we, what are we looking for? That's a, uh, we need some uniforms. And you got to uh, the uh, team. And you got to order the giant ball that I, no one knows. Yeah, why. we need the big round ball that they lay on and roll around on their little bellies. <laughs> All right. Oh, here they come. Hold on. All right, girls, shower time. I'll be a home. Oh, <laughs> get on. <laughs> get on. Undress, girls. That's it. Get clean. It's I mean, what I taught you in health class, because I'm also the health, health teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God damn, you're beautiful. <laughs> Ladies, make sure you wash your gas. Wash right there. <laughs> but the school's that clueless. Oh, that's great. Yeah, put the uh, gym teacher's office right there. It'll keep it all convenient. They can talk with the girls. I bet you that's how the, the dikey gym teachers chose their job. They probably yeah. went from school to school and went, wait, uh, wait a minute. Where's the office? Oh, uh, uh, we, we decided to conserve space, and, and your office is going to be in the, uh, the, the women's locker room. Okay, don't care about the pay. <laughs> right. Whatever, I'll be in. What time do I start now? When do the naked girls come in? Where's my whistle? <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. Your office is right off of the um, teacher's lounge thing. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll break. We'll continue. Quentin Tarantino coming in to talk about Grindhouse. Nice. Yes, very very cool, and other things on the way. You know what? Can't we didn't find this on our own, but a good friend of ours did. Laszlo Henry Winkler.
talking about child molestation from 1984. Wow. Complete <laughs> oh, no. with a little little song that he sings. All right, wait, wait, wait. A song about your private part. I can't hear this. <laughs> I have to go home. I can't listen to this and then live my life knowing this is out there. You're listening to a slow news day, hey. which means we're going to have a lot of fun today. You never heard that song? Sunday, Monday, sad days. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, we got the Dyke uh, gym teacher stories uh, mm -hmm. coming in now. Ooh. All right. Well, we got lots to do. Stay there. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Good workout. Good workout, ladies. Time to shower off. Hit the showers. Come on, girls. Come on. Go. Come on, girls. Shower off. That's it. Get those uh, uniforms off. Of you. <laughs> Debbie, pick up my whistle. Oh, God. We're back with the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> he continued through the break. <laughs> Anthony's new bit. <laughs> we were all clueless when we were in school. We had no idea. And then no. you grow up, you get a little knowledge out in this fine world of ours, and you go, what the F was going on in school with, she, the, with the Dyke Gym teacher? She was a little manly, that's all. But you, she was, uh, didn't know she was, you know... Doing that with other women. They were all called Ms. Ms. <laughs> Ms. The first ones to be called Ms. Ms. They're in their 40s called <laughs> Ms. Uh, well, we're taking your Dyke, uh, Dyke gym teacher stories. Diana from California, what's up? Hey, it's me again. How are you guys? Like, That's we're supposed to know who you are. I love well, it's Diana from down. California. I'm just shaving or, or talking shit or shooting shit while you're shaving your quit. And, and, and she curses a lot. I apologize. I forgot you guys were on this. But when I was in middle school. <laughs> just let it go. Whatever. Yeah. Go ahead, Diana. When I was in middle school, we all, want, we knew our teacher was, we didn't know what she was, but we knew we didn't want to be naked in front of her. She... We get checked. You get checked for scoliosis when you're a certain age. In the oh, that gag! By the way, yeah, let's get into that a little bit. They make you the physicals. And we talked about it for weeks beforehand because we didn't. Know, we're like, are you really going to do it? Because you had to take your shirt off in front of her, and she got to see you in your bra. So it was like a, we were all. It was weird. We didn't know we weren't. We didn't know what gay was, but we knew what gay was. Scoliosis test today, girls. <laughs> but but we just had him yesterday. Ah, not a scoliosis test. The, Could happen in a day. You never know. The test was flawed. We got to do it again. Yeah, the, the results a little flawed. So line up on the uh, line here and take your shirts off, girls. <laughs> line line up on the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Scoliosis test all week. <laughs> oh, <I'm my> whistle. <laughs> and the best part about that too. Hearing test, girls. Hearing test. Take off your shirts. <laughs> Why do we have to, to? Don't don't talk back. Hearing test. You got to take your shirt off. <laughs> she was always the favorite teacher too, because she had some, she had a reason to be a really good teacher. Yeah. To get, oh yeah. To get a, just a little bit closer. She wanted to keep her job. Dude, now that I think about it, you know, when we were growing up, like school was a pedophile's dream. Of course. How many times That's where were the you, kids are? How many times was there an excuse to be <laughs> the old age home? <laughs> That's just dawning on you. I'm a pedophile, a pedophile working in an no. old age home. This place sucks. <laughs> yeah, but back then they got away with murders. What I'm getting at. Every day, I mean. Yeah. Every day we're handed just a story after story, another kid and a teacher or whatever, some dumb pedophile thing happening, right? Yeah. We had no clue when we were in school. Mm -hmm. And our parents, for the most part, had no clue. They thought the pedophiles were the creeps with the candy and the slow-moving car past the stupid school. No. Those, they are, were, those are pedophile hacks. Yeah. They were <laughs> in our schools. And they were, and they, there was always an excuse to get the kids semi-naked. Was there, Opie? Why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> <laughs> what excuse? The cough, what excuse? The cough test for guys? What was that about? Why do they have to check that in school? Oh, that was uh, to check for a hernia or something? But why did they have to do that? Why couldn't you, you have it with your family doctor? You did. 
What? It's like as far as I remember, you yeah, did. You no, did. dude. We... I, no, no, I, but then they would do it in school. Thank you're, you. you're absolutely right. They would line I mean, you up. you can joke all you want, but I'm getting into some real crap here. Like, we all lined up one after another, like, getting the We lined up I'm like, What's 100 that boys. About? 100 boys lining up in elementary school in front of a creepy old man right. who would take you behind this white little curtain they'd put up, and, hold on, take hold his on. hand, grab your, uh, you your junk underneath, and say, cough. Checking for hernias. And here's the th deal. It was always uh, an older, creepier guy. And the school, once again, assuming that's the safe way to go. Yeah. Instead of maybe a young female doctor or whatever. Uh. It was like, no, obviously a guy wouldn't get, obviously a guy wouldn't be turned on by this. Yeah, An old guy that's never yet. been married and been in the school district for four decades. <laughs> He's our best guy when it comes to doing this to kids. Right. Are you kidding me? He doesn't even get paid. And then the he volunteers. And then the scoli, whatever test. Scoliosis. Scoliosis test. Oh, yeah. That? Why? Why in school? Can't tell if your, yeah, your pediatrician hasn't been able to tell if your back looks like a pretzel. Right. <laughs> but had, this guy, it, yeah, some always, creep in school is going to uh, know when you take your shirts off, you, everyone's shirt off. There was always an excuse to be semi-nude in school nude. for whatever reason. But what, what is this whole thing about the check, the hernia check with the hand? It's something that they, they would like have cough, to, like yeah, they feel something that's not you right. You feel some kind of, they would grab underneath and just about... Where um where the mid ground is, you know right, the right. Uh, yeah 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 no 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 I understand tint. where, but they would use the hand. Yeah, a no, hand. No, not see in my school. He said that the, the, there's more nerve endings in the mouth, and that was more helpful <laughs> oh for the test. God. And I thought that was standard. Ah, wow. <laughs> and then he made me test him, which I thought was inappropriate because I'm not a doctor. All right, let's go to Chicago. It's funny, at the end of the test, he would cough <laughs> and gag a little. <laughs> let's not forget, we are live in Chicago now. They adjusted no, our not hours. Not at that age. <laughs> Talking right over you. I'm sorry. Uh, let's say hi to Robert listening on WCKG Live. What's hey, up? that bad. What's up, uh, Robert? Hey, I got a great story for you about um, gym teacher. The sisters that were older than me, they all had the same gym teacher in high school. And she wanted to make sure that everybody washed in the shower instead of just kind of, <laughs> you know. Brother. So in order to make sure that they, for sure, they got wet in the shower, as they were filing out, she would be standing there, and with her finger, she would run between, you know, uh, their breasts. All right. You're such a liar. To make sure that they were wet. I swear to God. Why couldn't she just do it with uh, with their arms to, to make sure no one's going to say anything? Or just look and see if or there's just a glistening look. of right. liquid. Because as soon as the touching happens, of course somebody's going to be onto something. No, no. This is honest to goodness. I mean, I'm 40. My sister's up uh, in their mid 50s a uh, lie detector's going off on the phone? Yeah, I, I You heard that? Yeah. Oh, wait, he said he's 40, though, and his sister's in the mid-50s. You know something? I wouldn't doubt it. Back then, maybe. Back then. Right between the you-know-what, though? Come on. Yeah, right but in the cleavage. They, 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 she would take a little... A little... <laughs> like, like whipped cream off a cake. <laughs> put her finger in her mouth. I, I remember the gym teacher would be annoyed if you didn't take a shower after gym class. And you oh, might, guess they... Guess what? Guess what, gym teacher? Some of us didn't develop yet. I would never take a shower in gym class because, first of all, I didn't work up a sweat. I didn't do anything in gym. I stood around like an idiot. You know what? And, and why the hell am I going to get naked at school? <laughs> in front of your... In front of... People you see every day in the hall. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna do that. And guess what? Some of us developed a little later. I was one of those kids. I'm oh, not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, be naked in a men's locker room as a junior high school kid with the kid that already has a mustache <laughs> and everything else is happening. Seventies porno mustache. I look like an infant. I'm like, you know, that that was cruel. Hope he went to school with John Holmes, <laughs> just walking around with a big mustache. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a hack bit, but we all had that kid that you know had the five o'clock shadow by six period. Yeah. And, and uh, he was shaving already, and you, you, you're still waiting for your first whisker, praying every night for that one little whisker, knowing that the process has begun. Certain areas just look like a clamshell. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> a plucked chicken. Oh, I was I was like uh, Mission Impossible, dude, in the locker room. <laughs> I made sh I made sure that I wasn't naked in front. No of one anybody. saw anything. No, no. I'd be standing on the line, and and everybody's on the, in, with their shorts and sneakers on, and I'd be there with jeans and my shoes, just getting yelled at and berated by a gym teacher that you know, like we said before, wanted to be something else. Yeah. Where's your uniform? Uniform? It's shorts and a t-shirt. 
with the stupid school logo on it. <laughs> that stinks because it's been in my locker for six months. Stupid school logo. We haven't won a championship since uh, 1977. Yeah. We, we all see the banner up there. Yeah, you say, like, I want to put on the uniform. <laughs> Have some pride. Have some pride. <laughs> the only, That's the Captain Hook uniform. Right. <laughs> the only championship we had in our gym was for badminton in 1977. <laughs> badminton. Some dumb sport. Uh, Greg and Bayside, what's up? Yeah, a quick question for you guys. And it proves that there's got to be those pedophiles back when we were going to school. How many little kids actually walked away from those tests with hernias? Yeah, I remember when I was lifting vaults uh, when I was seven years old. I was in the vault and anvil business. <laughs> how, many kids were doing, how many kids were doing heavy lifting back then? Yeah. Yeah, how many 13-year-olds uh, were powerlifting? Yeah, Doc, I tell you, I, I just went to pick up the Tonka truck and, uh, ah, shooting pain. I, had, they, they remember they lined us up in our freaking underwear. And and they, they had us do all these physical tests, and they did the scoliosis. And it was like the induction. It was like you were going off to the NOM. What the hell did, were they doing to these kids? It was right. They had an inside uh, society, man. They all figured it out a long time ago. We were really raised in a screwy time. Let's go to There was so much trust in everybody. Right. You know, they, they'd send us off to school and just... Whatever happens, and you couldn't come home. You, hey, I, I went to school today. Oh, how was your day? Well, I had to pull my pants down. <laughs> like, if that happened today. Well, hey, how was your day in school? Well, I pulled my pants down in front of an old guy. Woo! Woo! <laughs> right, come out of the building. Put your hands in the air. Get the creepy old guy out here. He's under arrest, as are everyone in the school over the age of 16. <laughs> like, today... Back then, it was like, how was school? I pulled my pants down for an old man, and I coughed. Oh, I did that when I was a kid. Oh. It was great. Ah, it's a hernia test. No big deal. All right, go ahead. <laughs> right. But he, ah, get out, mow the lawn. What? What? In this day and age, you don't get away with anything. And they would come up with, like, dumb things uh, during gym class just to get you all horned up. <laughs> horned up. They get you horned up, and then you got to go into a locker room, and then you got gym teachers making sure you're washing properly. What yeah. the hell was going on? Scraping you with their fingers. <laughs> Climbing the rope in gym class, the only reason to do that was to get you horned up. Yeah. For what? I don't know. Maybe to get a... Maybe the gym teacher was, was looking for the weak ones. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that were ready. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Dan in Jersey. Dan, what's up? What's going on, guys? Hey. Dude, I got a story for you guys. All right. Middle school, I'm dating this chick. Yeah. They did the, they did the whole physical thing. Yeah. The curtain opens up, my girlfriend's father. Oh. Hmm. That's awkward. It was, <laughs> it was very weird. Hey, now yeah. you both got something to talk about at dinner, huh, Pop? <laughs> Especially if he leaned over yeah. and smelled her breath. <laughs> 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 Father goes, I know that breath. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> well, that wouldn't work really, now would it? No. Mm. I get a minus for that one. <laughs> uh, so so your your girlfriend's father gave the hernia test? Yes, he actually grabbed my junk. Oh, my God. <laughs> Too much. Did he ever do it like when you were just sitting around the couch and she left to get popcorn? Watching TV. <laughs> Time for another test. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Thank you. Someone is. All right. Well, you know what? We want to hear more from the ladies. Marissa in Boston, what's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Hi. I'm calling about the scoliosis test, actually. Yeah. That was, that was the first thing I thought of. And by the way, our female lesbian gym teacher did have uh, her office in the locker room. See? Yeah. Just in case you thought we were making this up. Yep. And it was all glass, just like you said. Yeah, um, big glass office. Wait, does this uh, sound familiar? This is my new favorite thing. All right, girls, come on out. <laughs> Just stand in front of my office here. Yeah, the glass office, right? It's uncanny. <laughs> Going to make sure uh, everybody's uh, practicing good hygiene. Want to make sure you're shaving your armpits. Shirts and bras off. Come on. <laughs> Shirts off. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Stand there, girl. Stand. I gotta go lay down. <laughs> like trying to whistle after eating a cracker. I'm dizzy. 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so this is uncanny, right, Marissa? Yeah, you know, and it's funny because, like you said, uh, girls at that age, we didn't even think of stuff like that until around and we're wondering why we had to do it in our underwear when they were just looking at our back. Everything you know? in your underwear. Everything was in your Everything underwear. Everything in your goddamn underwear back then. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Quentin, okay, thanks. All right, thank you. We've got to take a break. We've got Quentin Tarantino in the green room. We've nice. got some great stories that we're going to have to blow off for now. So uh, we're going to clear the phone lines, and around 8 o'clock we'll get back into this and some other things. But uh, we're very excited to talk to Quentin uh, Tarantino next, of course, of uh, Grindhouse. And Jimmy and I saw the movie last night, and if he's listening in the green room, man, two huge thumbs up for Grindhouse. We'll get into that next. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. We're back with the Opie and Anthony Show. I want to get right into it. Quentin Tarantino in studio. Yeah. And during hey, the break, I went into the green room just to say hi, because we're all huge fans. That's that's an obvious thing, right? And then I find out that he listens to our show. He, he has XM oh, no. Satellite Radio. Yeah, I got XM. Oh, no. And <laughs> I listen to you guys. Not only that, I, I didn't even know that there was that best of channel that you're just on 24-7. Oh, yeah. I found that actually last week. <laughs> and that's when I knew you were a fan because uh, we'll have people come in, we'll interview them, and, and they'll go, hey, I love, I love you guys. And then who was it recently? It was... Uh, Oh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Oh, uh, <laughs> and he's like, big fan. I'm like, well, just name one bit we've done. That's all. Just one lousy bit. And he couldn't come up. He was just okay, trying to I be can nice. Come, I can come up with the uh, the the, uh, the Louis Anderson on Family Feud bit. <laughs> 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 How cool is that? With my father. <laughs> turning tragedy to comedy. See? That's, that is awesome. You just made our day. I, oh, you know, man. Who cares, about, yeah. who cares about Grindhouse? Quentin Tarantino's a fan of ours. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I was telling him in the green room, I'll in front of everyone, we went and saw Grindhouse uh, last night. Jimmy and I and his lovely uh, girlfriend. My girlfriend was uh, at school. Um, <laughs> nice, it's nice being a radio star. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I told him that, like I'm. It's it's tough for me to sit uh, for three hours in a movie theater, but I, I had it was so easy to sit through. That's what everyone's saying is it, it it goes by so fast. It's not like you're sitting in a long movie. Well, you know, it's like well, you know, there's a difference between uh, and. Uh, I kind of also don't have a problem with long movies, but there's a difference between sitting watching some big movie that like takes three hours and watching like two movies. Yeah. You know, this mm -hmm. whole like theatrical experience. And that's what we were trying to do. It's like, you know, there's Robert's movie, Planetaire, there's my movie. Got to be so good that you could take those out and they cause it exist on their own. But but putting the trailers in there, it's we're trying to just give you like this experience of what it was like at the movie. So it's hopefully, hopefully it's closer to like a ride. It, it definitely was. It's so, it, it, it must. That's that kind of thing reminds me of when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know. And you'd go to the movies, and it was such an experience. And those trailers were bigger than life, yeah, and scary, and kind of like adult-oriented, titillating, you know. Oh God, no! I remember actually going. Um, one of the, the somebody asked me. I actually had to think about this. Uh, what was like the first Grindhouse movie I ever saw? You know what I officially call that. And and you actually just triggered something in my head right now. It was the Doberman Gang, and my grandmother took me to see it. And now the Doberman Gang was an exploitation movie, but like kids could see it. But the one that it was playing with was a movie called The Twilight People, which was like this Filipino uh, a horror film, sort of like an Island of Dr. Moreau, and Pam Grier was in it, and she nice. was like the Panther Girl. But it got me thinking that while I'm in the while I'm watching the movie with my grandmother there was a bunch of trailers in the middle and one of them was for one of my favorite women in prison movies the big bird cage also with pam greer <laughs> <laughs> and and i remember it was like the, the women are fighting and this is one of the first times i ever saw this in my life women were fighting and all of a sudden pam greer throws this girl on the ground the woman calls her a nigger and pam greer steps on her face and she goes that's miss nigger to you <laughs> 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 That's fantastic too And you're a kid Watching something like that I You feel like, like you're in On something oh yeah, so adult The yeah. big birdcage I gotta see that Yeah My uncle took me To a movie called uh, I Drink Your Blood Yeah And it was uh, These bikers Come into town and start hassling everybody. And these kids get this idea. They, they uh, find a dead rabid dog and take the blood out and shoot it into these pot pies and feed it to the bikers. And the whole movie is then rabid bikers coming after people. Kind of like bikers a zombie. with rabies. Yeah. You know, that, that is actually a terrific movie. Yeah. I can't believe you saw that when you were a little kid. Yeah, it was great, that man. My, my crazy of, uncle took, it, took me to see it. That movie's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's sick as a kid, man, you know? And I love 
loved it. I was fascinated oh, by man, it. Oh, and that one shot when he's actually injecting the meat pie yeah. right, with the rabies. Yeah, and then they're foaming at the mouth bikers just biting people. <laughs> Fantastic, man. Exploitation films. Uh, they went away, until, but you brought it back with this uh, this grindhouse, that's for sure. Well, it's one of those things where it's actually, I hadn't thought about it until like I was going my New York tour. You know, the movie will obviously be playing on 42nd Street, and I was like, holy hell, man. We're bringing 42nd Street back to... 42nd Street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bringing a little scum to 42nd Street. A little, yeah. a little bring stank, a little skank we're, bag. We're bringing a little, you know, uh, 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 pre Giuliani, all right, with 42nd Street <laughs> yeah. going on there. It's amazing you're, to me. You almost thought Mayor Lindsay would be the ju- would be the mayor now. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing to me what you get out of actors, too. Like, when you see what Kurt Russell does in this, it's like you have this great knack of mm. taking actors where nobody else has seen them go. And, and he plays uh, Stuntman Mike. Yeah. What a fantastic character and, this and, is in this and, movie. And the thing with Kurt Russell, he used to do roles like that, but he yeah. hasn't for so long, and yeah. you brought that 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 wild side back. Well, you know, in, I, in Kurt Russell. Well, it's funny because you know some people are saying, "So is like, you doing this like uh, with Kurt Russell, like you do with John Travolta?" I go, well, you know, I don't know if Kurt Russell needs my help that much. Yeah, I'm yeah. Doing pretty good, but there is that aspect. I remember it was like I don't know. It, Sometime around when he did that movie, uh, Dreamer, that horse movie with Dagota Fanning, I'm opening up the newspaper and I see he has like a silhouette shot on Magic <laughs> Hour of Kurt Russell and Dakota Fanning and a horse just running. And I'm like, okay, when is Kurt Russell going to be a badass again? <laughs> yeah. I want Snake Plissken back. What's going on here? I'm McCready from The Thing. And then when I came up with the idea of Stuntman Mike and I wrote the character, then I just kind of thought of Kurt. And after I thought of him, I just couldn't. Couldn't put the monkey back in the box. It was like, that's the guy. It's mm-hmm. a great character. Great character. Well, the, the, movie, the whole, actually, the whole thing ended up being, uh, the whole Grindhouse experience ended up being kind of like this de facto tribute to John Carpenter because Robert's movie, to me, feels like the lost John Carpenter movie in between Escape from New York and The Thing. Yeah. And he was even like playing like Escape from New York music like during the uh, during the shoot and everything. So he would like shoot a scene and he'd show, he, he'd cut, he'd shoot a scene, then kind of do a quick cut on it and then show the actors. And then he would score it with like an iPod to escape from New York music. Wow. wow <laughs> so man. it actually felt like we were on a John Carpenter set the entire time. And then dur- in that environment, go, hey, what about Kurt Russell for Stuntman Mike? Yeah. I, and uh, we want to explain to people it's two, it's a double feature, and the two movies are drastically different. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez's mm-hmm. uh, Planet Terror is a zombie slasher film with a lot of blood and guts, and it's the whole movie's pretty much dark. And then your movie, I noticed, it's, it, most of it is uh, in, in the daylight, which, yeah. I, uh, which I thought was a nice twist. Oh, what, a nice contrast to the first movie. Yeah, well, one of the things that we did, and also we were something we were conscious about, um, when they would, uh, when like a studio or these little exploitation studios would design these double features, if they were a horror double feature, oftentimes in the 70s, they would put like the more, a more fantastical movie, like a monster movie or a werewolf or a vampire movie. With like a, a movie about a guy, you know, stalking babysitters or a guy killing nurses or something like that. So there was like a, a horror film and a terror film playing together. And that was what me and Robert were talking about was like, okay, Robert's film is a horror film because it couldn't happen. My film's a terror film because it could happen. <laughs> Absolutely could happen. My father took me to see a double feature one time in the movie, in, in the drive-in, and I forget what the first one was, but the second one was The Sensuous Nurse with Ursula Andress. Oh, he, yeah. That's he, a good movie. He, yeah, but he wouldn't let me stay and watch it with him, which, Aww. thank God, that would have been creepy. You and your dad just being teased. Checking for reactions. <laughs> uh, everybody that we've talked to about you says uh, you just have this mind for everything <laughs> as far as film goes TV shows music and you could tell when you watch your movies uh, that y- there are these niche little quirky things that it's like how the hell did anyone even remember that <laughs> yeah like when you look at it you go I forgot I ever knew that one <laughs> yeah yeah and and I know like a lot of people say that I know a lot of stuff about like old television stuff but yeah. that was because I spent time sitting in front of a TV my whole youth yeah. you seem more proactive like perhaps you were doing something <laughs> along with that what was what was it like growing up because obviously it affected you uh the way you, you make films well you know it's funny it's like um i just you know uh, just the way like any kid you know uh this kid like loves football and that's all he's about or this kid loves baseball or this kid loves cars and he's drawing cars all the time i was always into movies movies and t- television shows and uh that's always what i was <clears throat> really always like about i even remember if i did something good or something like that and uh my mom was going to do something nice for me 
you know, she'd even say, she'd say, okay, so I could take you to Magic Mountain, or I could take you to Disneyland, or I could take you to a movie. What do you want to see? But I, I go, any movie I want to see? Yeah, Blazing Saddles, because <laughs> I couldn't get into Blazing Saddles by myself. And it was like, you know, and she thought I was an idiot. But what kid? chooses a movie. And by the way, I go to movies every weekend. So it's not like I don't go and see them. What kid chooses a movie over an amusement park? Well, you know, I'll see Blazing Saddles. Yeah, let's go. Take me take me to see Blazing Saddles. She wouldn't see that on her own. And I always picked a movie. You know, yeah. it's always what I was into. Movies were a huge part. Me growing up, I remember uh, I had a movie theater like real close to my house. And we used to walk there and see things. And you could sit there all Saturday. Oh, yeah. You'd watch the same movie. I remember, like, Kelly's Heroes yeah, 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 would yeah. be playing. And I'd just sit there and watch it, like, three times. Oh, yeah. I actually remember <laughs> when my parents would take me to the movies earlier on, or, like, my, my stepdad would take me to the movies by himself with me. And we'd go in there, and I'd, like, think, oh, you mean... The adults could just sit here, you know, and just watch. Man, when I grow up and I go, I'm going to watch the movie five times. <laughs> Especially if you like, it was like something that was really, really cool. Like it's a mad, 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 mad world. Oh yeah, oh, that was yeah. a great movie. I want to see that three times while I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen every movie? I've seen a lot of them. Like, I, 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 here's a maybe a weird question. What What's uh, a movie you've never seen that people would be surprised that you've never seen? Oh gosh, that's actually that's a good question. I mean, you go obscure, obviously, but maybe something yeah. that people would be like, Quentin hasn't seen Star Wars or or something yeah, like that. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Leonard Part Six. All right. You know, okay, uh, I didn't see the last of the uh, Lord of the Ring movies. Oh no, kidding! Return of the King, and I, but there's actually a really r good reason. I wa uh, uh, a friend of mine from uh, when I was doing Kill Bill. A friend of mine I met in China. Uh, she came out to America, uh, and uh, we saw the Two Towers movie together. And she'd read all the books like a couple of times. So when I watched the Two Towers, I enjoyed it so much more than I did the first one because she was always kind of whispering in my ear and like, well, you know, and this thing and the tree people and da 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 da. da, da. And, and so when the Return of the King came, I was like. I kind of want to see it with her. I don't want to see it. <laughs> right, right. And actually, I hadn't, actually hadn't seen her in a couple of years, but I saw her like last week. I go, you know, I've been holding off seeing Return of the King to see it with you. She goes, okay, but we got to see the extended version. I go, okay, I'm, I'm down. But that's like that's one that I hadn't seen. Yeah, that would be. An, I, I would figure you would have seen that one. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I like the fact that you will credit people who you feel you've been influenced by. Like you turned me on to John Woo. Oh yeah. And uh, I, this Chinese stuff he did, mm -hmm. which was you know, uh, like The Killer. And, yeah. And, uh, better tomorrow. Uh, better tomorrow too. What was yeah. the one where he slide down the banister doing the double the chow yun fat to slide down the banister? Oh yeah, that's the uh, uh, that's very smart too. I think. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's uh, oh, hard, boiled. hard boiled, hard boiled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In stereo, we did. Hard yeah, it was kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Promo. Um, yeah, I would definitely. Uh, he credits people with that. All those yeah. double gunshots and the yeah. guys pointing at each other. It was just really great. Well, stuff. hard boiled has that one moment where chow yun fat gets covered with flour and then he yeah. like, just puts the gun right at the guy's face and. Bam! He shoots him off screen and then blood. Like, <laughs> oh, just, oh, wow, nice. Oh, nice. This white face. <laughs> hey, what about movie night? Can you talk about that a little bit? I've been oh, reading about you for the last couple of weeks, and uh, movie night at your house is is supposedly just unbelievable. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty. Much and and and, and will you invite us? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next time we're in L.A. <laughs> hey, you guys were in L.A., but I'd be happy to. That'd be cool. <laughs> all right. I think we'd lose our minds if we were invited to that. He has no idea that we mean it, and all of a sudden him and his friends will be there, and it's all stupid. Oh, face at the door. We'll, we'll have a six pack of beer. Hey, you sound, Hi, like we're here. Perfect, you sound like the perfect patron. <laughs> <laughs> but what is movie night all about? Because that's where the grindhouse thing kind of yeah, it really was actually you came know, from somewhere like around like '96 or so. I started collecting film prints. You know, it was. Um, in fact, it was funny. It's like uh, uh, this, this shows my movie junkiness. All right, like if you, if you throw the trajectory, videotapes. Okay, that's pot. <laughs> All right, Laserdisc and DVDs. Okay, whoa, that's cocaine. <laughs> but when you start collecting prints, that's heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff's going right in your veins. <laughs> so I started collecting prints, and uh, I collect prints, you know, all kinds of different prints. But also, I do have a fondness for exploitation movies and grindhouse films, so I've been collecting those. And then I'll invite people over. I am like a frustrated theater manager. You know, the way other people invite people over and make them dinner. No, I invite you over and you, you know, show you a movie. Try to give you a good night that way. 
And so what I'll do is I'll come up with a double feature. Usually they're two movies that uh, they go well together. They can be like mine or not, or in the same genre or not. And uh, but there's something that makes them work together, like a good evening. And then I ha- I have a whole bunch of trailers. So I handpick the trailers. I take them the That's order so cool. the order that they're going to go in. Now usually they have some link with uh, the double feature as far as genre is concerned. Like if I'm showing two women in prison movies, I might like be women in prison trailers there, or like they might have something to do with like uh, the different actors in the different movies, or maybe even somebody in the audience. Okay, if you guys did a movie and I had a, a, oh, a trailer for it, I'd stick that in there if you guys were over. And so, uh, and so that's this, this kind of whole little perfect, uh, perfect little screening thing. And so Robert, I've been doing that for Robert for like ten years now. Not only that, I've been going to uh, Austin for about ten years, and I do a little film festival. All right, uh, it's like one, the seventh one now. And literally, we're like, yeah, I bring thirty films, and they're all double features, and show them, and pick all the trailers. And so when we came up with the idea of Grindhouse, Robert goes, "This is going to be a night at, at your house, Quentin." But except we're doing it on a massive level. So so we could like show you three thousand people in one weekend, <laughs> or three thousand theaters in one weekend. What, here's a question I have for you too. That I, uh, what about uh, Natural Born Killers? Did you not like that Oliver Stone did with it? Because you wrote that, right? Yeah. Uh, well, basically, that he rewrote my script. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> first, foremost, and kind of you can stop right there. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty big problem. I mean, my whole thing about it is like I know people, you know, screenwriters in Hollywood. They get rewrite them all the time, and that happens all the time. Not to me. So the minute it happened, I was like, you know what? I ain't going to play this game. He didn't have a right to do it. I would rather he stole it. Right. I'd rather he had stole what he won from it just so my name wouldn't be associated with it. Was there a part of it that you hated that he did? Like, the Yeah, most? well, okay, there's one part. Okay, I didn't – I've never sat down and watched the movie – from beginning to end. All right, I, I went to the theaters once to see it, and then the scene that I'm going to say was so bad that I had to leave. Since then, I've like seen little bits of it on cable or something. But it was that horrible sitcom, I Love Mallory, oh, with Rodney yeah, yeah. Dangerfield. And the way it was is like, you know, I created these characters, and it kept a lot of my stuff. Basically, the funny... what. what the funny stuff that's still in the movie is my stuff. But um, the thing is, uh, uh, I had position, top position on screenplay, and I would have got lots of money because that's where you get all the big royalties and all that stuff. For fear, anybody th- would think I wrote that crap. I said, take my name off the screenplay. All right, I'll get story by because I came up with the name wow. of Mickey and Mallory. I gave up money for integrity because I just didn't want anyone to think I wrote that. You didn't, you didn't, see, I like that scene. You didn't like that scene. You I hated that scene. I, but, he, but here's the deal about that though. All right, it's not that like if you don't like that, if you like that movie, you're an idiot. Like a lot of people like that movie. I, I'll tell you one one time that I started feeling better about it because I didn't like it for a long time. Me and Oliver have made up though. I walked through an elevator. Elevator opens up. Johnny Cash is in the elevator. I'm like, oh my God, Johnny Cash. So I walk in and go, oh, hey, you're Quentin Gino, aren't you? I go, uh, yes, I am. Well, me and June, we really like your movies a lot. Oh, wow, that's really great. Well, I've been a fan of yours forever. And we really like that Natural Born Killer. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, so you, so, you, know, you I took mean, the compliment that day. That went a long way, I got to say. Right? That went a long way to, you know, uh, healing, uh, healing wounds. Can, why, why don't you just remake the movie you know, in your vision? You know what? It's really funny. I've actually, I actually thought about that about three years ago because... You know, uh, I actually published my screen. Now, Oliver Stone was actually kind of nice about even the fact we were fighting. Uh, he uh, he allowed me to, because uh, he kind of had control over it, he allowed me to actually publish my original screenplay. So it's out there. You know, you can get my original screenplay. And it is very, very different. I thought about that about three years ago. And, you know, I might still do that one of these days. But um, kind of moving forward. Yeah, kinda not, moving. I, would, yeah. I would really have to... Run out of ideas for a while. <laughs> Who would you have cast though, or, or did you think that the casting was done well? Uh, Woody Harrelson and Ju- uh, Juliet uh, Lewis. Would you have cast? No, I I didn't like the casting of Woody Harrelson at all actually okay. at the time. All right, actually since then uh, we've even been feuding about. It. I'm not feuding, but he doesn't like me, and I don't because it, he knows I don't like him. Uh, but actually since then it's actually been pretty good in some movies. I thought in Ed TV he was really funny. But uh, other than that though, I wouldn't cast him in that at all. But Julia Lewis I thought was terrific. Yeah. She actually is the closest to just her performance. 
her vibe was closest to was the closest to any vibe that I had in my script was in her performance. I thought that captured Rodney. One thing I liked about the sitcom scene, I thought it captured the real Rodney Dangerfield. Maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. We always see him <laughs> really? being fun and stuff and yeah, easy yeah. money, but then that creepy lecherous. I'm like, I bet you that's more what he was like. Oh. like I, I thought you. Well, were... that's one thing about it actually that I do. I, I, as, as much as I hate that scene, that probably is closer to the real Rodney. <laughs> like I saw you in uh, uh, from Dust Till Dawn, and I'm yeah. like, I'll bet you that is closer to Tarantino than any other movie. Is that <laughs> right. psychopath character? <laughs> well, I can I can go there. <laughs> you know what? Uh, a lot of people also uh, uh, talk about how you do take some actors out of yeah. obscurity and put them in there. And one that I think is, I'm amazed we hadn't seen more of this guy until you put him in movies. Uh, we remember him as uh, then came Bronson, uh, Michael Parks. Michael the Parks. Man. Michael Parks does such a good job. In Kill Bill, uh -huh. it's amazing, and playing two characters. Oh yeah, I didn't even know he was the guy oh, at the first. Pimp. The uh, yeah, 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 the yeah. pimp. Uh, he does a great accent in that, and just his acting is is really good. Where the hell? Did you get the idea of plucking him out of wherever he was? What was he doing? Well, you know, Michael Parks has always been one of my favorite actors. I mean, he, he, nobody was as cool as Bronson. Oh, Bronson, Bronson ruled. Man. Pack on the back of his oh, bike going over that bridge. Oh, yeah. That's, easy, man. <laughs> That's it, man. No, it's like, I mean, God, you know, if I was making movies back then, Michael Parks would have been the stars of them, all right? He was the man. And, um, and so I've always wanted to work with him for a long, long time. And... Uh, uh, the thing is funny is the character he plays in uh, Dust Till Dawn yeah. and the character sure, he plays sure. in Kill it's, it's the same guy it's mm -hmm. uh, Texas Ranger Earl McGraw and so I finally um, we, we finally cast him in, in me and Robert in Dust Till Dawn and that was the first time I'd worked with him and it was funny because I write for Michael Parks now because it, you know I, um, most of my writing it's supposed to be done fairly fast. It kind of has a His Girl Friday kind of pattern to mm -hmm. it, except for when Michael Parks talks. And then it's always this really slow and laconic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Really stretched He'll kind of look off and look yeah. around, and then the rest of the line will come out. And yeah. he always, like, adds these little, like, witticisms. Of, I'm going to get higher in the Georgia pad. <laughs> I'll tell you like the Lord told John. <laughs> <laughs> that, that stuff's great. Mike put it in there. Um uh, so that was the first time, and then I put him in in, uh, in Kill Bill, playing the same guy. But I had one of these really interesting things that happened. You, you, uh, uh, to me, it's a very important day, a day when you get together and like you have a, a script reading with your cast, where everyone shows up and you sit around a table and you read the script for the first time with every, all the actors there. Now, invariably, there's always a few actors that can't make it. Now, that's okay, but in my movies, if you don't make it. Somebody else did, and I'm going to notice it. <laughs> and so I'm going to give your part to somebody else to read. And you know what? If they do, a, if I fall in love with them, you're out and they're in because they were there and you weren't. Jesus Christ, <laughs> show up at Quentin's reading. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Well, how do you not? I know. How do you busy? What, well, what, that's, what, what else, else that's do you part have of my to point, do? All right. What else do you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> One of your, you're obviously a brilliant dialogue writer. I mean, brilliant dialogue writer. Is there any piece of dialogue you can grab or like one section that you go like that is something that I want to be on my head? Like one of the like best things you've ever written dialogue was. Yeah, I would actually say. Oh yeah, I think hands down actually. I think the as far as especially as far as like my monologues are concerned. I mean as far as like the you know the who's on first kind of mm -hmm. back and forth thing. That's kind of that's up to y'all. They say, "Yeah, yeah, this was my favorite. That was my favorite." But as far as my monologues are concerned, I think it's the the Dennis Hopper monologue in True Romance, the Sicilians. Uh, oh my where god, did yes. Come from? Stop. I, that's that's <laughs> the one. That's the one to beat. That's the one I I know I haven't surpassed yet but you know I'm, I'm i'm writing a world war ii kind of dirty dozen spaghetti mm -hmm. western kind of thing and i finally had i've i got this one nazi and he gives a monologue and, I, and it was the first time you know what this is as good as that i think i finally i think i finally matched it i don't know if i've topped it but i think i finally matched it but that's in this the one i'm writing now how great with dennis hopper's hand in that scene when he's just turning his hand left and right yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rag. <laughs> oh but what i was thinking about michael park so was mm -hmm. the, was the thing that uh you know he was there playing earl mcgraw and the guy that i had cast as the mexican pimp didn't show up so i said okay michael wow. why don't you take it and then he turned around and did it so great. And my whole thing was this, was one, he just blew us all away. And then I was like, you know what? 
I've always said that Michael Parks is one of my favorite actors. Yeah, I mean, really, in the, in, in the top. I've always said he's as good as Dustin Hoffman. He's as good as Pacino. But you know what? Let me put my money where my mouth is because you, know, you cast Dustin Hoffman to play Willie Loman. Then you're going to also pay to have him turn, you know, makeup wise and have him you know, be a, a whole other person, look, look like an old guy. You cast Al Pacino to be this far out dude, then you're going to pay the money to get the wig and all this stuff and create him to let him be that way. No one's ever done that for Michael Parks before. He's always had to just kind of be Michael Parks. Mm -hmm. So I go, well, let me. Let me spend the money. Let me spend the money. Let's get the right wig and the right this and the right that. Let's turn him into this old Mexican guy because he would be f fantastic in it. And really, it's one of the best performances I've ever in any it's of my It's amazing. Movies. Yeah. It's He's not Michael damn, Parks. It's one damn scene, but it actually is one of the best pieces of acting in any of my movies. Yeah. Does a, an amazing job. I also have to ask you, uh, because you're here, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things I, I couldn't find on the internet about this. The Vega Brothers. Oh, there was uh, this rumor that you were going to put out the movie The Vega Brothers about Michael Madsen and John Travolta's characters right. in some way, shape, or form. Uh, how it would be done is you know beyond me, but is there any truth to that? Well, I got to say, it's, it's looking unlikely now. Yeah. All right. Um, they were supposed to be brothers? Yeah. Uh -huh. I never connected that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's no, we never say it. Right. Yeah, they they both assume. have the same last name. Yeah, one's Vincent, one's Vic. Could tell they were probably raised by the same people. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually even had a title for it. It was called Double V Vega. <laughs> Double V Vega. <laughs> and it actually would have took in, uh, taken place um, during the time that Vincent was in uh, Amsterdam. When he was like running one of Marcellus's clubs in Amsterdam, and Vic goes to visit him, when Vic would be uh, Michael Madsen, and um, I, uh, we're all a little older now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and since they both died, <laughs> it would have to be a prequel. Yeah. Then yeah. I actually came up with a way I could have done it, even with them being older and dead. Where, and I'll be revealing it right now for the first time because I probably won't do it. Okay. I came up, well, they all had older brothers, and I had to have that both of them, their brothers got together because of the two guys died, and they wanted revenge or something like that. Oh, okay. But then now, now they're still too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I love my girlfriend even pointed out that your violence never seems violent. Like, you have this great way of not being offensive with violence. Like, you, you put comedy and violence together. Like, Madsen is going to set a guy on fire, and it's chilling, and it's awful. And he's singing into a severed ear, and it's hilarious. He's talking to a severed ear. It's amazing how you mix comedy and violence and both work. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of, it's, uh, you know, that's kind of actually... If, I think if you boil down uh, uh, what I'm, what, what, everything I'm trying to do, that like if you get it down to the final pearl that's left in, in the uh, in the clam, it would be uh, uh, I'm gonna make you laugh at stuff that's not funny. At the end of yeah. the day, that's the pearl that what I'm trying to do at the at the end of the day. And so the and I'm also and it's kind of almost what Grindhouse is all about is you're trying to orchestrate the audience. So it's like laugh. Laugh, laugh, stop laughing. <laughs> stop laughing, stop laughing. Um, now you're really not laughing. Laugh now. All right. And then when you feel that in the audience, you know, it's like uh, like you're a conductor. There's a there's a scene in uh, Reservoir Dogs that uh, I think is brilliant. And, and uh, it's not not like a, a, a very well-known scene, one of the scenes that people quote or something. But it brings the horror of what's going on with Michael Madsen and, and uh, Nash inside the uh, the funeral home. Um, when he walks out to get the gas, yeah. it's just this horror going on inside. Uh -huh. And he opens the door. It's bright. You hear children playing, yeah, uh -huh. birds tweeting. And it brings the reality of it yeah. right to you because you could be standing out there. Mm -hmm. You could be playing ball or just yeah. walking in a, in a park. And yards away from you, the ultimate nightmare is going on. <laughs> and I thought that was amazing. It just brought oh. that. It made it so real. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, that is actually is one of my very favorite things about the movie is actually that that one part of that shot mm -hmm. when you because it's like it's all kind of it's unbroken for a while. Right. Yeah. And it just walks outside and it's like whoa. You haven't even 
realize how claustrophobic you'd be, you 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 become. Yeah. In there, and then they just like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, it was like Son. a Dorothy coming out of the house, yeah. and all it's color. It's like in color actually, again. There even is, uh, and it was actually recorded in a park. There actually is, if you listen really closely, you can tell that there's like a father teaching two little kids how to play catch. You know, you hear him like, you two hands, honey, two hands. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just such a, a, a great, beautiful outside moment and just the ultimate horror going on. And, and I, I like that you hear the music and then it's off for that whole time. Right, yeah. And then yeah. Susie opens her and comes back, back and you're like, oh video no. From hell. <laughs> it's like I was out of it for a minute. <laughs> well, was, oh no, I'm back. Is there anything that you would redo if you could redo it? Like that you look back on and you go, oh, I wish I had written that the way I first thought of it or I wish I would shot that the way I want. Like is there anything you look back on and you're like, ugh, I wish I had done that different? Uh, nothing nothing in a ugh kind of way. Only <laughs> The only thing is I had one really really cool little section in kill bill that uh i dropped out because i was like the damn thing was just going to be too long anyway <laughs> if i had known i was going to split it in half i could have put, put it, it in, in the in. first half uh live and learn but it was uh it was kind of a cool character it was the fact that uh uh, 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 Orin, the character that uh, Lucy Liu played, you know, she's the queen of the mm -hmm. you know, uh, Yakuza. Uh, one of her, like, she had just hired this guy who was, uh, uh, actually probably Michael Madsen might have even played him, uh, like head of her security. And and one of the things is he doesn't wear the, the, the Lone Ranger mask, he doesn't wear the Kato mask, he has like a mask on a stick, <laughs> like, like from Marie Antoinette or something. <laughs> And it's like, well, how come you wear that that rubber band f's up my hair? <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thing is, is like, okay, she she fights the crazy eighty eight, fights them all, fights Gogo, -Go, kills her. Only ones left is this guy. His name is Mister Barrel, <laughs> Mister Barrel, and and Oren. And and they and the bride and Mr. Barrel have already met once you know, in this club, and they had this little like you know flirting thing, and so um, so the thing is like the, now he's gonna have to fight her, and she's like, look, I'm telling you, don't fight me, she ain't worth it, quit. This is what you should do right now is quit. <laughs> you know, and he's so they start talking a little bit back and forth as opposed to fighting. They're like talking, they're discussing it now, and Oren's like, you idiot. Kill her, and it's like you idiots. <laughs> Bride is like, oh, like oh, she didn't just say that. Oh, she she called you an idiot in front of me, <laughs> and you're gonna fight for her. <laughs> and you know, it's like you know what? You're right. I quit. <laughs> it just walks out, and uh, they like exchange the phone numbers. Like wow. That. Hey, we gotta either uh, take a break or can you hang around? What's you gotta, your schedule? I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. Oh, Good. really? Nice. Yeah. All right, because we want to talk about Grindhouse a little bit. The phones are going nuts. The obvious question uh, everyone wants to ask is, uh, what's in the briefcase? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, keep asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, exactly. For 12 years, I'm going to break down to this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be today. This is really cool. we got Quentin Tarantino in the studio. Grindhouse opens Friday. We'll talk about the movie a little more after the break. It's Opie and Anthony. Hear what everyone else is talking about. ONA Uncut and Live continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit XMRadio.com to subscribe. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. We're talking to possibly best guest ever, Quentin Tarantino oh, it, in studio. Oh, sucks. Uh, Grindhouse opens this Friday. Jimmy and I went last night. It's, uh, he's bringing the double feature back. And during the commercial, he gave us some inside info, and I'm just blown away. It's, I it's promise amazing. I wouldn't say anything, though. Yeah, we have to keep it radio free. I had free. to find something. But maybe, <laughs> maybe like, down the road, we'll uh, talk about that. Just there was a car scene that was shot so well that my palms were sweating watching it. It was really uncomfortable to watch this car scene, and uh, you got to go see it. Yeah, he directs the second movie. So. Yeah. We were talking about Death old proof. movies, too, that uh, kind of inspire you. Uh, Vanishing Point. Yeah. One of them. I, I thought that movie was... I just watched it recently. Uh, and uh, what a blast from the past. And I love how there was that girl 
naked on the motorcycle right, yeah, right. <laughs> for apparently no reason. For no reason at all. <laughs> just to have just a nude dip girl. Dip <laughs> Can I jump in for a sec? Yeah. That's exactly what I told Anthony uh, when I came in and I, I just ranting and raving about Grindhouse. I'm like, know what he did? And I forgot all about him. I'm sitting in the theater and all of a sudden there's just uh, a girl topless. Yeah, I'm like, right. <laughs> and I used to, but I used to love that about the movies. Every movie had that one girl topless yeah. for no reason, but the, the PC police took that out of movies and you brought it back with Grindhouse. Also, I'm like, yeah, cool. We, She's naked. It doesn't mean anything in the storyline, but you know what? But That's hey, awesome. who cares? Yeah, it's right? cool. It's awesome. <laughs> it's just awesome. As a guy, it's just awesome. You don't need any storyline for her to be naked. Well, you know, one of the things that was so great about Grindhouse movies is they really existed outside of Hollywood. I mean, sometimes they very much so because they were like Italian movies or Spanish movies or something. But um, the thing is, you could you know, they might be cheap. They may be this. They might be bad. You didn't, you didn't know. You, you pay your money, you take your chances. <laughs> but the, you were you did know you were you had the opportunity possibility of seeing something other than a Holly you know, that you wouldn't see in a Hollywood movie. Yeah. And some of those images really they you know they scarred me in a good way. But like <laughs> they're there like I can like I did I even see that? Is that even possible? So that was really what we were going for. But one of the things as uh that I have explained to Robert about Grindhouse movies is you know in almost every exploitation movie just know a lesbian scene could be just right around the corner. <laughs> yes. Didn't matter what genre yes. it was, a lesbian scene could be around any corner. Didn't mean it was going to happen, but it could happen you at any know. moment. Two chicks could just strip naked and just start making out. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a little of that out of nowhere. Oh, great, and great. Then actually, you know, in uh, right at the beginning, Robert threw it in. And, 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 and Rose McGowan's dance, you had the scene uh, where she's licking the, her own tongue in the on mirror. The mirror. Looks like two girls. Quinn, can I tell you something? I know that wasn't the movie you directed, but uh, the opening scene of this whole Grindhouse experience, uh, I mean, guys were at the theater with uh, dates. Thank God, like I said, my girlfriend was at school. You can hear guys like gulping and going... <laughs> One of the hottest scenes to open up a movie. Oh, there was man. just something about that. My girlfriend was there. And, and she looked at her and you punched her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and Rose McGowan never got uh, naked in the opening scene. Yeah. But it didn't matter. It, didn't it was matter. so erotic, and it just kicked off the whole experience nicely, man. Well, you know, it was one of those things where um, uh, people have been asking us, was there a reason why, uh, like, Robert started it and, and, and mine ended it? Ended it. Uh, <laughs> mine ended the movie. Um, and, you know, it just always kind of fell in that way. But in particular, the part of the reason was because... His movie starts with that scene. Well, that's a great way to just start the night off. There you go. We're starting the <laughs> night off with a bang. And then mine ends with a car chase. So, yeah, that's the way to end it, man. Absolutely. So it was like it was a perfect ending and the perfect beginning. <laughs> Greatest car crash scene to date you filmed. Oh, hey, that's a big problem, man. And, and uh, Death Proof. I mean, right? The car yeah, crash? We, I mean, we, you think car crash. No, he takes it to a whole new level, and that's all I'll say. <laughs> a whole new level with the Tire on thing. face, always good. <laughs> I, I couldn't get off. I was so happy. Now. I just wanted yeah. to stop the, the movie and yeah. freeze you, you, Tire you, on face is just always a bummer. <laughs> you cannot lose with a tire I, on the face. I have to say, I think you celebrate the car crash in your yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, yeah, it's, like uh, it's right on the on the, on the car crash porno <laughs> shelf. Right. I want to speak in broad strokes here, right, but yeah. you you pretty much celebrate the car crash. Pretty much, pretty much. It was a deep throat of car crash. <laughs> right. Movies. In case you didn't see it the first time, I give you four other chances to show it to you. And the movie ends with a nice twist. I'll yeah. say that much. You nice know what's uh, also cool? Uh, the different genres. Uh, obviously, you you were raised not on one genre of movie. Uh, the uh, Asian movies. Um, with Kill Bill, a lot of people were were a little suspect of that at first. They're like, "What the hell is Quentin doing? You know, let's uh, where's another Pulp Fiction? You know." Oh, yeah. And then you came out with that. Originally, I was a little thrown by that, uh -huh. and now Kill Bill, both of them are like on my top movie list. Oh, I love it. It took a couple of times of watching it, yeah. Uh -huh. And now I'll whenever it's on, boom. It's, oh man, it, it's you got like to yeah, scene, it's right? like there are a few movies that fall into that category. Yeah. Alien, yeah, yeah, You yeah. know things like that uh, where if right. it's on, I gotta watch it. That's one of them. You talking? about doing a war movie yeah, yeah. now that's a completely new genre yeah. uh that people don't know you for How, any challenges anything uh, what what type of quentin uh uh personality is is injected into this well it's like i all my movies are like very you know even though i'm working inside a genre all my movies are very very personal mm -hmm. so it's gonna be a quentin movie all right um it started off sort of like 
like a um, you know like my version of the Dirty Dozen, not not like I'm not a remake, but just you know a bunch of guys on a mission. Right, yeah, yeah. those '60s war movies, bunch of guys on some suicide mission, the psycho, the rapist, the this, <laughs> the that, you know, the sergeant. Those movies were great too. They would take all afternoon on a Sunday yeah. with the commercials. Kowalski. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. It would be a four or five hour movie on TV oh, on a yeah. Sunday, then, but you didn't mind. Then you had like you had the actors to do it. I mean, just think when they did the when they did the Dirty Dozen. Without even trying hard, they threw a rock on a tree and Jim Brown falls out. <laughs> John Cassavetes falls out. Charles Bronson's hanging there. He falls out. Richard Jacob. We're not even talking about Lee Marvin. You don't even get to Lee Marvin. Bronson, you know, Brown, my God. So it's like, you know, they, those had the guys. Yep. So, uh, but what's, what it's become as I've been uh, writing it more and more and more is, you know, it's kind of a big sprawling epic. It's become... My spaghetti western, but with World War II iconography, which makes sense because that's the one time in the 20th century that you know really was a no man's land, especially right. if you're in Nazi occupied territory. And so, um, uh, the movie's called Inglorious Bastards, but it has a subtitle, and the subtitle to bring the spaghetti western, you know, uh, uh, aspect of it to the fore. Once upon a time in Nazi occupied France. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. You're nuts, man. I love it. And it's, uh, I was, I was talking about the subtleties before that I love in your movie. And what, another, another scene, um, and this was in, uh, Pulp Fiction. After that whole goddamn coffee scene, uh, at, uh, the, the, your house, uh, right. the character that you played, um, when, uh, the wolf just tips his cup to you. Yeah. <laughs> God damn brilliant. It's so subtle. And that coffee scene was such a big scene. And he just acknowledges it with the little nod in the tip of the cup like, this is good. <laughs> God damn brilliant, man. Yeah, so it's an interesting character, too. Like, the wolf was such an interesting character. This guy who all these murderers respect, right. who's going to clean up this mess, is this polite cornball. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he likes a good cup of jaw and yeah. <laughs> makes little jokes with the gal. <laughs> exactly. It's those subtleties, man, that just make it gold, man. Actually, one of my favorite little moments in there is like you have to watch it a bunch of times to catch it. <laughs> it's when the wolf is on the phone when they're calling him about going and cleaning up the mess. Seems to be at a cocktail party at 7 in the morning. Right, like, right. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Which I got, you know, one of these days I got to be cool enough to have a cocktail party at 7 in the morning. Seven, wear a tux. <laughs> Still looks great. And, uh... And he's like, you know, they're like, you know, they're, they're like, OK, so here's what happened. This has happened. This happened. So he's just making a, a note. All right. Of, uh, just writing down the, the, the big uh, high points. So he's like, Jules, black, uh, Vincent, white, one body. No head. No head. <laughs> <laughs> His little notepad. The fact that you had uh, 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 Marcellus Wallace be raped with a ball in his mouth and somehow pull it off that he was going to win. Yeah. That's the amazing part was that not only was he brutally raped, but then he, he gets the line, I'm going to get medieval. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm back and he wins. It was it was really amazing, these yeah. character things you do. Yeah, actually, get e uh, get evil on my ass. That's my show me the money. <laughs> that's, that's my little catchphrase. I think. Yeah. Out of all of them, that's the one that kind of That's enter a good the one to have, though. Yeah. And kind of uh, uh, Bruce Willis's character yeah. was... You didn't quite see that Bruce Willis until Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And then he kind of was doing that character a little more. Before that, it was more of the, sm like, jokey, smirking kind of... Well, like Hudson Hawk. Right, know, right. Uh, kind of guy. That, yeah. and, and, and from Bruno what I've read, kind of you kind of yeah. told him, I don't want to see any smirking smiles. <laughs> I don't want to see that Bruce Willis. No, but it's actually, it is, it is kind of funny. You know, Bruce really, you know, uh, yeah, that really showed him off in a, in a whole different light, even though it actually doesn't... He's, he's not that different uh -huh. he was from his action movies, but it actually, he kind of just acted more like like a cool 50s actor. Right. You know, to me, he was like, he reminded me of Aldo Ray, an old actor I always loved. Uh, and, uh, and Bruce Willis actually is one of those, is one of the few actors who's a star that I could imagine being a star in the 50s. Mm -hmm. I could see him as a Glenn Ford, you know, kind of star. And, um, but yeah, he, you know, after he did Pulp Fiction, he actually really took that ball and kind of ran with it. Then started doing other movies with other directors he admired and stuff. Yeah, I've I've been really proud of his career. And I'm not I'm not going to ask you the obvious question, which I think is the hack Pulp Fiction question. Uh -huh. What's in this case? What's the gold thing in the case? Just right. leave it alone. Let it sit. <laughs> Read oh, the internet to well, figure it out. What I want to know is, did Bruce Willis's character 
key Vince's car. Oh, yes, and that's very good on your okay. part. Okay, all that's right. That's very good reading between the lines. Good, yes. good, all right. I figured that because uh, he was pissed at him. Yeah. Punchy. <laughs> Punchy, <laughs> right. That whole exchange is just great. And he kind of looks at him and... <laughs> you know, you know he had to get yeah. back at him. Yeah, to me, like the subtext going on there is you have the two stars of the movie, and they can't share a frame together. <laughs> yeah. they just, they just, the minute that they actually share the same frame together, they get mad at <laughs> <laughs> It's like two Elvises can't meet, or else, right, right. Else, you know, uh, the world stops. <laughs> yep. Brilliant, man. And Samuel Jackson, uh, uh, the speech he put. It's amazing how many things that you do that just all of a sudden are a part of pop culture, man. I mean, that, that's probably the most famous thing he's done on film yeah. is that character, yeah. Is yeah. that speech he would make. When did you know that film was going to be as huge as it uh, became? Well, you know... Because it was so much different than anything else that came out. Well, you know, it, it's actually funny because I didn't have a whole lot of perspective on it for the simple exactly. fact that it's like... You know, I made it. We showed it to a couple of audiences. I showed it to some friends. But we were rushing to get it done in time for the Cannes Film Festival. And we only, like, finished it. Like, okay, here's a print. We've got it done. Okay, I got a print we can show. Like, about, like, seven days before the festival started. Mm. So it's not like I made it and, and had, like, you know, it was, like, kind of leisurely about it. No, we had mm. just done it. Huh. And now I go to France, and I go see it at the Cannes Film Festival, really for the first time since we were done done, and then we win the Palme d'Or. <laughs> and so then nice. I'm on the whirlwind tour on it. So it was like Amazing. really. I just finished this. Yeah, yeah it you. really did. And so like, but you know, they winning the Palme d'Or helped the movie out so much because. You know, it could have been debated. It could have been this. It could have been that. But that just, and the whole violent issue, that just stopped it all. I mean, we won mm -hmm. the best prize you can win in cinema. <laughs> and people were questioning uh, the casting with John Travolta. Because yeah, uh -huh. people, you know, it's like, oh, the, the look who's talking yeah, right. baby uh -huh. talking movie guy <laughs> is going to be in this. Uh, and, uh, you know, you took him and obviously... Uh, you you do have like Jimmy said before this talent of bringing stuff out of actors that no one has seen before or expects. It's and a, it's just it's it's, it's amazing. A, it's a vision because I mean that's yeah. that's taking a massive chance on on your little baby, you know. Well, you know, it's I mean it's funny. It's just like you know I'm I'm, I'm just a good caster, all right. You know most of the. Um, but who would know John Travolta? You could. That's well, what I'm trying to say. I, I yeah. mean that you got it out of him. Well, but, you know, I, I remember. I you know I, I remember more than just Vinny Barbarino. I I always thought he was fantastic. And one of my favorite movies is uh, uh, the Brian De Palma movie Blowout. I love. Mm -hmm. Blowout. Yeah, right He's on. fantastic in Blowout. You know. Yeah. I love him in that. So it's like, you know, it's like, oh, if he did that, he can do this. Nancy yeah. Allen, right? Yes, exactly. Remember after yeah. Dress to Kill, how sexy she was before oh, man, stupid yeah. Michael Caine tried to attack her and she fought <laughs> yeah, the whole right. thing? <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Right. <laughs> hey, what? Yeah, I know, like, you know, Michael Caine ruins a perfectly good strip scene. <laughs> I can't tell you, well, growing up on cable, I would always watch certain scenes, you know what I mean, and to to, to get, you know, to get right yeah, in yeah. to go, and uh, that was one of them, and there was a strip scene in, in Stir Crazy where there was a little ass wiggle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was, was there also uh, another, this is just getting my, Finally getting my curiosities uh, taken care of, a little self-serving. But uh, that scene, uh, John Travolta, Uma Thurman sitting there, and she's describing how every um, episode of her failed TV oh, yeah, series yeah, uh -huh. would end with her telling a joke. Yes. Was that an homage to Welcome Back, Cotter, where where oh. uh, Gabe Kaplan, at the end, would tell his wife a joke Question. every time? You know, every time I watched it, I was like, see, I think he... Might have thrown that in as a little homage. You know, God, that, you know, <laughs> uh, no, I didn't do that on purpose, but that oh, completely damn. works. <laughs> it does. That completely works. No, that to me, that was just like the kind of gimmicky thing that a female secret agent show would have. It was every yeah, episode yeah, of Welcome yeah, Back. Right, yeah, but you're right. You're com <laughs> John never thought about that. I can't wait to I'll God damn. And tell that to him. <laughs> you should lie from now on. Yeah, that was a brilliant question. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm sad to say we got to get him out of here. God, oh, Quentin. man. Best guest ever, man. This has been I mean, a this lot of so fun. Much fun. I'm sorry that I'm getting the vaudeville hook. I'm, I'm, yeah, right. I'm, I'm thinking we might become friends now. Yeah, I think so too. If you're, <laughs> anytime you're in New York, please. Oh. You know, anytime you got uh, free reign here. Oh, you got it, man. You got love it. to have you let's, back. Let's give uh, Grindhouse the big plug. So it's a double feature. What do you want to say about it, Quentin? Oh man. Well, you know, the thing about it is like, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to just take the forum and just not send, just sound like you're hyping stuff up. But the one thing I can say about Grindhouse, man, you go. And you pay your money, you're going to have a night out at the movies. I mean, you're not just renting a seat, 
movie's over, get the hell out. You're going to know you you saw something that night. You will talk about it. Yeah, definitely. It was a great movie, and, uh, man, thanks for coming in. You were fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, fans, my pleasure. Man. My Big pleasure. Fans. Love it. Right House pop great, premieres man. Friday, and uh, our, our audience, is, great. for the most part, will love this yeah. movie. I mean, I know that's like just saying, you know, but we know our audience that, you know, they're going to love They're degenerates and they're yeah, psychopaths. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> and that means they're my audience. They're all, they're all stuntman Mike. They're our audience. <laughs> Picture stuntman Mike, but 300 pounds with the worst mullet. <laughs> The Opie and Anthony audience must be at this theater. <laughs> well, well, yeah. But we love them. Uh, we love them. Yeah. Grindhouse opens this Friday. Quentin, this has been uh, uh, beyond a pleasure. Thank oh, you so my much. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll continue. It's Opie and Anthony. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Ah, good morning. <laughs> Roland just walked in and said Quentin Tarantino is a half hour late for his next uh, interview. <laughs> oh, great is that? He really was having a great time with the show today. That was a, a genuinely fun guy to talk to. Man, what a blast. Guy. He's yeah. nuts. Yeah, he's a nut. He's a true cool Love him. Brilliant, brilliant guy. And that's a compliment, by the way. We like the nutty ones. Dude, he is that, all about movies. Anybody that wrote that Hopper scene, and you forget that he wrote that. Yep. It's like, th that's not coming from a place of a healthy life. <laughs> <laughs> that that moment between those two is just, you, you have to have something wrong with you to write that. It was so great. So goddamn creative. Man. We can go home now. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know, right? Let's be honest. What do you want? What do you want? Dumb dyke uh, gym teacher stories? Oh, Henry, wait for <laughs> I want. Right. Oh, my God. Come on. I want Fonzie. 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 T tomorrow. No. no. Tomorrow. You are a... How long the clip is it? It's not even that. You want to like rush through the Henry Winkler Tease. 1984 child molestation uh, PSA? Oh, they, you, and you had to say the whole title so oh, we all no. know what it's about. How about we give a preview? Hey. In honor of Grindhouse, we'll give a preview. A preview. Oh. A little yeah, g g of give us a little. By Come the on. way, by this time next week, I want you all to understand they have to make the movie called Thanksgiving. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. You see the movie, you'll understand Thanksgiving <laughs> must be made. <laughs> was uh, was I the only one that uh, was hoping that Quentin saw a little something in me for his next feature? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Were you the only one? This is what I said to him, and this is why he should have open handed slapped me in the face. We were talking off off. I was line. giving him profiles. I was giving him. <laughs> I was giving giving him different twinkles in the eye. I was giving him my mean look, my happy look. We were talking off, <laughs> off air in between commercial breaks, and I, and I was talking about that scene with Walken and Hopper. And I was talking about how great Walken was because <clears throat> he was laughing through most of it. Like, you'd think you'd have to play it angry and tough. Uh, Walken was smiling and engaging. And I'm like, you know that rope they say with actors where you have to have that tight rope in between them? I was trying to use, like, actor talk. Ugh! Yeah. Believe yeah. me, he should Stop he it. have cup slapped my face <laughs> because he recognized me from Lucky Louie when he came in. He goes, you were the pot dealer on, on, uh, on that. You didn't know the name. He's that show on HBO. You were the pot dealer. And I'm like, yeah. But then again, he didn't offer me anything. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe not impressed, but I mean, still a nice fella, nonetheless. But a lot of people have said I should do some work with Carantino. I mean, that's just whatever. Well, of course. I've heard that. Well, I, I walk into the green room. We shouldn't. I walk into the green room. He says that uh, he's a fan of our show, and he starts rattling bits off and says, he talks about the replay that XM does. We have our own channel over there. Uh, uh, what bit did he mention when he came in here? <laughs> what was that? Boy Room Jimmy. He was that, Boy Room uh, Jimmy. No, no, I don't think it was that uh, one. Psycho Opie. No, the psycho Opie no, thing. I don't yeah. think it was that it one. It was uh, Frank the Frowner. He <laughs> laughed no, at Frank the no, Frowner. I believe he, he loves Quentin the meanness that I show no. when I'm jumping on uh, cakes I of homeless people. I believe Quentin Tarantino brought <laughs> well, up well, well, the no, uh, family is. feud. No, no, no. Yes, I think it was the Louis Anderson. Not maybe in passing, but we had a whole thing going on about my participation in the Opie and Anthony show in the green room. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah, he, said, he goes, what does the other guy do? And then you said, he does family feud. He goes, I'll mention that because he wanted it to be balanced. Yeah. Shut up. That's exactly what happened, you know. <laughs> that, you guys well, suck. And Anthony, Quentin, between you and I, I carry him. But uh, I really would like to hear a compliment today. <laughs> when he when, when, us. When he said Anthony's selling each bit, other out. I wanted to hock a loogie on Anthony from here. <laughs> I was jealous and annoyed, but I wanted to take credit for but it. But then he said you were the... You, you oh. said that he did... Uh, I don't think it made the air. He said, you're the drug dealer from Lucky Louie. No, no, I, yeah, I, I just yeah. said He said that to me in the drug Yeah, room. yeah, that's what I mean, right. Yeah, but I wanted to t I wanted to take credit for that damn bit. So oh, bad. I know. The second he mentioned the uh, uh, Louie Anderson family feud bit... I knew 
I knew Jimmy was going to jump on and say thank you. Yeah, I thought that up or something. So I instantly broke into a little bit of it. And I knew I couldn't. So Jimmy couldn't steal what it was from I me. Do? My father. <laughs> I, I probably could have pulled up my father. <laughs> Used to beat me with whiskey bottles. Well, well we like, would all try those. You guys <laughs> suck. What? Everyone but, with but their look, knives out ready to just thrust it into each other's but backs. But at least we're all acknowledging it. I, I, I saw that we were all doing a little play with him. <laughs> just like, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is where I get to recognize That's what I was. I'm the like, next hey, big thing in Hollywood. I grew up with a lot of TV and <laughs> that movies. Was, that was and your I, angle. I wanted to relate to him in that way. We all had different angles, and I was like... Like, I was brought up the same way. I know a lot about TV. Also, and I was and dramatically looking out the window, giving him a profile. I'm bringing up obscure things about <laughs> one of his most popular movies that he didn't even know. By the way, Stephen S. from Bayshore, you hear how fast we're talking right now? We're just gushing Oh, girls. we're gushing we're like girls. bitches. This is why we do radio. It's so much freaking fun. Today. Like bitches. Stephen from Bayshore, hey, yo, maybe Quentin can cast you in his next marshmallow scene. Dude, I would drop my pants and do that scene <laughs> tomorrow for him. He's probably looking at you like a C. Thomas Howell. You know, blonde-haired, <laughs> good-looking. C. Thomas <laughs> Howell. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, and I'm talking about John Woo films, and he was just, he's a good to bad yeah. fan, too, man. I wish we would have talked to him about that. He's a hes a freak for that. By the way, we're getting a communique from Philly. The best thing about him going long is he was going to Preston Steve after you. <laughs> <laughs> Beat that! Yo, he'll have to do a quick phoner. Yeah, a little phoner. Yeah, yeah give him a quick hello. Uh, that'll be cute, a little five-minute phoner. Come yeah. a grindhouse real quick, and yeah, then, you know, yeah. hang up with them. They're going to, you know... He was a fun guest, man. Guy hung out for, uh, what, like an hour? an hour? And he was a half he did hour with other stuff. He did yeah. an hour with Quentin. I was there, having you know. a good time. Yeah. I like that. The minute you, I met him in the dressing room, or green room, you knew he was going to be a, a cool guest because he just talks. Like, he's a very cool, engaging guy, man. You knew he was going to be a fun guy to talk to. Everyone's like, Jesus, how, how does he taste? Uh, like, if like you were in here... Know. You'd be doing the same thing. We don't pretend to be big shots. Yeah. We're three nothings. Yeah. What are you, above gushing over a guy that's made, like, a, a few of my favorite movies of all time? He wrote True Romance. He wrote uh, Reservoir Dogs and directed it in Pulp Fiction, you silly geese. Let's go to Jack in Chicago. A lot of calls coming in from Chicago now that we're live. What's I up, like Jack? that. Oh, hey, thanks for being live in Chicago. And I wanted to tell you guys, you just delivered the best radio gold Chicago's had in a long, long time. Ah, thank you, thank you sir. Maybe you thank should you. tell a friend and tell him to start listening to this program, huh? Hey, my wife called and said, listen to this other station because they were talking wife and husband bullshit crap. I said, turn on Quentin Tarantino on 105.9, baby. WCKJ in Chicago. Right. So thank you. Hey, how did Gary Meyer do yesterday? Gary Meyer was great. He actually thanked you guys right at the beginning of the show. and said, thanks oh, cool. to Lone A for the, uh, for the nice intro at the beginning of their show. Right on. Cool. Yeah, uh, they brought back uh, Gary. That's uh, beyond cool. All right, Jack, thank you. Thank you, man. All right, let's go to Larry on Long Island. Larry, what's up? Larry. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Larry. <morning>. Larry. <laughs> Just want to say that uh, the last two weeks you guys have had uh, unbelievable radio shows and... Uh, and uh, the guests have just been phenomenal. Kurt Russell, Quentin Tarantino, you guys are the best. Love you. Love the show. Jimmy, Thank you. I'd like to get you in a room and pull down your pants. That's Ooh. possible. If you're going to be in Miami this weekend, feel free. Ooh. You and the other 14 people in the room. <laughs> oh, me. come on. Where are you playing in Miami? Where are you? Miami Co Improv. Coconut Grove, right? Yes. It's going to be a full house yeah. Yeah. If, they, if they do the shows in the Ooh. kitchen or the men's room. <laughs> I think I went there. Did you? I went there once in Coconut Grove, the uh, improv. Yeah? Yeah. No one like Jimmy was there, though. I'm going to uh, get my uh, thing signed today with Black Sabbath. I'm so happy. Oh, you are? You're still on your you're still whirlwind tour with Sabbath? Yeah, they're signing at Best Buy. I want to plug it again because the, the mics didn't work. I felt bad. Yeah. They're signing today at Best Buy in Midtown, which I think is 43rd and 5th. And uh, Black Sabbath, the deal years, comes out. So go check them out. They are the nicest guys. By the way, I want to thank Free FM for making sure the mics worked uh, for the interview today. <laughs> yes, thank God we had um, a mic yesterday. Um, I was going to kill myself. No kidding. As, as Iomi is trying to talk and there was no microphone. I, I, oh, I, I was beyond. I didn't want to blow up Jimmy's spot. I was was beyond beside myself. I, I I didn't even talk about this uh, over at the other joint. Walked down the hall after that uh, disaster. It was a disaster because the mics weren't working Absolutely. and stuff. And you still pulled pulled it off, Jimmy. Nothing. Uh, oh nothing no, no, against no you. Oh, it was yeah. Right it was in front of Tom Susano, cool. I kicked the door so hard. I went I went lefty too, man. 
Southpaw. I, I I thought it broke my toe. The that rest was, of the day, my toe was killing me. It was embarrassing because, I mean, they know stuff happens. I mean, musicians understand technical crap happens. But when you have Tony Iommi wanting to lean in and talk, I mean, when you look at him and Geezer, they invented heavy metal. For real. And I'm not even being a fan. They created it. And it's like when the guy can't Ooh. talk, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave up. They gave up talking. I, I, I didn't uh, want to talk. It was just. Uh, that was really. So we came back strong today. That's uh, that's what I'm trying to tell the new listeners. Thank God Dio's mic was working. Yeah, he was great, but it was just Ronnie. frustrating that the rest of the guys couldn't. Rainbow in the dark! Ronnie James Dio's great. He well, held the door for everybody. And the, and the, <laughs> I know. You dirty interns. He held the door for the interns. I wanted to go, do you want to Oh, my God. You know what? When you're that short, you should be holding the door for He is for a little fella. Oh, he's a tiny little guy. He's just a little, <laughs> a little fella. But boy, does he belt out a tune. He Rainbow in the dark! No, he's a... <laughs> Just in case he's listening, maybe he's starting a band. Look, we all want to get uh, get off the radio, let's be honest. <laughs> we had our shot today with Quentin. We'll see what happens when he gets back to L.A. Something might uh, click with him. There get you the go. Get the phone call. <clears throat> He hung out and talked to you about music after. I mean, some guys are just great guys. Yeah. Man. Like they're not caught up in themselves. It's nice. Yeah. You know, we gotta try to do movie night next time we're in LA. Oh, but I love that. Just because I know we'll be denied, and then it'll be a great story for uh, Monday. Oh yeah, guys. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah, uh, I'm really full tonight. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> My friend Godfrey is a comic, and he met Tarantino in the street, and they were talking, and he told him, "I'm at the Comedy Cellar tonight." This is a while ago. He goes, "Come on by." Tarantino said, "All right," and he came by. Oh, that's cool. So he was... Wow. He, yeah, I should have mentioned that, of course. I We've seen it before. You know, there's something about being in the studio. We're helping them out, obviously, so we we all play these uh, roles. And then you, you go to the premiere or you happen to see them at an after party somewhere, and they're like, they don't even remember talking to you. <laughs> what if he hears this on a replay? He'll, he'll feel guilty and remember us. Oh, yeah, no, oh, I'm just thinking... Guilt him. You're trying to guilt him yes. into it? No, I'm thinking... I'd rather compliment him I'm into it. I'm thinking that uh, he's the real deal, that's all. I'm saying he's not like all the other uh, guys we've met. That's what I say. All right, let's go to Zimmer in Vegas. Zimmer, what's up? What's going on, fellas? Howdy. Hey, pleasure to talk to you there. Good evening. Uh, first, first off, I was trying to figure out, is there anything going on before the show besides the press conference? Before the oh, first show. The, the uh, Vegas uh, uh, virus. You know, there's some tickets still available for the oh, ONA Traveling really? Virus Comedy Tour in Vegas, April 14th. It's uh, we're, we're less than two weeks away, folks. I'll tell you why. And this is the way Vegas is. Um, sometimes, I, I would notice this when I worked with Dice out there, because he would always sell out. A lot of times, yeah, huh? they sell out day of. Um, because people who are going to buy the tickets are not there yet. They're very happy with the ticket sales. It's uh, you, you know, you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster. We've got eight or nine comedians, uh, all the guys you know and love from this show. And uh, we're doing a press conference uh, by the pool, what, Saturday afternoon? Yep. We invite all the pests to join us by the pool. We're doing a press conference to announce all the other tour dates and the comedians and, and the venues by and the all pool. that. By the pool. By yeah. the pool at Ooh. the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. We're playing at the joint April 14th. The Hard Rock is great, man. I used to do a gig out there uh, at this place called Beecher's Madhouse. So, yeah, I, I would suggest definitely coming out, man. Yeah, uh, Zimmer, uh, because we care too much... Oh, my God. Uh, why don't you talk? I'm going to finally answer your question. Because we care too much about this radio show, we're flying in and flying out. We're doing Friday's show, and then we're flying out to Vegas. We're doing the, the comedy thing on Saturday, and then we're flying out Sunday. So it's not get, we're not going to have a lot of time to do much. But we will be hanging out at the pool uh, for the press conference uh, Saturday afternoon. Then we'll do the show. Then we'll hang out after the show. And then we'll uh, fly back uh, to New York. So that's Anybody the deal. that's hesitant about getting tickets, let me tell you, some of the uh, pests out west of the... Uh Little recon. There's not a bad seat in the house. Oh, really? cool. Uh, yeah, so don't even uh, don't even worry about that. <clears throat> no, we're not really worried about it. It's going to be a sold out show. It's just uh, like Jimmy said, people will get them uh, day of, I guess. Yeah, that's why Vegas. Is. But if you want to be guaranteed a seat, I'd get it ahead of time. All the info's up on opianthony.com. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right, guys, take it easy. By the way, that guy's a an Uber <laughs> fan because he waited uh, he waited an hour and a half just to ask that question. Wow. Uh, Rob, what's up? Hey, how you doing, guys? And hey, Rob, Bob. Yo. Oh, and hey, you guys, man, you're great. You have brought me back to radio because I tell you, I've been listening to my iPod for a friggin' year since you left. I just have a quick comment about uh, you know what you, you and a question. Okay, I, I really fast about the iPod. You tell your friends to put the iPod down and listen to our show. Yeah, the iPod you can listen to anytime. Yeah, anytime you can uh, you can freaking uh, download your music and make your own radio station. You punks. Yeah, the we, point was there was nothing worth listening to on the radio until you guys came back. Well, they, we got to get the word out a little a little more. Where are you, where are you calling thank from? Thank you, sir. Uh, Staten Island in okay, New York. Cool. We don't know much about Staten Island, I gotta say. Yeah. On the Tarantino interview, I gotta give you guys kudos because, you know, people have been going on to that case since the movie came out. And it's not what's in the case. When you guys say, you know, you gotta look back to the 50s, 
when Roth looks in that case, when Travolta looks in that case, you get the look on their face like from the Maltese Falcon when you know Humphrey Bogart said, it's the stuff that dreams are made of. Yeah, exactly. And my second question is, I only caught the tail end of the interview. There were rumors going around that uh, Quentin Tarantino was going to do a prequel and involve the Vega brothers, Vincent. Yeah, we uh, talked about that. Yeah, he did answer that. Yeah, he said uh, yeah. a little too much time has gone by. And everybody's a little older, and basically uh, he said Travolta's fat now, and it's impossible to do. <laughs> he didn't want to say that, but we picked. That's what I picked. Up. <laughs> hey, well, you guys are the best, man. You keep up the good work, and the, the guests are just awesome. Uh, cool. Thanks, Thanks man. Job rolling. Apparently, Travolta's uh, trying to figure out how to make domed cities uh, because of um, uh, global warming oh, right in our cool. environment. So he's trying. You think I'm kidding? No. No, I think I think that'd be cool as hell. To be honest. Guys, out of his mind. He said something about dome cities, and um, we have to look to other planets. That he's right about. Dome cities. He should shut his face because that's what his head looks like without the wig. But how about? Uh, well, th this is a, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, God, I hope Quentin wasn't uh, listening. Oh, I sure Quentin hope was not. listening right now. Crash. He would appreciate that. <laughs> I just want to make sure that, uh, Quentin, that was Jim Norton. Jim like Norton it. with that bomb. I bet you he'll enjoy that. He'll probably say those two guys didn't get it because he's seen the Travolta <laughs> all stages. Guys like Quentin and myself are in the know. <laughs> Travolta has a 707 parked at his house that he flies. Yep. He's got a number of other jets that he flies. And he's kind of talking about global warming and how we should do certain things. Yeah, I don't know. He flies for uh, Travolta flies, I believe, for Qantas. Qantas, he as like a, it's a pilot. A, yeah, but it's kind of like a um, an ambassador for Qantas. It's not like you're gonna, you know, be flying Australian here. How you doing? It's your pilot. <laughs> hey, what's going on? He's doing this for Quentin. And that cigarette. <laughs> Wait. So what is he? He's in the cockpit, right? Uh, yeah, but he flies an old Qantas 707. It's still got the Qantas logo on it, and he does, like, goodwill stuff, and, uh, he's kind of an ambassador for Qantas. He's not, like, you, you won't fly to Australia on Qantas and have John Travolta as your pilot. Mm -hmm. you, you know, have to do that to keep your rating, by the way. Oh, to keep your jet rating. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's okay. got to fly a lot. Uh, he's got to put a lot of time in. But wait, he has his his seven hundred seven is not a Qantas. That's just his. It is. He pulls a, he, up to his house. He bought it from Qantas. It's okay. an old Qantas one. It's got the Qantas logo on it and everything like that. And he actually flies it around. It's parked at his goddamn house. Yeah. He walks out of his house. There's a little um, overhang. And he steps right on the plane. It's got a, a taxiway to his personal runway that could handle a 707. Isn't that amazing? I wonder if that's to have... Uh, I'm just guessing maybe there's certain friends you want to bring on the plane that you don't want anyone seeing. Uh, what a way to do oh, it. Are you, are you accusing him of certain things? Absolutely not. I'm accusing him of being a little bit nutty. When he's saying uh, we ought to look to other planets and domed cities. Why? My friend Michio Kaku says that. We have to start colonizing other planets. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you uh, something uh, uh, Ron Bennington said yesterday. Uh, Ronnie from the Ron and Fez show. He goes, look at Mars. Uh, and look at Earth. He goes, I think we got a better shot of fixing this place. This is a little better of a fixer-upper <laughs> than maybe Mars is. He goes, have you seen that place? <laughs> I was got to start from scratch. Answer. He goes, yeah, you, there's nothing there. You got to start from scratch. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, but where are we going? Because what planet are we going to go to that's a better starting point than this? Well, I guess you guys aren't going to get your preview. Sorry. God damn it. Uh, by the way, um, let me acknowledge some dope on instant feedback. Uh, hit your toe, Opie. I hope Fez holds you down and sucks uh, jelly out of your girlish you-know-what. Like, 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 this guy thinks I was trying to be cool by saying I, I kicked a uh, door really hard and hurt my toe. I know that sounds stupid, but that's what happened. We, we try to keep it uh, uh, within reality on our show. Yeah, it would have been more manly to punch the door and break my hand. I understand that. But, but what actually happened was I kicked the door really hard and really effed up my toe. Aw. But if the guy thinks he has something on me, like, I, I don't think it's uh, kind of faggy and not manly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. I'm going to play some music for you. We're flying at, like, 35,000 feet. Now, now you're a... <laughs> I, I can't do that line. <laughs> Pilot, like he's gonna be flying the plane. Look, come strutting. Down. I could see him with this plane strutting down the uh, aisle, making sure the passengers are okay. <laughs> Look, Aunt, 
He's not listening right now. No? Nah. Damn it. He might be. He might listen. Nah, he's, he's on to his next interview, I'm telling you. But he ha- here's the thing. Uh, QT has uh, XM. <laughs> QT. Okay, that's what we call him on the set. And he's uh. going to have, he will listen to himself. Because why wouldn't you listen to yourself talk for an hour on the radio? I would listen to myself. I'd listen. You know, because he, 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 I'm sure he will. So, um, Jim Norton, uh, been acting for a long time. <laughs> And I'm good. Apparently, he knew you were acting and didn't feel uh, yeah, but he's intimidated. needed to he talk to you about it. I'll never get this guy. Please, he was a, you think I didn't see the fear in his eyes? Ah, I, did, yeah. Did I give myself away when I was going, but Quentin, we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Act Mr. Talk. Fabersham. Now, Brian from St. Louis, calm down. Opie he was only joking. He, he, he sent it about 20 times. Oh. All right. If you, That's all I have to say. If, oh. if he was joking, he was joking. Then I then I apologize. I want to make sure Quentin knows that I'm a good joking. guy. I'm a real good guy. And I, I got model looks. I was almost a model, Quentin. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to you want to try to push for a part? Nah, I'm done. The funny thing is, he'll go for you because you're not Ooh. groveling. <laughs> I'm not groveling. Hey, guys. I'm easy to work with. Look at these prima donnas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're. Hey, we had a great time today, man. Yep. Tell your friends, Opie and Anthony, reinventing themselves every single day. And we'll see you over at the potty mouth portion of the program. Yeah, we're going over to XM and... uh... It's the Opie and Anthony Show.
was some uh, that was some version. Is this working? All right. It didn't work at first. What was that about? It didn't. My goodness. Uh, yes, that was Brother Joe doing Ecstasy of Gold. Yeah. Brother Joe's version. Bravo, sir. Thank you. Very been good. Waiting a while for that. Yeah, I know. Everybody's myself. been waiting. Where's Joe's version? Uh, you know, we've been asking people if they uh, a while. musically inclined to send in versions. We got a few, got a few good ones. Here's the last three instant feedbacks uh, from Anthony, the Alabama trucker. Cool, I like that version of the intro song. Oh. Someone from their cell phone, Joe gets it. Another cell phone, bro, Jew, uh, bro, Jew, bro, Jew, <laughs> bro, oh Jew. Bro, I was still listening to that Fonzie bit. That was hilarious. Uh, bro, Joe rules. My mic is fucked up. It's Mine sounds weird too. What's wrong with I it? I don't know. Is something wrong? It just sounds a little different. Right. It's sounding a little better now. Yeah. This I'm, sounds out of phase. Something. What's happened? Something does sound a little bit weird. It, it, it sounds crisper, yet not quite as full. Does it? Something does sound a little weird. What's weird? I don't know. The way you're talking? No. Oh, oh shit, you're right. Now, the okay. mic does sound a little That's odd. That's the way I was talking. It sounds like I'm underwater. How is do you guys it, talk with the headphones both on? I can't La, 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 la. Hold on. All right, La, better. la, la, la. Boy, Joe from... Um, Massachusetts, uh, why is it that you guys will attack any shitbag that badmouths you, like Man Cow, yet the one guy that you should hate the most, Bill Donahue, comes on and you kiss his ass? You've bashed your own company for bowing to special interest groups, so what the fuck? I'll tell you, uh, Bill Donahue, hmm. we talked to, we expressed what we didn't like about him, and um, we had a conversation with the guy. We, we brought him hmm. on here. Because he was bashing someone one day, and I said to Ben, as a goof, get him on the phone. Ah! He'll never come on. Ben, like, right, dude. But all of a sudden, we got Donahue on the phone. We were going to trash him, and he, we found him to be fairly genuine on the phone. Mm -hmm. Going, yeah, no, look, there was a lot of pressure. There was all this stuff in the paper. What do you want me to do? And it was like, my problem was really not with Donahue as much as it was with the company. Because uh, he's doing what a guy who heads the Catholic League is going to do. He hears his people ass fucking in, in, in the biggest church in the country. He's going to object. The company never should have caved in. Shouldn't have caved into him. That yeah. was the problem. And then he was genuine, and we we kind of had a weird, good relationship. And when we went back to terrestrial radio, he wished us well uh, on a big press release by the Catholic League, which really helped. Yeah. Um, he didn't have to do that, so he's been uh, cool about everything. He helped us get back yeah, on terrestrial. Yeah, we've said it so many times. The guy, we don't agree with the, uh, the guy on a lot of what he stands for. Believe me, we don't agree with it. But the guy comes on our show... And he's honest about yep. uh, what what he feels. Sometimes I think he's a lunatic. Yes. But uh, whatever. So if there's any religious problems in the news, we go to him. And we, we told him how we uh, felt about the whole damn thing. And then it turned around and... Yeah, he became our biggest ally, like you guys said. I just want to state this again. Uh, going back to regular radio, there were a lot of people Nervous. in that uh, in that world that were beyond scared. The advertisers were scared. They were, they were going to do a, well, we'll see what happens type of uh, thing. And when that press release uh, came out from Bill Donahue, he, he helped us more than anyone else could have. Yeah. And this is a guy that I swear to you, when we first got fired, I fucking hated him. I, there was a, like he was the my target. He was the reason we were off the air, and I couldn't stand him. Yep. So for him to turn us around like that, believe me, I think we know a little more uh, about the situation than yes. you, sir. And, and we said to him, I can't believe we like you. Like yeah. you even said, I can't believe I like you. Yeah. We didn't want to like him. It bugged the crap out of me. But the bottom line is, he admitted that he had never technically heard the broadcast. The me here's the people I think should be shot. Uh, 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 certain people who worked for Infinity, who were cowards and didn't like the show anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the media who got it wrong. Got it all wrong, made it sound 80 billion times worse than it was. Uh, Donahue, I, I didn't like the fact that Donahue didn't hear the show. Uh, his staff probably did uh, through the media, which blew it out of proportion, and then made threats against the company, and the company bowed under instead and, of sticking and, by And us. you know what? We needed a break. Yeah, we needed two years off. Believe we were on me. a runaway train, and something just awful was about to happen. We, yeah. we needed to just step aside for a little we while. We could have been that we for a we show. <laughs> right. Believe we needed... me, we were ready to kill a listener. <laughs> we needed to just kind of put it to bed for a while. That was our that was our uh, our red period. Yeah. Now we're into our. No, we we're more than our. I was gonna uh, make a Pablo Picasso reference, but blue period. But, uh, so. but we're not blue. He would not. He would have objected Jimmy anyway. Blue, he might blue period. He might not have uh, heard the broadcast, but he didn't give a fuck about FCC. 
he, well, it wasn't an FCC violation, technically correct. He would have known that that was on the list. People went in there, somehow tied into fuck it in the ass. He was correct. I mean, regardless of what didn't happen, they were sent there, still talking about fucking in the ass. By the, it didn't. It, he would have objected anyway. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't about the FCC for him. No, it was. Uh, it's his his thing is to kind of jump in when the Catholic Church is being uh, violated. It's my talk. <laughs> he said, are you going to keep your sunglasses <laughs> I'm on? I'm going to put my sunglasses on like Tom Likas. <laughs> we violated the Catholic League. Uh, wish bag. <laughs> <laughs> what to get a... Playing poker. Yeah. Get hey, a wig. And, and as far as the confrontation yesterday with the artist, that artist uh, will be thanking Bill Donahue. Now everyone knows that artist's name. He yeah. even said, it, I think, during the interview that he's gotten worldwide attention yeah, thanks to said, Bill thanks, Donahue. Bill. It was the best thing that could ever uh, that could have happened to that guy. And Bill was just screaming that he wanted to go out and have a drink. Yeah, yeah. how could he not like that? That he's a raging alcoholic. He's just a drunk so Irish. I think. But he does actually <laughs> like uh, when we were talking about Lucky Louie. I didn't realize he had all those quotes. He admitted that he had not made the quotes. And then when we, me and Louie, Louie was going after him more than I was. We, we, oh, we yeah. said a couple of things, and he was like, all right, that's a valid point. All right, uh, you know, you make a good point. I mean, you know, he's not beyond reason, but yeah. he's the head of the Catholic League, and he's a lot easier to talk to than anybody else involved with Catholicism on that level, as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you one thing. He's a, a lot easier to talk to than anyone else from any other organization we've had a problem with. And yeah. And we've had a problem with quite a few. That's true. And he's one, one of the easiest guys to talk, to get to, to have on the show. And there's something about us. We respect the people that will confront us. Yeah. Like, people make fun of the Whoopi Goldberg thing. We had we had so much respect for her that she, she heard uh, the reputation that we had, and it didn't matter to her, and she walked through that door out of nowhere and surprised us said alright what the fuck are you guys talking about with me and she was what, fun what's your problem with that and, and and that's what I, I when I read comments about the Whoopi thing I laugh at some of these people because we still confronted her to her face and said you are cool you, you're very cool for being here and we think you're funny yeah. but I openly said your show sucks your show sucks face. But then, uh, then it gets twisted on the message boards and stuff. People said, "Oh, they they backed down when she showed up and everything." No, we really didn't. We still said her show sucked, and she said it wasn't for us anyway. We love the fact that she came in. You know, the problem and with broke our balls, and you know what? It was fun. We could have been cunts and and wrecked her while she was sitting there, but for yeah. what? It was fun that she came in. It was ballsy. She's a comic. That's the way she should have handled it. And how do you not like her for that? Some people just expect you, like everyone that comes on the show that isn't involved in the show, we should punch in the mouth and all laugh, and they would be satisfied and go, yeah, that's it. I think, uh, and I think the hardcore listeners really respect the fact that we, that we show our weak side from time to time. Yeah, I really do. Not? There's a lot of radio guys out there that can't do no wrong ever. Really? Is that how, how it is Ooh. to be a human being? You know, oh, phony. But like, you know, uh, we think man cow's a douche. And I, I'm not a douche. And dice, because they had an opportunity to to face us, and they're the ones that started these uh, these these whatever the confrontations. confrontations. Thank you. We didn't even start the confrontation with dice. I don't know where he started hating us. Man cow always hated us because he was jealous of our career and how it was taken off. So finally, they have an opportunity instead of babbling on TV shows or in print to to face us. Yeah. Man to man, and they back out. I don't have any respect for that. Can I tell you? But I respect Bill Donahue. That my point was just to bring yes. it around. I, we respect the fact that he got on the phone with us yeah. and discussed it. Somebody said that Dice was bashing uh, me and you guys, all of us, on uh, love lines. I don't know if it's true. I don't. That's why. I didn't. Oh, that's real brave. I don't know. I, I don't know. Bash me to my on face. I don't line. know if it's true. Get the tape. Hey, they they don't fuck good. <laughs> it's love lines. <laughs> hey. Uh, so if you're in this relationship, but I don't know how to ask for ass sex, can you help me? <laughs> what about that Opie and Anthony and Jimmy? What a turncoat. He's bashing Jimmy. You. You've, you've pretty much stayed out of it. Yes. Yeah. I have. So how is he bashing you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Which like is, hearing like, second and third hand information from cronies that, and yes men. That's, I, if he is, he is, whatever. I mean, I'll live. I just, uh, you know. Mm. Deal. I'm just I'm right now distracted because I'm looking at white superior people naming HIV HIV they shouldn't name HIV patients and this is what she says because poor people might not report it if they thought their name was going to be uh, 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 reported it's a fucking white woman with a ponytail nice of you to, to think for poor people mm. I guess the poor little savages once again need to be looked after well, there's just, a, there's a poor person people. running from the police exactly <laughs> to a house well, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, Jesus. 
How did he fall off the roof oh, like that? Oh, that's fantastic. Out the window. Oh, oh man. No. Today's video. Of the oh, day. that was a hostage. What? Nice. Hostage jumped out of the window? Yeah, I guess the guy, the, the bad guy went through the front door. The hostage jumped out the second, second floor, floor window, rolled down the roof, and <laughs> hit the sidewalk. Damn, was that Bruce Willis? That was a nice move. Nothing? That guy and looks... Then, oh, it's a white guy. Damn it. I don't like it. You know what? Crazy white guy. It did fit the M.O. Hey, you'd never know about white or black, though, if you want to... Uh, the Daily News, this distracted me while you were doing your gym teacher bit, uh, oh. which is why I, it was to snap a thief. The guy looks like Todd Lynn. He's a black guy with a hat. He stole someone's Blackberry or whatever, but they had another phone, so they snapped this picture. And here's the description. The suspect pictured was described as about 5 feet 9, between 140 and 166. They, they avoid saying black because they have the suspect pictured, and he's black. Which is an acceptable thing, except for the fact that when it was fucking Fat Nick in the paper, everyone knew he was white, and everyone knew the guy was black, because both of their pictures were there, and they still had to reiterate that he was white and the victim was black. Yeah, so always. So, they're fucking phony liberals in the media. Once again, I say that. They're phony liberals mm -hmm. in the media. Uh, so, if they say, well, that's just because the picture is there, you don't need the racial description. Stop. I've read Why'd you put it for Fat Nick? I've read in the paper, too, where they give a description, <laughs> and it just gives height, w maybe weight, that's what he was simple. wearing. And no and, picture. And no picture, and no description of race. Uh, race is the easiest way to give a description of somebody so you can eliminate 90% of the people. Absolutely. Right. All right. Let me... What, what color is he? Let's say hi to Nick the trucker. Nick... Hey, O and A and uh, little Jimmy. Good um, evening. Hey, Nick, how are you today? Pretty good, man. I just uh, how y'all are talking about your weak side. Y'all really don't have a weak side. I think it shows a level of maturity when you can have uh, on your uh -oh. show that might have uh, done something in the past uh, to you, but you can uh, understand their point and give them a valid uh, platform to discuss it out and um, really, you know, get on with the. Uh, building a new relationship with that person. You know what's weird about the Bill Donahue thing, too? He was obviously the guy that pretty much got us fired with all the pressure that he brought on. Um, and uh, the other side of it, he, he made us bigger than we ever would have been by just doing our radio show day after day. <laughs> You know, oh, it's, like, it's like uh, it's like a love-hate. We hated him because he took away what we loved doing for over two years. But yeah. then when we came back, we had such such exposure, uh, yep. such, like, attention. Like, uh, people knew our names yeah. because of that incident. Everyone knew we were coming back because so it's kind they of a brought weird, up the, the it, whole thing. Yeah, it's a weird uh, place to be. It's a weird juxtaposition of emotion. Kind of like the artist. Ooh. I, I, I was thinking when we were had that conversation with the artist yesterday, because I'm like, man, the artist is kind of pissed off because he really wanted to show this thing. He believes in this thing. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, he went after something that would get him attention. Yeah. But, uh, Opie, so you are definitely... Oh, why don't you go, go? Opie, you're my favorite. My phone's dying on me, man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, great Jesus. show. Finally Love get you. someone that likes me. Thank you, well. Elvis. <laughs> my phone's dying on me, man. Yeah, and I got to go call the karate instructor. <laughs> tell him to pull the big black dick out of my wife. Right. <laughs> that was more not really Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So the guy, his <laughs> exhibition's taken away, but now he's huge. I mean, look, right there on MSNBC, they're still talking about the chocolate Jesus. So. Is that Is the that guy? The guy? Fucking Tommy Chong did an... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they keep covering the penis. They don't cover the planes hitting the towers, but they cover the fucking chocolate penis on Jesus. They pixelate uh, a chocolate dick. Assholes. Maybe it has like a fucking... A, a, like a, a rosy pink head, too. Do you, you know think what? it's uh, cut or uncut? I think he's an unclipped with a rosy pink unclipped. dog dick color. You know what the problem is? The guy who edits for MSNBC, just a little jealous. Like, oh, I, you know, look, uh, the guy's bigger than me. I, I, gotta, I gotta pixelate this thing. But he licks it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncut, and he just threw a candy kiss in the tip of it to make it look like a head popping out. Uh, let's go to uh, Al the trucker. Can we get a mic out from there for the audience? We've got a nice audience today. Al, what's okay. up? Al. How you doing, Al? <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. What, uh, love you. Love the show. Thank you. Hey, um, when you guys go into the, um, to the joint, the Hard Rock, I know they make commemorative poker chips for special events that go on over there. I was wondering if you guys knew anything about that or if you were going to do anything with that. Hmm. Mm. I, I heard rumors that, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the felt that's on the gaming yeah, table tables, felt. they're going to have our logo. I'm not sure if they're going to do the poker chips, too, but that would be that cool. Would be nice. Can we get Pete on the phone to find out? 
Um, let's call yeah. Pete. If I if we got poker chips with our logo on, logo on it, that oh, would be that yeah. would be cool. Sell them on eBay. Yeah, I, I have a couple from the joint. One of them was uh, one of the UFC events that was held there, and one of them was uh, when Sammy Hagar played there. And they're, they're fantastic looking chips, and they would really be cool. You guys got all well, your logo on it. I wouldn't be surprised if they do do that because according to Pete, they're really 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 excited that uh, we're starting our tour at their joint. So. <laughs> I I tell you, you probably saw you know a full load of them because I, I this is something you don't see no. very often. And for those of us that can't get out there for that, it'd be Take really nice second. to have. Something sir, like shut up that. for one second. I'm not no disrespect, sir. I'm talking to my agent. Who, who's the guy? Hold on, Pete. I'm gonna put you on speakerphone. You're gonna be on the radio. Oh, Pete, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, we don't have them. Why? What? They, they decided not well, to. They, they, they told me something about it takes too long to get those set up. Um, but I will push for again today. We have a conference call today talking about the show, so I'll ask for again. Uh, okay. Our fans want the poker chips, Pete. Pete, p- tell them it's a demand. <laughs> and they should have poker chips. It should say Opie and Anthony and have my face. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm trying to be humble about it. Pete. Uh, Pete. 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 Yeah, come here. What else can you, uh, what else you want to say about the, the show? Anything, any info we need to get out there? Uh, we'll have an announcement of another comic edit by tomorrow. Okay. Um, and other than that, everything seems to be going well. Nothing, nothing new to tell. We'll just got to get in the press conference, everything set up. Boring! That was, um, Opie yelled out, but it was for the audience. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> I understand we're sounding like gangbusters in Miami this weekend, huh? We're doing very well in Miami. I'm sure we are. Fourteen people. <laughs> Thank laughs. you, death with hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweetie, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, Bye. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a tough sell down there. I don't know why they put you there instead of a market where you're going to sell tickets. Un- <laughs> Kenny is unbelievable. He's awful. Doom and gloom every morning. Doom and gloom, Kenny. He's you fucked. Know, you know, I used to work. Uh, uh, wake up at 4 to get ready for the show. You know, just kind of get my wits about me. And the doom and gloom ride from my apartment to the station got to the point where I, now I wake up literally 15 to 20 minutes before he picks me up because I'll, I'll be a little groggy. I won't yeah. hear all the doom and gloom on the you way. Say, you say like, oh, thank God we're so close to the studio. Most deadly accidents happen within a quarter mile of your home. He did that to me. I told you one time we were doing a Pittsburgh flight and uh, whatever it was. I'm like, thank God we got an hour flight. I love a fast flight. He goes, yeah, but coming up, you got L.A. and Seattle two weeks apart. (laughs) I know. I do. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Oh, he's the worst. You've been getting his emails about Vegas. No, who looks at them? I said every (laughs) fucking email. If I put them, I had 30 emails. I, I don't need an FYI. FYI. There will be a dinner in Vegas when you arrive. Parentheses. Jimmy will already be there. You know what? I can't eat dinner? Is that my punishment because yeah, I'm it's, there? that's what it sounded like. If there was a flight that day, I would go, but the guys wanted to come in early on the flight day we had, and, and I was happy to come in the night before. Oh, there he is. If Why? you order chicken at the dinner, make sure it's cooked thoroughly. Uh, people have died from raw chicken. Hold, hold Salmonella. On. Hold on one second. I'm going to get out my camera now. I'm, I'm going to do a quick photo shoot for the chess king. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny is wearing a suit. <laughs> For the chess king. <laughs> the chess king. Blazer. I want a picture like a mannequin from Wallachs. <laughs> Go ahead, smile for your That's chess king. Great. Oh my god. Look at him. He looks like he. Cause it, it's actually. Look at that. Oh, oh, that's fucking Jesus, great. That's a yeah, good that's one. That's it right you there. You should be breaking legs over a gambling desk. <laughs> Yeah, they should have hired you for The Sopranos, man. I agree. You should have been one of the muscle uh, guys. Okay, Tony. <laughs> yeah. You know, those whores don't know how to keep their mouths shut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dr. Melfi might tell people what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you want for me to break a neck? Is Kenny gloomy in the morning when he picks you up? You think? Uh, he's, uh, you know... He's he's all right. He's a good he 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 cheery, you know, good morning. Not for nothing. How many times have you heard the not for nothing? Am, not for nothing is never going to be followed with things are good. <laughs> <laughs> not for nothing. Not for nothing, but I thought you did well last night. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, it's very exciting. We're doing Vegas next week. I gotta like make all the final preparations. Yeah, I'm make sure. Week and a half, right? Like, like eleven days, half, right? Yeah, I've When's seen that. Uh, about eleven days. Yeah, sure. I gotta set up the ground transportation. I know. I gotta get back to you on that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still you know. trying to figure out. 
where we're going, where we're leaving from. And I'm going to have Kenny take me. I mean, I can't get service from a car service like I can from Kenny, so why would I just have you do it and, and have them pay you instead of paying the fucking car service? Yeah. What the fucking Henry? I'm trying to bang this gloomy chick. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to hear the whole thing. That is true. Oh. Some foreigner's not going to go, you know, the, the flight could be canceled. You could have a delay. <laughs> I do impersonations. <laughs> yeah, but Jimmy, uh, you know, the dinner plans are for you Friday night, too. I was just, like, reiterating, like, you'll already be there. How? But how does... Let me ask you. Let me break this down. <laughs> how does that affect their dinner plans? Like, all right, look, what do you want to eat? I don't know. Well, dude, Jim's going to be there. We do understand that, right? <laughs> okay, so I come down from the elevator, and they come down from the elevator, too, unless they're going right from the airport with their luggage. I don't... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no, I wanted you to, like, have your say in what, like, restaurant... This is what he lives for. Let him. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not even this arguing. Is, this is all I'm about the details. asking as to why I wouldn't have a say because I was there already. Like, right. like, would I say, like, I prefer steak? And you'd go, well, what the fuck do we care what you think? You're already there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're here already. Well, they would, like, notice you weren't on the plane with them. Yeah, but I'll be there. They understand yeah, why, yeah. too. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. halfway through, I yeah, tell yeah. the pilot, turn around. We forgot Jimmy. Like yeah. Macaulay Culkin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, <laughs> Vegas is going to be good. What's that? It's going to be good, Vegas. Not quite with the same oomph as the negativity, is it? Yeah. yeah. Vegas uh, is going to be good. Vegas he is going to be positive. good. He certainly does. Because there's uh, so much more excitement when he does the not for yeah. nothing. Not for nothing. Yeah. All that, happy. Vegas is going to be good. good. Oh, you know what you could work on, though? What's that? Um, we were talking about the uh, the poker thing that's going to be going on the in the Atlantic show. City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, I want a drive to Atlantic City. I don't want to have to drive myself. Oh, no, you're getting round-trip limousine trip. Whoa! Um, I, I asked for a massage for you Saturday morning. I know. Before your busy day. I don't even day. like massages. By I don't way, like being touched by people. Not, I don't, don't want to go to that. I, I know you don't, but go. I'm not going. According to CBS, you're all committed. I ain't going. <laughs> Could be a problem. I know. I'm not going either. I know. They don't even know that. I'm fine with going <laughs> oh, no, as I'm long as I don't have to drive. No, they don't. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> They've been made well aware that the kid will not be there. Who by kid. whom? Uh, by all of us. I mean, I'm going to be away. Oh, boy. Um, I know Bob talked to them. I'm going to be gone. Oh, boy. This Two is going to be trouble. I'm film A. I'll tell you three reasons. Oh, I'm filming my uh, HBO special. It looks like two weeks after that. I'm How not exciting is that? Well, we haven't announced anything yet. <laughs> you know, you could bomb. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, I, I I am not giving up a weekend of performing and working on the hour two weeks before I under don't blame any circumstances. You. Even <laughs> if I was, even if HBO fucking had a uh, 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 hepatitis in the vents and the shoot got canceled, I wouldn't go because Sabbath is at PNC that Saturday. Oh. And I'm not playing a bunch of shit dick cards while fucking someone is singing Neon Nights an hour up the street. Wow. Not I... happening. And third, they never asked me. They well, never asked me. that seems like the most important part. Oh. Uh. Thanks, one guy, for picking up on Opie's uh, acting hint. Uh, <laughs> fucking the rest of these dullers. Uh, uh, no, he was just getting a hand job and came. That's what that sounded like. Uh, that was a load bubbling over the knuckles of another gentleman. Uh, 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 warm. The way tapioca is when you just squeeze it a little. We got no filter Paul out there, by the way. When yeah. are you going to do the live shot with the, the diaper on? We're all we're all waiting for that one. Yeah. Um, we had a chance the other day with that uh, yeah, accident. Uh, the, other, the other day, but, but you're, we, you're, you're we going to get the tip early enough. So. You're going to go for it though. You're going to be you're going to get into a live shot with just a diaper on, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it's going to be a really good story that matches the the thing too. How about a wow sticker on your face? Even that or Opie and Anthony in like Sharpie marker or something. Or Opie and Anthony if you want to. Shop. Yeah, okay. But I would say a wow stick. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Opie and Anthony's better. Yeah, Anthony. Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Let, let, let me warn you now. Paul's going to be in Vegas. All right. Oh, Paul. yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, all right. Show's canceled. Oh. Where's everybody going? Can we have Kenny squeeze you to see if that head does get bigger? Oh, yeah. I, I wonder know. where Tits was going. <laughs> huh? I was wondering where Tits was going, but she's just signing some stuff. Oh, Jeez. Right. What? Yeah. Uh, why don't we, uh... Get the mic uh, uh, is on out there. Oh. Why don't we, uh, why don't we break him? Well, well, uh, well, where's the, the food coming or you didn't go yet? No, the food I delegated to somebody. Oh, well, boy. Well, you why know, don't we I, break when the food comes so we can eat on the on the break? I normally have my smoothie by now when the, the responsibility is Kenny not delegated. Kenny is working overtime and doing the job of two people Kenny today. is busy. Now I'm going to get uh, probably a bright pink... Overly strawberry smoothie. I told them two strawberries. 
I like it banana y. I know. Not strawberry y. I know. I told them. The word is strawberry. 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 Uh, I like when you say, uh, where's Matt from? Queens something? Uh, Queens, yeah. No, no, Queens. Queensberry. Queens. That's, that's how I like it, Bray. too. I like, no, I like the pause. Queens. Berry. <laughs> that's not. That's not what you want. I do. Queensbury. I don't like that. I like Queens. Queensbury. 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 Right, well, uh, my uh, girlfriend hates that. It drives when uh, I go. Drives her up a wall. I, I, it's just something about when I go. Would you like some uh, blueberries? <laughs> <laughs> Blueberry. Blueberry. Blueberries. And I stole it from you and Elmo. Blueberry. Uh, I stole it from Elmo. And he stole it from some rich person, because that's how rich people talk. I guarantee he got that. To, <laughs> that's a rich That's a rich person's... That's that's what he's goofing. I'm telling you, he heard some... Uh, it, it's from Arthur. Remember when he goes, uh, the uh, blueberries and the croissants? That's how rich British people say oh, it. Oh, and he blueberries. brought... Uh, I wonder if he did Hubs get it from it. that. Maybe not Hubs Arthur, it. but that's the way rich people say it. Yeah. I don't wish, wish, I don't wish to put it on. <laughs> with blueberries. Hey, uh, laxatives involved with this assault on the media? Is that what you're getting at? No filter, Paul? No. No, no. We were we were going to hit that story in Long Island oh. with the laxative with the school. Yeah. We, we got the tip like too too late. We couldn't get there in time. Yeah. But that, that you know, been a good one. Hell no. <laughs> Can somebody point out that he looks like a turtle in a John Edwards wig? <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to figure out the head. He's a turtle. You've been around way too long. What's up with the small head? Not enough oxygen when you're in the womb? <laughs> yeah. Something's going on. Too much food since He's then. He's got a big body. Oh, you think if you lost the weight, your head would be normal size? I don't think my head would change you're like, size. Someone came up with this term on our show. You're skinny fat. Patrice. But was it Patrice? Uh, well, Patrice has been saying that for years. Yeah, yeah, you're skinny fat. You're not a fat guy, but you're skinny fat. Like, if you walk by, no one would go, oh, fuck, lay that fat so. <laughs> you know? But, but if you look at you long enough, you realize you're skinny fat. Look at that big fat gut, is what they say. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. I got Cliff in Florida. Cliff, what's up? Hey, you uh, five grand that you won in the football pool. I was wondering if you'd give it to me. I really could use it. Oh. Hey, uh, Travis, you get your five grand? We, we're still waiting for our 5000 from the dumb football pool. Wow, that's a good question. We, are we supposed to... We supposed and to the season out? ended, what, uh, Super Bowl, like, uh, what, mid-December then? Yeah. So we're three months... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where's our money? Jimmy needed his oh, pretzel. Oh, he wants to throw money out of a helicopter. Mm. Where's the oh. money? Well, um, no, I, uh, Aunt and I got something. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, we're scheming to do. Clap. Oh, oh right. Okay, well. Ah, right. Uh, what? I don't know what we wanted to say yet. Mm, Can you tell me later? Nothing. Thank you. During pillow talk? Uh, oh, you seem very. You're like you will. Johnny, what's the matter? Okay. I don't know. Okay. Look at the color of that, Anthony. I'm Son, getting a little nervous. Wow, that that looks like there's a lot of green in it. It, it. Like, it wasn't the normal. What that? that I make it. Oh boy, oh, don't even. What what are what the ingredients? Is that? It's supposed to be uh. <laughs> it's supposed to be two strawberries. Jeez, it's like a hello bukkake video. One banana, a banana protein, and skim milk. Hey, oh. Uh, hold on a minute, bro. Hold on. But the guy added... We're studying uh, Ant's smoothie. Much more important than your phone cold. call. What did he add? <laughs> he added a half a banana because he couldn't get the cup quite full. Oh, so it's more banana than Taste usual. It. Please throw it at him if you don't like it. <laughs> no, it's... um. Wow. And spinach. <laughs> What's in it? I hate it's broccoli. just very banana-y. It's like, it's like a liquid banana. Oh, cool. Mm. See, that, that's the worst part. The, I only like got fucking solid banana. What good is food if you can't put it in your asshole for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom, Lloyd. Words of wisdom. <laughs> uh, oh, food's here. Oh. <laughs> hey, Cliff. Yeah. What were you saying? I was wondering if you give me that five grand. I just no, in the truck all the damn time, and I want to get a motorcycle. I got like two grand saved up to pay child support. Here's oh, he wants money. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Wine and song and yeah, dance. Yeah, I, I don't listen to that type of talk. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh, tough luck. I, I even hang up on my own family when they call to ask for money. At this point. <laughs> Same call. You know, Paul's got a big announcement. Does he? Hold on, I, I got to oh. get through this. Uh, so the five grand, Aunt and I got a thing. Yeah, We're gonna do a thing. Can we like at least tease it? You think? I don't know. I don't know what the um, what the rules are. I know what it is. There's no rules in our everyday lives. Yep. So this might be something that uh, lives on the internet. It's a scavenger hunt. You have to bring us <coughs> a Mets hat. <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? Not only did I cough, but I bombed. We uh. 
I think we could say this much. Mm -hmm. I'm hiding the money in New York City. Are you? That was a yeah. complete guess on my part. Yes. No one has told me anything. That's well, why I had no to say shit. something now. <laughs> wow. No shit. Box. That's what he's in the very near future, when I get yeah, yeah. the stupid money, we're hiding it in New York City somewhere. Dude, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. See, but uh, you can't really do that type of thing on radio anymore, so this might have to live on the internet. It's going to be on the internet. There may be, <laughs> in the very near future, a little a little YouTubeBreak.com video that uh, explains further. Video might show up. Eventually, a few more videos might show up. <laughs> It'll be up to the pests. Might be uh, some things that you should, you know, pay attention to in the videos. What maybe, do you some, mean? maybe some subtle hints on the <coughs> old radio show. Hints. But that's what's going to happen with the money. I will hide it somewhere in New York City. Safely. Where only one person will uh, know where it is in the yep. end. Or the first person to get to it, because it might mm -hmm. be obvious by the end. I want to know. Huh? It was my question. No one will know. You have to hide it because it might already be out there. What's How about that, Jimmy? Somebody How about that? Oh, I don't know. It's I don't want people me. following me around for the next two weeks. What's to prevent what? What's to prevent somebody? Not that I don't trust our guys like Travis and Danny and Than. Not to be trusted. But if they hide the money, what's to prevent them from telling somebody where it is? Well, I was calling you motherfuckers Kenny, crooks. No, I'm not, because that's what I would do. <laughs> Kenny is is beyond brilliant when it comes to this stuff. He ain't going to say a word. I know what to do. Kenny already knows where the money is. Yeah, I had to come up with it. <laughs> Until I get reimbursed. All right, shut up. So you're my bag man from time to time. <laughs> Let's talk about that another day. <laughs> but wait, you came up with the money? Well, why no, no, no. There's times we need money, and yeah. and Kenny's the bag man. Yeah, Let's, yeah. No, I know how to operate. Keep it at that. I know how to operate. But I guess, uh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'm yeah. hiding the money somewhere in New York City in the near future. It? And it's something that might uh, just have to live on the Internet. <laughs> but the word will get out there with the pest, and the video will be viewed. And then <laughs> We have to make we'll some, fun, <laughs> some fun videos. Yeah. yeah. Why can't you do it on the radio? What the fudge? Uh, the it's, FCC. Uh, it's illegal. Yeah, they don't like uh, they don't like uh, scavenger hunts and stuff like that mm -hmm. anymore. Ew, why? What a bunch of... Because they cause panic. <laughs> Wow! People run around, their arms in the air, screaming. Where is it? They rip places apart. I love how someone's calling me a hack because I, I said we're hiding $5,000 in the city. Oh, well, sorry. Sorry that uh, we're doing hacking That's radio. That's a hack? It's not on the radio. <clears throat> it won't be on the radio. All right. If it's hacked, then I'll just put it in my bank account. What? What happened? Oh, no, 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 no. Thanigan switched off the baseball game, and I said, oh, I, I was hoping you were asking for a baseball bat so you could take a swing at no-filter Paul. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm not going to hit his head. I don't have that kind of accuracy. <laughs> Pull my Ty Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. $5,000, maybe more, by the way, will be hidden yeah. in New York City in the very near future. If you answer your phone with the phrase that pays. No, none of that crap. <laughs> Fucking asshole. None of that crap. You know what be really funny? If you hit it in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> will it be hidden? will it be hidden in St. Pat's Cathedral? No. Now we can't hide it there. Right? Of course. It's a good instant feedback though. Yeah, the church would take it. <laughs> <laughs> it. Feels better and better every time I do it. You know, just having a good laugh, letting it all out. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Yep. <Yeah>. Ow. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna let Jimmy eat. We're gonna take a break. Kenny, thanks. Go back to doing whatever you're doing. Okay, thank you. Sweet I'm boy. working security today. Uh, gentlemen, I'm at jury duty. Well, actually, you want the side in your yeah, face? Exactly. <laughs> There's one person that they have to sway the vote on. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I need to see the evidence. <laughs> it sure won't be a hung jury. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Danny, with the callback of the oh. year. Oh. 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 Wow, Kenny. Kenny. Kenny had confidence, justifiable confidence. He actually, you didn't see this, but he put his elbow on the counter <laughs> and he primped up his shoulder and leaned in because he knew that there was a gem. Oh, the yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he was right. Kenny, take the rest of the day off. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, thank you. You earned, earned it. That. You earned it. Nothing to be sad today. <laughs> it's time for another Opie and Anthony show scream along. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, terrific. 
the O.V. and Anthony Show. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited about us uh, hiding the money in New York City, by the way. Demonet. Demonet. Oh. It's a go. We found a way around uh, around the rules. Yeah, we just can't you know, talk about it on here once we get it rolling. That's right. But uh, there will be at least $5,000 hidden in New York City in the very near future. Maybe it's already out there. Maybe we're just trying to throw you off. Isn't this kind of talking about it like we're not supposed to? Yeah. No, okay. The FCC doesn't rules that, do they? Sure. No, no. Well, no, but there are certain rules that go transcend. Right, well. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go to a movie theater and yell, far. You can't Maybe. Do that. A crowded <laughs> m- movie house. Maybe the, the money's in a, in a movie theater. Far. Well, that would be silly. Just far. laying on the floor. No, yeah. no I, you cut up the rug and then you just oh, slide you it in. Oh, slide it underneath. Yeah. Or maybe... We took a dollar and put it in 5,000 different locations. That's up to you. <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. I bet a buck. Hey, here we go. <laughs> I bet a buck. Uh, rumor has it. Uh, did you bring it to our attention? Love line? Dice? Mm-hmm. We got something here. Somebody let me know. Opie. No one has heard us. Listener sent it in. I have no idea. We'll just play it. And all right. We'll see what this is all about. George, you're 29. Ow. On Love Line, what's happening, man? Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, I just want to talk to uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, I'm here, George. Hey, I was wondering uh, about your uh, Giant Stadium show. Uh, how do you plan on selling it out? And if uh, Opie... Opie from the... Oh, oh my God. God. He has them dumping out of Chicken our name. shit fucking pussy. I'm so glad everyone gets to hear this. And I, I already heard the next line, and honestly, it doesn't bother me. People have been trying to, like, uh, use that tact for many years. I Opie mean. from the Anthony Show. <laughs> is that what he is says? What he, I didn't even hear what he said. Uh, well, because it's the same thing he did on his MySpace. Oh, it is. How do you plan on selling it out? And if uh, Opie... Opie from the Anthony Show? Are you guys friends or not uh-huh. friends these days? Uh, I'm really not talking to them, but I'd rather the story be told when I got a book that's going to come out, and it tells... It's an autobiography, so there is some stuff on them. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. Now, the, I have a question. The whole some point of Dice them. Undisputed is that that Opie, was even, on even, with us, by the even, way. Even the guy that called in yeah. about the OP and Anthony yeah. thing, for instance. We're on, there, mean, we're on the station I mean, in New I'm, York, by no, the way. but what I'm saying is so Anthony, oh, okay. Anthony's biggest impression is doing me. That's no, it's that's not. That's what he does phenomenally. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, and I take that as a complete compliment, no matter how he does it. But he does it constantly because of the effect Dice has on America. He doesn't get it. Oh, my God. See, when I do you, I'm making you look like a fucking asshole. (laughs) That's what he doesn't seem to get. Oh, my God. Oh, Dice. That's the whole clip? I I guess, unless we have more. That's all they sent in. My goodness. That's not even a bashing. Huh? That's not even a bash. Uh, he's trying to keep the door open a little bit. Oh, whatever. Dice. He has nothing to say about me in a book. That's that that he better make sure it's accurate because I, I have no problem suing him. I talk about you. Sue book. you. I talk about both. Of you I'll in a book. sue you. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's got a book and he talks about us. It hurt me. I changed the title, by the way. I didn't like that one. Did you? Yeah. What'd you change it to? Part three. How the hell do you spell that? <laughs> three G's, an R, an L, a Z, and a happy face. <laughs> God, they're dumping out of our name, though? What's what's that uh, about? Yeah, and it was broadcast on our station. Anyone else notice that the VH1 just wanted rid of that series, by the way? Yeah. They had only seven episodes. They did the first two the first night, and the last two the last night. Wow. That only so leaves that like leave? only three episodes in between. It's done already. Done. Over. Over. So what happens about the, the big climax where he sells out Madison Square uh, Madison Square Garden or well, Giant Stadium or wherever the fuck is? I only saw um I only saw like a, a clip I even gave up on the show and I was kinda interested, without a doubt, with yeah. all the, the controversy that, that's going on. I was taking a peek and I haven't seen the last two episodes yet, but there is a clip they've been showing as a preview of him getting heckled at the Hampton uh 
What is it called? Hampton Beach Casino? Yeah, Blooming Right Books. It's Hampton yeah. Beach Casino. And uh, he's getting heckled really bad. And I, I kind of remember that, that time. I, it was our, our, our pests were getting involved. I, I don't know if this was one of our pests. I don't want to be, you know... You know, pounding my chest or anything, but uh, the guy, the heckler's getting them really bad. That's the true story. But Kenny told me they edited it in such a way on VH1 to make it look like Dice got the upper hand. Oh, but no, that wasn't yeah. the case. He Honest pretty much got booed off stage. I'll tell you, honestly, if it's what I'm thinking of, he did shows with Artie, with Artie Lang, and Artie went up first because they promoted uh -huh. it there, and a lot of people there to see Artie and did 20 minutes. And then when Andrew went on, people I heard gave him a brutal. Oh, I didn't hear screaming. that. Yep. Are you, are you nervous when we talk about dice? Is that not why at all? The, is that oh. why the fart? Was that the nervous? Oh, I think you pushed out. out. I didn't fart. Be honest. Did you, all right. Is it your sandwich? Something smells. Something reeks so bad. Oh my god! I don't even smell it. <laughs> Joe. God. I smelled it before. It's dead animal. I don't smell anything. Um. I always assume it's Jimmy. No. Well, um. Default to Jim. No. The uh. But oh, I think before um, I get nervous. Should I please? Oh, no. uh, you could just uh maybe toss it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Dan's staying under the radar. Nah, Dan admits it. I'm just trying not to laugh because my laugh has become loud, so I apologize. It's very uh, boisterous. It's a very nice laugh. Okay. Uh, let's go to Chris on Long Island. Chris, what's up? Good morning, ladies. I just got one thing to say about uh, Kenny's line from before. Yes, sir. And it's... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, love your house. Love your show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, love your house. Yeah, the yacht is crazy. You let listeners go to your house, man. You're a braver man no, than I me. I didn't let him go to my house. I would never let listeners into my luxurious, beautiful place. Well, don't let listeners in. I'm just kidding. Let my friends in. By the way, the money is in Ant's house. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, right. Good luck getting it. That's right. With a shotgun barrel at <laughs> your nose. Under his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of the bit. <laughs> you got to get under If you live, <laughs> you it's get yours. Under Anthony's pillow. you yes. got to get through the perimeter, <laughs> yeah. into the house, past the alarms. Yeah, let's go to James. It's, on his, it's, on, it's in his bookshelf, and it's sandwiched somewhere between Mein Kampf and the Mein Kampf Collector's Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know another Hitler book, so I had to figure out a way to name the same one twice. <laughs> That's the brilliance of you, Jimmy. Let's say hi to uh, James on Long Island. James, what's up? What's going on, boys? Love you. Love your show. Oh, yeah. thank you. You got it. Hey, by the way, I'm in Southampton, and uh, I'm going to be serving people blueberries today. Oh, really? Cricket. No. Um, listen, I want to say the money is either. Uh, thank you. Huh? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. The money is in Derek Jeter's colon. Oh, you think the money's hidden in Derek Jeter's ass? <laughs> Wow. All right, three strikes, and you can never call the show again. Hopefully, so. the money's not hidden in the fucking auto body shop, or you just got it after bombing. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Jesus, so you drag me into your fucking bomb pit. It's a big way, foggy freeway. A lot of instant feedback coming in saying, "Oops." <laughs> There I go. <laughs> By the way, there's a lot of instant feedback coming in that's, that that is saying that it was a pest at that show. Oh, you know, maybe yeah, it was. Pest. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that. And I'm thinking of a different time. That he he got heckled there more than once because Bloomberg said it was awful. The Rolling Stones recorded a song about uh, Dice's career called "Start Me Up." Oh. Called. <laughs> there you go. Who what? said that? Danny's dad. What was, it, what, was the, what was the movie? Hey, you get naked a lot. Yeah. What was the movie? What? Well, that's Danny's dad. <laughs> Wow, it looks just like Danny. I can oh, see that. Watch, get oh, naked no. for everybody. He don't care. No. Get naked for everybody. Oh, no. Right. Danny's not no. here. That's so cool. It's old Danny. <laughs> That's what Danny's gonna look wow. like. Wow. Yeah. It's like Danny from that Star Trek episode. Yep. That is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Danny if he stole uh, uh, Laverne DeFazio's father's body. <laughs> Thank you, Ant. That deserves uh, something. That was, that was very funny. Sorry, nobody out there enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I get sad with a joke bomb. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I will not punish them. I will punish one, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but he usually admits his fart, so I don't yeah. know, Joe. Oh, the other one? The other one was mine. It was? Yeah, of course. I punish you. <laughs> just wanted to try to embarrass me for no, all of no, I always come out later with it. I just didn't like the way everybody assumed it was me, so I throw a Craig boil. <laughs> Mikey from Philly was at that dice show. He says it was definitely an ONA pass. VH1 made it look like they threw the heckler out, and that's not the case. There were just a bunch of people beating him up that day. Okay. Then I stand corrected. I was just telling you what Bill Blumenreich and his giant cock and full condoms <laughs> told me. Someone, <laughs> they know this because of the condoms they have. Yeah, hope he saw some fucking uh, magnums. 
as he was snooping through his night table. Some magnums and a condom stretching device. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking shoe yeah. tree. Two sh- yeah, two, yeah. <laughs> He's got to put the condom on and open it slowly. <laughs> and then it fits around his... But he, Bill has a, probably a short fat cock. It's probably a good four by nine. <laughs> it's a safe fell on his cock while he's laying in the street. Let's go to Scott in Iowa. <laughs> Scott. Hey, love you guys. Love the show. Oh, thank hey, you. Hey, rhymes with snot. <laughs> and, uh-huh. Anyway, I had an idea for a title for Jimmy's book. Hold yeah, on. hold on. on. Yeah, the, the title t- of my book should be Pull Me Out of the Wreckage. <laughs> Jesus, what am I fucking driving on bald tires on the ice? I'm on Lake Michigan in January. What a clumsy fella. <laughs> well, I thought a good title would be Pushing Out the Fear. Ooh, pushing out the fear. <clears throat> no, I have a title. Pushing out the okay, fear. Okay, you have a title. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> enough. Right. Out. And it's a title that title. sums everything up. It's yes. We interrupt this program to bring you the Ozone Midget Sighting of the Day. Anyone want to? Thank you. I was hoping one of those guys oh. would say the line today. It's like a catchphrase. Yeah. Why don't we get the entire audience to say it? Mm. Who saw this coming? Wrong. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a lot of catchphrases on this show? Yep. Yeah. 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 Not not crutches, but an actual catchphrase. All right. Who saw this coming? That's your crutch. I got mine. The reality is, all right. Shut up. Frunkus. Jimmy's just farting. Um. What else do we have that are catchphrases? Nice. Nice. That's just a word. Ramon. Ramon. That's not a catchphrase. That's not a catchphrase. That's more of a lifestyle. <laughs> All right, let's go to Mike. Mike, what's up? I kill rich cunts. <laughs> Goddamn rich cunts. That's more of a religious philosophy. <laughs> no, what I'm noticing with uh, the live studio audience? Yeah. We don't have to work as hard. No. You just play a clip and they laugh. They laugh. <laughs> That's so easy. Well, they, you know what it is? They're, they're, it's like you, your timing is cool because with an audience, you, it's, like, it's like it is an other live performance. I don't know why I just said that because it meant nothing. I said the <laughs> see, obvious. But look, they're laughing, see? Well, yeah, but I wouldn't know people were laughing at that. We can kind of get a better gauge of what's funny because those are our listeners. Shut up. Point taken. <laughs> You're right. That kid was right. And our funny jokes. I'm not good. <laughs> Let's go to Mike. They didn't laugh at that one. Well, because it was hurtful. <laughs> oh, Mike, sorry. <laughs> hey there, Mike. Hey there, Mike. What's going on? By the way, I know it'll make this audience laugh. <laughs> Niggers. Laugh and march. Hey there, Mike. Let's go, Mike. Hey there. Hey guys, love you. Love you the show. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I have an Amish midget sighting for you guys. Was it in a schoolhouse six uh, six months ago? It wasn't a midget, sir. <laughs> no, actually, this was a real one. Didn't we hear about a midget Amish person recently? Yeah, I think so. Maybe this yes, is the same uh, guy. I just saw him walk out of the grocery store. It was hilarious. Carrying two bags of ice, and they were dragging on the ground. Ew. So did the bag rip, and then the ice go flying all over the parking I lot? I don't know. I just... Did he get into a pony and buggy? I was just going to say that a guy named Shetland Pony and a wagon. (laughs) I don't know. I didn't see his ride. Did you not see his ride? How could you make an Amish midget boring? Congratulations. Yeah, you stink. (laughs) That's a gift. (laughs) (laughs) Amish fucking midget. All right. My bad, guys. Sorry. Meanwhile, back at the show... So you got a title for the book. That's really cool. Yeah, but I'm not going to go. I uh, I don't know what it's. I, I feel good about it. All right. We got yeah. your uh, story of the day. Creepy Ooh. story of the day. Mmm. Yeah. Well, I love when we go to the CDs. Mm-hmm. That means fun is coming. Oh, I think my cross dressers. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? But they don't cruise Craigslist. To them, it was just, they don't understand. They thought it was really just cross CDs. Dress, cross dressing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She uh, indicated on the internet that she was a prostitute. But far worse than selling her own body, this Taylor woman is accused of making her seven-year-old daughter available for sex. (laughs) She was prepared for pornographic photos and anything else that was available if the price was right. Wayne County Sheriff deputies arrested the mother outside a hotel near Metro Airport. They say she brought her daughter a bag full of sex toys and different outfits for her little girl to change into. Investigators tell Action News the mother thought she was coming to the hotel to meet a man she had chatted with online about photographing her daughter while she was being molested. Thankfully, that man was really an undercover deputy. 
Jesus. Hmm. Thankfully. Cock blocker he was. Was he on the job or? <laughs> yeah. Was he the guy going for it? Wow. Maybe he was the guy going for it and then we went, oh, Jeez. crap, no, I got to arrest him. She must have needed drugs or she should just be shot. No shit. Like, why would you even put her on? Just shoot her. Fancy talk. Fancy talk for a whore. Shouldn't talk to a child like that. <laughs> liar whore. Liar whore. You know it. Horrible. Seven years old, man. It's just a kid. Show me how you suck a guy's cock. <laughs> the last time I'm gonna ask you. Don't be so mean. What were the outfits? I'd love to know. Probably unsexy. Oh, it has <laughs> to a be. A little cowboy with a football helmet and a fucking, like, like a football player. <laughs> it, uniform. It, it indicated very clearly that that child would do whatever it was uh, that that the person that was going to meet the child wanted to do and that, sh that she would see that the child complied. And the sheriff says she wanted to sell pictures of her little girl to collectors of child porn. Today the mother was arraigned on multiple charges including child sexually abusive activity and soliciting. And to protect the innocent lives of the children, the sheriff is not even identifying their mother. The little girl and her four siblings have been placed in protective custody. The question now is what kind of harm and abuse May the children have already endured. Mm. And I uh, got a comment from the guy when the uh, sheriffs uh, broke in. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> uh, that, that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're trying to have sex with a seven-year-old girl? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> you look angry. Grr. <laughs> Chester's liver from Wagbag. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing these news reporters never heard of Take Your Daughter to Work Day. <laughs> Which other woman was a prostitute? Sex with yeah. a seven-year-old. Why not? Oh. <laughs> what noise did he make after he put honey on the little vagina? Oh. Grr. <laughs> Grr. <laughs> Wait, what, what did did he say anything to the to the mother and the little girl when the police showed up at the front door? No, nothing's wrong. Just stay in the living room. I'll handle it. <laughs> that that's terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mother China. <laughs> <laughs> wow, old school. All right. Yeah. All right. With that, we're gonna take a take a little break. Ski. All right. Another one. Break. Ski. Huh? Break another one. Yeah. Sometimes we take a lot of breaks. It's only ten to ten. I'm gonna go home. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, I have to write my books due tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day <laughs> for the final copy editor copy. Your editor. book report. Eh, I gotta go over it. When is it coming out? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> the National Board of Health and Lucky Fella Brand Suppositories bring you your body and you. Hosted by famed sexual behavior expert, Professor Jim Norton. I'm a perv and I, I'm weird, but I'm straightforward. Professor Norton outlines his very hands-on approach to sexual education. Wait till your kids are sleeping and just lay over one of them. They won't know. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, what? For example, the art of foreplay. The first thing I do is go to the bathroom and take one of those eight decibel shits. Oral sex. <laughs> Why? Sexual experimentation. I was performing tushalinga. And sexually transmitted diseases. I wish I had AIDS so I could bite somebody. And for the grown-ups, there's also a segment on marriage counseling. Honey, you're 41. Can I finally have the balloon nut? He'll also stress the importance of lubrication. You want it to sound like when your muddy boot gets stuck <laughs> like a quagmire? Another word to the wise from Professor Jim Norton. Remember, on the face. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the heads up. Joe from Valley Stream, uh, he writes, Maury has the 100-pound babies on Channel 11, so he tuned in the show, and they're marching out the little fellas. Uh, uh, one's a girl. How's your back? Bad. It's bad. Yeah. Who did your hair? Mommy. Yeah? Why does she have to be in a tank top? She's got Because she's got tits, and they want to show her tits in her belly. You know, she could play with the neighborhood kids, run around with Mother's them. Mother's a fat no, cunt, too. She runs out of breath. She got so worse. Two she, years old, 94 she pounds. She steals my six month old baby's food. Steals it. Yeah. Shut up. Find her underneath the kitchen. Stop table. feeding your fucking kids. You're saying, hey, look, put that back down. <laughs> this is the beauty of Maury. They just showed a montage of the fat baby <laughs> eating all sorts of food <laughs> that they set up at a restaurant before the, the taping. Right. I mean, she'll hide baby look. food in her purse. She'll take it out of the cabinet and put she, it in her she's purse. She's two years old. She's got a purse. Is that why you can't so don't fucking day. give her a purse, you dummy. 
Yeah, and then tell her to fucking shut her fat little mouth and smack her. Jesus, why do I hate this kitchen? What do you got in there? Show it, pull it out. What? My puppy bone. Your puppy? Uh -huh, my puppy bone. Look at this other kid wants to eat her pocketbook. Bone. Pocket bone. <laughs> my bone. Pulls a fucking puppy mother's dildo out of there. That would be embarrassing. The kid screams as though she can eat. Yeah. Do you have a name for your puppy? Fucking indulgent yeah. mother. What's the name? But he named Puppy. Puppy. <laughs> How do you laugh? Okay, oh, fat baby. Duh. Not we'll cute. Right after Not this. cute. Oh, Mark. My yeah. She's her mother wait, is wait. beating her grandchild to death. She doesn't have a problem. I don't care if she doesn't. What about me? I don't know me. You killing that baby. Rhonda is scared that her 96-pound three-year-old will have as painful a childhood as she has. Those cops will. Oh. laugh at you and her? Yeah. These mothers need help, and help is on the way. You're not alone. Here's we can save your baby. You can save baby. Get the inside scoop. That baby needs to be put in an oven and basted. Well, you just fucking... You, 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 every time the baby cries, you, I know it's harsh, mm -hmm. but you put a little bit of warm western oil on your hand, <laughs> and you crack its face. <laughs> <laughs> the type of slap, like, like, uh, like a... <laughs> and, and not only will the kids stop crying, but you'll laugh. <laughs> 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 I fucking hate fat babies. Ah, uh, your mic doesn't work, so why are you trying? Is it open? Turn on. Talk to uh, There it goes. There you no go. works. They look like Joe from the Little Rascals. Remember? Or Chubsy Ubsy. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they all, all have that, that look. fucking face. Ah, Chubsy Ubsy. Like little miniature sumo wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. And the fat, hard gut. That's that fucking heart attack gut when a kid's too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost punchable. I want the kids. <laughs> that little, that, every little baby should just be going. Dah! <laughs> All right, we got. Uh, yeah, they do have Bob Kelly belly. <laughs> oh my rattle! I uh, from a rattle man. Uh, oh, hold oh, my passive. Oh, hold my binky. Oh, my binky. Dell Hardware Warranty. Four. My name is. How can I help you? Well, my mom got one. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm having a problem. How about now? I got. Phone on. Can you hear me now? Um, I can hear you. You're breaking up a little bit, but oh, great! All right. Well, what I got is my mom's laptop here, and it won't turn off. It won't turn off. No. Okay. Cannot turn it off. Try to turn off the power. Everything. It won't turn off. Just to set up. Calling uh, customer support. Dell. Uh huh. All right, can I get the uh, service tag? Jesus Christ, I just gave it to you people. All right, express service code is 419. You got it? I couldn't hear you very well. You're yelling very loud. Uh, 49, is that right? Yeah, it's close enough. All I need to know is how do you turn this goddamn thing off? You know, your, your automated crap sucks, all right? And I think you suck, all right? Jesus Christ, how do you turn this fucking thing off? You understand that? All right, well, I will just need to actually uh, see what system you have here. So I'm showing that you... Can I get the name on the account? It's... All right, and the phone number is purchased that. Why do you need all this? All I need to know is how do you turn the thing off? <laughs> so true. God, I man. hate these. They will ask you to enter your service tag, and then the next person asks you. It's like, why the yeah, fuck why, why are am you I asking it? me more? That Dell fucking stinks. <laughs> I need to verify the owner of the system, sir. Oh, Jesus Christ. The number is... 72. All right. And can I get your name? My name is... And your last name? Holy shit. I'm her son! God damn you! Fucking goddamn people, I swear to God. And your phone number? My phone number is the same! Okay, and your email address? Why do you need that? You know you're upsetting the fuck out of me, alright? You fucking goddamn asshole! <laughs> Look, God damn it! The fucking thing will not it shut off. You understand that? Since last night, and you got a goddamn battery problem as well. All right, what the hell the fuck's going on with this goddamn thing? 
I'm getting very upset about this. You know, I've spent about an hour trying to talk to you people on this freaking automated crap you got, and that's what's got me all fucking upset like this, all right? And if you didn't have all this automated crap on your goddamn phone system, then somebody would talk to a human. You know what a human is? Yes, sir, I do, and... I you keep know. acting like a goddamn computer and keep asking me for these stupid questions when all I need to know is how do you shut this thing down? It says Windows is shutting down. It's been saying that since last night, all right? Now, how come it won't shut down, and how come I can't shut it down? What do I got to do, rip the damn battery out of the back of it? Well, that would be a, a start. Yeah, get a hold of yourself, jerk off, or fucking just unplug it, let the battery wind down. Well, just keep your finger on the button. It will eventually yeah. turn off. I've had Hold that. Hold the uh, this on button long enough, and it'll shut off. Um, no, you definitely don't want to do that. Well, what do I got to do? Will you please tell me? Yeah. All I need... So, do you not have an email address? That's all I need from you. Do you not have an email address? I'm not going to give it to you. All right? Let's put it that way. All right? Because I have nothing to do with this goddamn computer. All I want to know is how you shut it down before it causes a goddamn fucking fire. Will you fucking tell me? All right. So, to shut the system off, you see the power button on it? I've been pushing it for the past three fucking hours. It don't fucking do nothing. Okay, hold down the power button for ten seconds right now. <laughs> Well, Jesus Christ, you could have told me that. You know, you are not, not very freaking helpful. You know that? You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> and you can put this in your fucking records, all right? Uh, it's funny you hear it pop off. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, oh fuck. Oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, hate Dell customer service. It is the worst I've ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. They are atrocious. And Mac is kicking your fucking asses, and it's nice to see. It is so difficult to get through to somebody and actually get an answer. And the help is disgusting. It's all Indians, and it's all shit, and it's the same redundancy. It's the same fucking redundancy, man. They use a flowchart. They use a flowchart. So you call up. They want to know what your problem is. And no matter what it is, it's like, all right, uh, like I had with Vista. I had a problem with when I was loading up Vista, and it was just, you know, an abomination. We know how that worked out. But when I called them up and got customer service, I explained the problem, and I got, I swear to you, I got, is the computer plugged in? <laughs> it's like that. right at the top of the list. I say, you know something? If you're going to start here, we're going to be here a long fucking time. That's when you... Because I'm like 800 steps in front of my computer being plugged in. Is the on button you push to on, is Windows booted? Holy fuck. <laughs> it is enough where you really want to just fly halfway around the globe yep. and slaughter a cow in front of somebody. Hey, my, Michael Dell, you should know that your customer service is so bad. Jimmy? It's costing you a lot of money. Is he listening to the show right now? Uh, he might be. Michael Dell's driving his car going, Jesus, Jimmy. Oh, my God, he's talking to me directly. Well, you, I'm Jimmy. talking to you directly, and I'm telling you the dog shit problem I had with your company recently. I sent back my 400-pound laptop. I had to pay my own shipping because of the twat that you hired to fucking deal with it. None of them could help me. They were awful. And I wound up going to a Mac, and I used Windows on that, and I just knocked it down to Windows 25%. The dog shit customer service. You chased me away from an operating system concept. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Michael Dell's wearing an Inno, yeah. and he's listening to the show holding up a copy of Lucky Louie he was going to buy, and now he's going, <laughs> fuck oh, you. Yeah. Good, yeah. Throws it back in the fucking <laughs> rack. That's right. Why don't you put it in the mail and send it to New Delhi and let all your <laughs> fucking employees enjoy it? <laughs> Hello, my my name is Rich. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. We'll call it Lucky Smelly. <laughs> hey, let's get a Larry on Long Island. Larry. Larry. Hey, guys. Larry. Larry. Don't Larry. Larry. the hallway, Larry. Your mother, Larry. Your mother's an animal. What's up, Larry? Oh, no. Love you. Love your show. Thanks. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Larry. 
I have to feel with Anthony with this whole thing. I remember the whole situation with your your lovely Dell fans over there. Oh, uh, yeah. Three times tried to order up the same power, uh, a power supply for my Dell. And the guy said, well, did you order it from the home or did you order it for your business? I said, well, what epic <laughs> difference does it make when I want this one specific power supply I see on your website? Three fucking times I get the wrong power supply. And, and the guy's trying to tell me, well, it's the right one. And they even call me before before they sent it to find out if it was the right one and I said that's the one I want I open up the box it's the wrong one yeah they did the same thing with my uh, my vent fans my uh, case vent fans they sent the wrong ones and then I sent them back and they sent me back something like fucking that didn't even make any sense like a power supply they sent me back a, <laughs> an AC power supply I'm like what the fuck I, I, I didn't even ask for this I need a fucking fan yeah, just awful, and it took forever. They canceled my order and then never told me. So, like, time went by, and I'm like, I should have gotten those. I did, like, overnight. Where the fuck is it? So I called. There is not a record of your ever uh, oh, calling. Great. Or, uh, so you got to go through the whole thing again. And he said, no, I spoke to somebody. Here's the fucking number they gave me. And Nothing is coming up. We must start the order over. I was like, oh, but, I, I, uh, but I did all this already. Yeah. They let's, are so bad, man. Let's go to Steve on Long Island. Steve, what's up? Hello, I love the show. Hey, it is Steve. <laughs> what's up, Steve? I love the show. You're is not Steve. The help desk, help me. <laughs> no, see, the Indian <laughs> isn't calling help, help. Desk, You got the concept backwards. I know. Why? <laughs> Frankus. Frankus. I would like some Frankus to eat. Uh, we're going to play this for Paul. Uh -oh. No filter, Paul. Oh, it must be a man with a little head. English TV portraying Americans as stupid. That's shocking. English TV portraying Americans as stupid. I know, considering whoever invented the TV came from here. Yeah, dummy. No, that's why I didn't or know who it was. It's actually Germany. <laughs> they, no, it wasn't. Do they like? Sure. No. I'm pretty sure the German, uh, German Wrong. gentleman. It was Pete Television. <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> what a douche. <laughs> and he was from Schenectady. <laughs> Pete Television. <laughs> That would make sense, though. <laughs> the television. Why not name it <laughs> after, after your last name? Pete <laughs> Television. That's right. Paul, what's up with uh, the English making fun of Americans on TV? I don't know. Let's hear it. We, I, don't, I don't know what show it's from, so. But, I mean, you've, you've lived over there. I mean, is this thing happening? Well, they really just comment about the, the obesity over here, but obviously I moved uh, here. Well, and yeah, like this a, country that doesn't. What happened to you? Yeah, uh, exactly. I moved to America. Go what, you were, you were thin and... Over there? Yeah, I was 157. Now I'm breaking 200 quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put a little bit of weight on. The food here is better. Food, that, all right. That fucking boiled dribble they serve oh, uh, across the pond. Horrid food. Uh, this guy's got a problem with me. Is what, it, what, but, but what, what, It's okay. Well, you don't what? even have to go to him, but he's Get just him asking. I'll answer his what? question. Where? Get him uh, on the phone. He says, why is Ant still with Dell? All right, he's right. Uh, Steve. Anthony. Welcome yeah. aboard. Hi. Anthony, it's Keith in Jersey. How are you? Hi, yes, Steve. Uh, I want to know why you're still messing around with Dell with all, the, all these problems when uh, you can just go buy yourself a Mac with an Intel chip in there and not have any problems. I there. have a Mac, and I well, have a Mac it. laptop, and I have a Dell, and I have a Dell uh, laptop. Here's why I get Dell when I need a Windows-based computer. Because even though their customer service stinks on fucking ice, I've in the, I believe, probably 12 years that I've been buying Dell computers, the fan issue is the one and only problem I've ever had with my Dell. <laughs> like, I, I didn't okay. have to deal with customer service because uh, their computers weren't breaking. And I, I know this could be completely isolated, but I haven't had any problems with my Dell computers, so that's why I kept getting Dell. The Vista thing is a problem with Vista and Dell, so uh, that's a, a separate well, that's thing. But I have both. I have uh, Windows and Mac, uh, uh, Dell and uh, Mac. I don't know how people uh, get along with Try, with only try running X partitioning your hard drive on the Mac. And, I, uh, I don't want to. Dude, the games I run would fucking melt a Mac. They just don't have the graphics cards for the Macs, uh, uh, for the dude, games that I have. I'm an Apple certified Mac consultant. That would not happen. I, I, I am not God. partitioning off my hard drive to play games on something. Windows runs my games better. I know this. Dude, Windows, let me tell you, I partition, I don't play games. I have a 200 gig hard drive. Uh, All you do is play games? No, I don't play head <laughs> games, man. <laughs> I have a 200 gig uh, MacBook Pro. 
and I split the I partition the hard drive, 100 gigs each. Windows mm -hmm. should suck up that one of them fat kids' dicks. Windows should <laughs> suck it. So I switched the partition, and now it's 175.25 in favor of Mac. Yeah. The 25 gigs, though, Windows does not run as well on a Mac. It just does. There's a little quirky, weird it things that happen. I, it won't run my fucking game. You can't wake it up. On, on that, it won't run my games as well as just a Dell with my kick-ass fucking yeah. uh, video cards in there. It's just, I'm not going to do it. You, and you're not going to talk me into it. Thank Mac, you, Steve. Mac is not right. up to snuff on that. Right, let's go to Pat in Cleveland. Pat, what's up? Hey guys, I want to tell you, all of these hey. are pretty much the same. Hello, guys. Hey, Patty, uh, I, I, Patty I, I, Cakes. Hey, Pat, what's up? <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, hey don't, Pat. Good, I'm doing good. What's I'm up? driving and trying not to wreck myself. Yeah, I hear, hear you, Pat. I hear you. you. Pat, you're Pat. from Cleveland. What do you got for us today? Welcome aboard, Pat. I want to tell you guys. What do you got uh, for the show, you. Pat? Hey, hey Pat. This is Pat. What's up there, Pat? <laughs> Pat from Cleveland. Pat from Cleveland, and you're on the air. What do you got for the show today? Hurry up, Pat. Let's get to it, Patty. we got limited boy. time, Pat. Show's almost Come on, over, Pat. Patty. Come on, Pat. What do you got? Say, go, I Patty, go. I want to talk to Hewlett Packard from last week. All right, we're uh, talking to I Pat. To... Pat's on the phone. What do you got, Pat? <laughs> All right, Hewlett Packard. <laughs> That's your name? <laughs> HP. Pat hey, Pat. <laughs> That's what I say. Pat, you're on the air. Go That's ahead, right Pat again. from Cleveland. Pat. What do you got for the show today, name? Pat? Her on the fanny? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, from Cleveland. Call from Cleveland. Pat, what do you got about HP Computer? I want to say hey, it's I Pat. Welcome How you aboard, doing, Pat? Pat. Welcome to the show this uh, morning, Pat. <laughs> thanks for calling, Pat. Yeah, thanks a lot. That was very interesting, Pat. We don't have all day, Thank Pat. You. Let's go. Get to it, Patty. All right, so I got called a bigot by Hewlett Packard last week. What happened? Yeah, I'm on the phone. I talked to him. I say, I was on the phone with a bunch of Indians for like four hours. They couldn't help me out. I finally get somebody in the United States, and I, the guy gives me another number to call. And all I said was, hey, is this going to go to some of the United States or am I going back to India again? He goes, well, I don't know, sir. I don't really have a bigoted view of it like that. Oh, and then you said, but I didn't say nigger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a bigoted view of it like oh, that. Boy. Great. Say, I'm not a bigot. I just hate people who smell of a certain food, have foreskin, and speak with a choppy, shitty accent. That's not bigoted. That just makes me a good egg. <laughs> don't care for people that think their grandparents are cows. Absolutely. Anyone that would kneel in front of a hamburger should have their face slapped. <laughs> Eat the fucking thing. It's delicious. You goose. <laughs> well, here's the English TV portraying Americans. Oh, right. That's stupid. This is for Paul. I'm scared. You know, a lot of people give Americans a bum rap for being stupid bum. and knowing nothing about the world, but the reality couldn't be further from the truth. As I discovered on the streets here, asking U.S. locals about the very world no. their country runs. Oh, boy. Name a country that begins with U. Yugoslavia? With U, Utah. A country that starts with a U. Uh, Utopia. Who's in the coalition of the willing? No freaking idea. Afghanistan, Kuwait, Iraq, Pakistan, uh... You know? <laughs> New Zealand? New Zealand. What's the religion of Israel? Israeli. Muslim. <laughs> Islamic. Catholic, probably. What religion are Buddhist monks? Buddhist monks. Buddhist monks. Buddhist monks. Buddhist monks. Islamic, I don't know. Who won the Vietnam War? We did. Uh, <laughs> Wait, were we even in the Vietnam War? Okay, good. This phony motherfucker, they're probably just editing yeah, it a certain they way. they probably yeah. bullshit. edited it. You stupid limey. Why don't you ask this one? Who fucking won the revolution? Yeah. The United States of America. Who bailed who out of World War II? The United States of America. Paul, you got one? Bailed yous all out, Europe. You got one? You listening? Listening on the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fuck you. Look at you sitting there. All high and mighty, you Brit. Your empire fell apart, didn't it? Once fucking, once fucking naval vessels, once they found out steel... To make battleships out of your whole fucking uh, your whole fucking strategy went out the window. Sailing your big ships all over the globe. Eh, it's the empire. Meh, meh, meh. Yeah. That show went to shit. Back pushed you back to one little fucking piece of shit in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I always say, no taxation without representation. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's say hi to Rob in Chicago. Rob, what's up? 
Hey, guys, love you. Love the show. Thanks, oh, Rob. Thank hey, you. Rob, sure. by the way, we haven't uh, told the, the CKG audience yet. We'll tell them tomorrow, but a nice little bump up in the uh, latest ratings trend for, for the Chicago. Thank you, Chicago. That's great. I'm doing what I can. What do you got, Rob? Hey, Opie, these guys uh, that are doing this are Australian, not English. So are you one of those stupid Americans? Yes. Well, I just, I just read what? one. Yeah, it, it, it didn't sound like a, a, a British accent. It's Australian, huh? Sure. Yeah, he's right. I thought uh, he said across the pond. Let's not make a big hullabaloo. Who's Fidel Castro? A singer. How many sides does a triangle have? Damn, four. There's no sides. One. What is the currency used in the United States? Yeah, you're 100 percent right. They're asking different questions. Wait, then, but I said that. Yeah, no, I said it. No, I said that. I editing. said it. I said it's all editing. I said it was all editing. And always comes up with the knowledge. I said it, Jimmy. No, you just, I, you just make. You want to listen? Listen to the replay. Anthony said. Listen to the boy, replay. Boy, those yeah. guys are dumb. And I said no. That's all <laughs> editing. He said no. <laughs> it's the oldest bit in the book. But I said that. Like, you ask how I'm many. Stealing your credit. Like, you ask how care. many sides in a in a square. They say four, and then you re ask the then question. Then you say edit, edit how many together, in a they triangle. Look stupid. But let's do the same bit. We can do it right now. We can do oh. it with the people right out there. Okay. Oh, but, you'd have to so, edit it. but that would be work, so don't worry. We're not going to do that. Here's how we're working. <laughs> what's a good dessert? Big black cock. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> That's how now, what are you going to edit in as the fake answer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my feelings are hurt. No. Good feelings. Come on in. No. Get rid of them bad ones. That's what no, you No, don't. Oh. You want to be smart and funny? Go ahead. Have a few laughs. Put a piece of that gum up Jimmy's ass. Please. I bet this asshole would chew it, too. One. What is the currency used in the United Kingdom? <laughs> What's the currency in the United Kingdom? What is it? In the United Kingdom? I don't know. Possibly American money. Queen Elizabeth money? That's all I know. Uh, name a country that begins with you. A country? Yeah. <laughs> um. What about this one? What? what? The United States of America. <gasps> Uh, I don't think I don't think he, he, he doesn't sound Australian. That whatever that guy is, English. he's a duty face. He is. How about this one? United States of America. That's cool. Oh fuck yourself. How about your fucking? How about your kangaroo ridden shit house of a country? <laughs> <laughs> how about that? Fucking blow a dingo, you cunt. Exactly. <laughs> Bunch of hopping mammals in the middle of the street. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Big giant mice. I'll fuck you and your planes that never crash. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? Let's go home early. Dude, That'll show you. those Australians. Let me tell you one thing. Greg, you're preaching to choir. <laughs> <laughs> Line of the day brought to you by... Oh, oh my no. God. You're preaching to choir. I, I got to finish not around. Kidding? No, I got to finish kidding. my book. Do you have things to do? Um, Uh-oh. Do you, I, have uh, check, do you have checks to write? Oh, uh, shit. Do you have uh, floral a, arrangements I to buy? I got a uh, contract to look over. Oh, shit. Oh. Today. Does it start with... A, I, I, is, uh, is, are the initials of this contract P... N. Poor. Do you have to buy flowers? Line of the day is brought to you by BulldogFight.com. The big event is finally here. It's a showdown of the world's most skilled mixed martial arts fighters. I said too much yesterday. Russia takes on the USA in this series of heavyweight super fights. Who's Don't fighting? miss it on pay-per-view April 14th. Daniel. Visit BulldogFight.com. Slash PPV for details. BulldogFight.com. Wait, is, is, is Fedor fighting? <laughs> I Fe- Fedor's a Russian, I think, right, Bill? <laughs> I just can't wait to hear it. <laughs> and don't forget, yes, com- coming soon, Russian. Coming soon, we're going to hide at least $5,000. Can't say where. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere in New York City. It's a secret yeah. somewhere. Do we, do we keep it to Manhattan, or do, we go, to the, or do, or do we go to the boroughs? I don't know. It's all going to be uh, make done a on the web. Make him go uptown. Oh, <laughs> It's all going to be... Uh, well, well, me and Opie will release a video in the on the internet. In the future, yes. And you must then watch that and a bunch of other videos to follow where we will uh, goof around. And maybe in that goofing, you will see some uh, clues that you might need. Absolutely. That's how the whole schmear will work. And we Amelie. won't even mention it on the air. Wait, Amelianenko. Fedor Amelianenko, I think his name is. Whoever he's, he's fighting, Matt Linland. Fedor, let me predict this, is going to massacre him. <laughs> No, listen to me. Oh, no, no, listen to me. <laughs> These guys, I'm telling you, this sport is what's picking Spike TV up. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You have to sure love is. watching people beat the fuck out of each it's other. Better than boxing. Fuck, no oh, one yeah. cares about boxing anymore. Anyone out Kick there have anything? Face. 
Anniversaries, birthdays. Uh, coming out of the closet. What are, what are we doing oh, out there shit. today? Wait, I said coming out of the closet. Someone pointed at that. You're coming out of the closet today? Congratulations. No, no, they're pointing at you. The one the that turned fella, his head are you coming out? So what? The guy with the dick in his mouth. Oh, well, he already has the mustache. You might as well. It's not a big deal, dude. <laughs> no, one, no one has a problem with Anyone that. Anyone have anything? I have a plug. You Joey's plug? got a Brother Joe's got That's a plug. That's right. I do, too. Actually. Yeah, Where man. are you playing? Thursday yeah, night in Delaware at the Wilmington, Delaware at the Coliseum. Oh. And then... Uh, I was in Rome. Friday, yeah. And then Friday we move on to uh, Philadelphia, a place called Joker's. Yeah, Joker's is cool. Joker's, Joker's. Cool. right on, man. Good place. And then uh, Saturday, uh, we're down in Maryland at the Looney Bin. Playing the Looney Bin. The Looney Bin, otherwise known as Loonies. All right. And I will. Uh, I'm, I mean, you know what you're like. And Jim's playing the Rock. No, no, no. House. Are you done? I don't want to. No, I'm you. done, I'll, man. I'm done. I don't want to step on your plug. Uh, I'll be in Miami all weekend. Oh no, no. <laughs> Jimmy will be in Miami. All weekend at the improv in Coconut Grove. Been stepping on my foot, he's been stepping on my olfactory senses all afternoon, and the, uh, all morning. And the his. And if, you, if you're, in, you're in New York today, the new Sabbath uh, CD coming oh, yeah, out everywhere. Right. Black Sabbath, the Dio years. They are signing at Bed Best Buy in Midtown at 6 p.m. tonight. I think it's on 43rd or 44th and Fifth Avenue. Uh, and they are very fucking cool guys, man. And uh, three new fucking fantastic. Are you going songs. down there? Of course. Are they? Uh, do you do you think when like you walk up and they first see you, they turn and go, "Oh shit! Look here he, here he comes! Here he comes!" I only said that to me. You again? <laughs> yeah, you again, guys. We can't leave early. Here well, yes, we can. No, we have Rhonda. Rhonda, what's up? Hi, boys. Good morning. How are you? What's up? Hi, Rhonda from love Chicago. Want to say hi to Chicago? Love you. Love the show. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Get in line. What do you got, Rhonda? What, what do you want? Oh, money! Yeah, it's I probably want to play Guess else. What's in My Pants. What is that? I want to play Guess What's in My Pants. What? All right, call back tomorrow. Guess What's no, in My let's Pants? Do it now. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, well. All those giant checks for a relative? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, those are fantastic, oh. aren't they? Uh, it's, it's great wonderful. to be in a partnership. <laughs> uh, Rhonda. Yes. All right, you're from Chicago. You want to play Guess What's in My Pants, right? Yes. All right, we got to oh. keep this radio friendly, so here's what you do. <laughs> Pull your pants down, open your legs, rub the phone on your cunt. We'll guess. Don't tell us. Go. <laughs> Rhonda, Rhonda, how old are you? I'm 29. 29? How many kids? Oh, I have no children at all. Sounds like a guy. Yeah, your voice is very deep, Rhonda. Well, I smoke. You're you a guy. smoke? I've been smoking for about 15 years. All right, You're 29. Um, what do you look like? I have blonde hair. I'm about 5'8". The guy. About 120. Gym teacher. That sounds like a guy. Like a guy. Your voice Dude, we're on is here. so manly. What's in your pants? It's like boy-like man. What's in your pants? A, a dick. Cock. Believe me, I know. I see the uh, thing coming. Click. Just fucking uh, hung up. Yeah, of course. I called that one You're, immediately. I you know. You could tell. Again. It wasn't even... Well, now we're going to have oh. to do it for real. Any girls out there want to do this for us in front of everybody? Close. In front of everybody. In front of everybody? Girls? <laughs> it's fun. You can use my cell phone. <laughs> All right, why don't we uh, play line of the day? Yeah, here it is. Today's line of the day. Here comes line of the day. Line of the day. Line of the day. All right, we're going to let Jimmy eat. We're going to take a break. Kenny, thanks. Go back to doing whatever you're doing. Okay, thank you. You're a I'm boy. working security today. Uh, gentlemen, I'm at jury duty. Well, that's what you want to sign in your yeah, face? Exactly. <laughs> There's one person that they have to sway the vote on. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I need to see the evidence. <laughs> it sure won't be a hung jury. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the callback of the year. <laughs> and there it is, your line of the day. Guys, thanks for uh, coming by and doing the walkover. Thank you. Eventually, we're going to start uh, broadcasting the walkover again. Hopefully so. All right, is that it? It sure won't be a... <laughs> Look at that. A hung jury. Look at the dumper on Paul. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Yes. Yeah, Kenny leaned in. Remember when he was in here shitting himself <laughs> yeah. into the diaper? That video didn't get 
Oh, it should have gotten People should be watching massive. that video around the clock and sending it to people. It is one of the funniest fucking things, Paul shitting himself. Just put uh, No Filter Paul in the search engine of, uh, I guess, YouTube. YouTube threw that up there, right? Him shitting himself on fucking No paper. way. YouTube wouldn't do it. Probably break. I think it was uh, YouTube, because he was covered. I think they were okay with it. Really? All right. Everyone's I'm leaving. driving to Massachusetts. Right now? Yes. Be safe. Where are you playing there? I'm not playing. Oh, what don't do do? see the little lady. Wait, she's moving here though, right? Yeah. Okay. Dude, yep. you were just, she's I swear, down. you were you were falling asleep sitting there. I was. And you're going to drive to Massachusetts. Closing. Oh, no, I'll be fine. I just need like eight Red Bulls. Oh, Dude, what brother. the fuck? How long are you going to be up there for? Let's go. A couple of days. Oh, okay. Not just oh, no, no, no. I'm not just driving. You've got a great life now, Joe. Joe's making some money, My man. Making some good money. And Joe's he... pulling in 30, 40 ah, keys a year. Yeah, yeah sure. Could be a little more than that, Jim. Perhaps more than that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's nice when you get those deposit checks coming. Ah. Well, deposit yeah. checks are good. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Later, gents. Bye. Beep, 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 beep. Gotta, gotta go. Gotta See. go. Hey, this is Joe Perry. Hey, everybody. This is Travis Tritt. Brian Regan. This is Charlie Murphy. This is Lois Griffin. This is Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> this is Flavo Flav. This is Larry the Cable Guy. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. And if you're not, you're a communist. The Valerius.